Oh my god. Hello, welcome to Abrax's Precipice. I am John Boltino, the game master of this shindig, and I have been, well, forever, because I, I, I invented the name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a special episode today, very special episode. Uh, we're doing a charity stream. Uh, it's a one-shot, uh, my continuation of Adapt is Fate. We did it last year, uh, and we had a lot of fun with it. We raised uh, quite a bit of money. Um, and uh, the only tragedy of it was that I wrote a lot more than we got to play. And so I was like, let's do it again and uh, you know, finish the story. And uh, we're, we're back. So I wanted to say um, a little bit about uh, why I'm doing this. I want to say, and then I want to say who I'm doing it with. And I want to give every one of these people here who has been so kind to sacrifice their Saturday uh, a little bit of time to tell uh, about themselves. Uh, what they're doing, who they're playing, and just whatever they want to say with, <clears throat> within reason, please. Twitch does have guidelines. I like to come back to Twitch. I like to do the show again. Um, <laughs> and uh, everything. And then uh, we're playing today for World Central Kitchen, which is a charity near and dear to my heart. And I'll talk about that a little bit after uh, we introduce everybody. Um, I'll throw the donation link here in the chat here. And uh, we'll get started. But why don't we, why don't we start with um, our veteran, uh, Josh. Josh, why don't we start with you? We'll go Brady Bunch order yeah. here. Hey, uh, I'm excited to be here. Uh, if you don't know me, uh, I'm Josh. Uh, you can find me everywhere on the internet at Joshua M. Simons. Uh, I'm the community manager at Demiplane, a uh, big Expanse fan, and John keeps asking me back, and so I keep saying yes. Uh, I, I think it's a contractual obligation at this point. Um, excited to be here, excited to uh, continue uh, this adventure from uh, last year. Awesome. Well, thank you. So, thank you for coming back as uh, Marv. Marv's our, our, we would call our favorite Martian uh, in the light here. So I'm going to go in, uh, I'll go in clockwise here. Uh, KP. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. My name is KP. I go by KP11 Studios and all the socials. I am a photographer, a performer, voice actor, writer, uh, and cultural consultants. Uh, a bit of a lot of things and uh you can find me on pretty much all the socials as kpln studios and i this will be my first time ever playing the expanse tcrpg so Aww. go beyond me don't kill my character off too quickly there well, um you should have brought plot armor oh uh, well i mean <laughs> i forgot in the, on my other character sheet unfortunately <laughs> Um, and also comparatively a much newer fan of the show itself. Uh, I started watching this literally because I was going to be on the show. And then, uh, I was like, screw this show. I just want to watch the, the <laughs> watch the show itself. Cause this is fantastic. Um, and became a huge fan because of that. Uh, and I'm very excited to be on this with everybody for a very great cause. So thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being here. Uh, in the bell. Hello. Uh, my name is Isabel Chavez. I uh, This is actually the first time in quite some time that I have done an RPG. So I'm excited and nervous to get into this with everybody. Um, but I am an actor. I uh, play Maya Castillo in the Expanse A Telltale series. And I'm super excited to be here and to continue, uh, you know, just being part of all things Expanse. Well, we appreciate, we appreciate, I appreciate you uh, coming in and taking a, a chance, roll the dice on us as it would be, see what I did there, <laughs> uh, to, play, to play the Expanse RPG uh, with us. And, uh, and, I, and I will say this, uh, actually, the your performance in the game was actually really fun and, and amazing and, and a memorable character to add to the uh, the lore of it all. But uh, we are, we are uh, we're also really adamant on the show that when we have people that have been on The Expanse, that they don't play the character they play in The Expanse. We want people, to, I, I always ask them, who do you want to be? And that's what role-playing games are about. Who do you want to be today? So uh, we're having a, having a lot of fun with that. Uh, but speaking of which, uh, we have this gentleman below me, uh, Jacob. Hi, everybody. My name is Jacob. I am first and foremost a sci-fi fan and a nerd, and I, uh, I've always d and I love games. I've been playing games my entire life, and I just so happen to be an actor by passion who was lucky enough to be on my own sci-fi show once, and I was on season five of The, the Expanse. I played the dirtbag um, Eric, uh, who was a friend of um, Amos as they 
as they gallivanted across the galaxy. And um, John pulled me in. John has been very cool to marry my love, my my career with my nerdiness. And he brought me onto this show. And we've become on again, off again, internet boyfriends. I send him trinkets from the set. And he sends me branded t-shirts. <laughs> Abraxas, precipice. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I haven't played. I, I've just been busy. Actor strike. I shouldn't have been busy. It's There was an actor strike. But um, I haven't role played in a minute, so I'm very excited. Just to this is a great Saturday for me. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much again uh, for coming out here, Jacob. At last and certainly not least, we have uh, one of my most recent guest players, actually from my main story, another person, that, uh, someone that did bring their plot armor because uh, they are, they do live ten years in the future of the Expanse continuity. Uh, so I do play in continuity. Is uh, Jesse? Jesse, tell us who you are, what you do, and all kinds of good stuff. Hi, folks. Uh, my name is Jesse Christensen. I am the lead scientist of the NASA Exoplanet Archive, which is how NASA keeps track of all of the exoplanets we found so far. I find planets by day and watch sci-fi by night. Uh, so, you know, like Jacob, huge sci-fi nerd, very excited, huge f Expanse fan from a long time ago. Um, and yes, I was a recent guest on the show, which was my first time doing an Expanse roleplay game. I have my like home Dungeons and Dragons games with my kids and my husband that we play the weekend, which is super sweet. Um, uh, but in terms of like a quick promo, I also host a podcast called Explore Exoplanets colon The Discoverers, where I interview other people who've discovered planets about what did they find and how did they find it and how did they feel and what's their favorite fictional planet and have we found anything like that? Um, so it's called Explore Exoplanets. I think John is going to drop the link somewhere. It's, it's in there. Um, yeah, so so check that out. Again, I'm Jesse Christensen. So I play Dr. Mel Holson, who's an aerospace dynamicist who I now know has plot armor. So I'm going to roll with abandon for the next few hours. Hooray. What's, what does um, airlock do? <laughs> yeah, I press this button. I'll be fine. You guys send me out into all of the dangerous situations. Um, no, uh, that's actually uh, a great point. <laughs> Um, so yes, I am an aerospace dynamicist uh, who loves designing orbits and sh rocket ships. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, great cast today, I'm very excited. Um, but let me go ahead and say what uh, we're really here for, which is uh, my birthday. No, um, this is my, <laughs> this, I, I, every year for those of you who know, I do birthday games. I, I do a big game for my birthday. I did my home game last week with my friends, which was a blast. Uh, but I also do a big Expanse game for my birthday. And uh, one of the, awesome parts about doing stream games is uh fundraising charity stuff is super cool it's 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 notify guys it makes it easy like they make it shockingly easy and i've had the privilege to work with them uh on several of these and uh today we're playing for world central kitchen uh this is an organization that shows up in disaster zones all over the world and i mean all over the world uh, comes to help to feed people and sets up logistics to get food to people uh, and tries to really like meet people where they are in terms of their food cultures too. So they'll show with peanut butter sandwiches, but they're not going to stick to peanut butter sandwiches type of thing, you know? They're going to try to get what, get what people eat. Um, for me personally, this charity uh, means a lot. Uh, last year, about this time in my area here in California, we had flooding. And it was a small town outside Planada, uh, very big farm worker town and a lot of the town got flooded. And I have a lot of friends, and I even have coworkers, people that are professors, do what I do, live there, and their homes were flooded, and World Central Kitchen showed up and fed my friends. They fed my community. They didn't have to, but they did. And when you step up for my people, I step up for you. So that's why I'm playing for World Central Kitchen today. This isn't just something I picked, you know? <laughs> um, they were in my, like, literally like, like six miles down the road, uh, with trucks. So I, I really appreciate it. Uh, there's a great, uh, last year Jennifer uh, Kretschmer uh, pointed out, there's a great documentary on Netflix called We Feed People About Them, directed by you know, Ron Howard, who's that? And uh, really good documentary. I highly recommend watching it. It really shows what they do and how they set up and both their triumphs and their pitfalls in, in terms of trying to set up uh, shops. So uh, great stuff. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, that's, that's the... Uh, that's my spiel about that. So uh, let me drop. There's the donate link. Uh, John, on. I'm gonna. John, I'm gonna. I'm gonna force the spotlight on you for just a second. I think oh, it's shit. really great that you're using the capital of your birthday to give to other people. So happy birthday, buddy. Hey, you know, it's it's uh, you know, you, thank you. I appreciate it. No, I just, I just, uh, I, it's also a way to like you know, lure you people into playing the game with me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, to have an awesome cast and 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 you know. 
uh, get people to it. So, you know, just, hey, show for my birthday, guys. You know, uh, no, it, it's it's more than that, too. And, and I, I really appreciate it, though. Uh, so, but um, anyways, sorry, I'm trying not to get too emotional here, but we're going to kick off our game. Uh, just real quick context of the game. This is uh, anything that's good. My, my general rule when I bring my Expanse games is if it was on a TV show, it's fair game. So those are content warning. Um, and I always felt the TV show was very mature in the way it dealt with things. It didn't, it didn't, you know, nothing was gratuitous. Uh, maybe Amos a shower scene uh, <laughs> at the worst, but uh, it's, it's, it's that, you know, that was contextual. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we really uh, uh, have a lot of fun with this. And our game is a prequel taking place about five years before the mainstay of the show begins and deals with how did Fred Johnson become the director of Tycho Station and just happen to have the most advanced ship in the, in the solar system to spy on everybody. <laughs> so, but we're gonna go ahead and kick off here. I'm gonna run the opening credits. Uh, we'll be back in about a minute and uh, we'll be playing our game of Avarax's Precipice, the Expanse role-playing game, Adaptive Fate 2 with this amazing cast. All right, be right back. All right, guys, we just had a very heated conversation. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, geez. Okay. Got real spicy for a minute. Oh, wow. That was Jacob. Wow. Okay. Uh, I love... No, I'm just. <laughs> oh, should God. we recap it for the viewers maybe, or should maybe, we move maybe, on? Let me restart the opening credits again. No. Um, but, uh, uh, Oh my god. By the way, your donations can affect the game getting re-rolls, and we have some great PDF bundles. Um, I also, there, you can get an autograph photo from Jacob, and you can get a private game of the Expanse role-playing game with you and your friends with me. So we have some cool stuff in there. All right. Sorry. Got to plug it all. <laughs> it's live. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Bergen uh, and Carmen, the two of you have known each other for a while, uh, both Martian. Uh, both of you have... Uh, you know, work your way through the solar system and such. Um, and you, you've you seen, uh, Surgeon, you, you've seen how people are treated uh, on Mars, how the workers are treated quite well. It's it's very uh, equitable. People get their, uh, they get their health care, they get their shelter, they get their pay. It's very, very fair. Um, Carmen, you, you know, uh, you served in the Martian Marines for a while. Uh, might have, you might have your own opinions of that. You have your, certainly have your own opinions of that. Uh, but something about it didn't sit well do it for a career. Uh, rising to the rank of corporal, then leaving. Uh, and I'll, I, we haven't determined why you left, but I, I'd love to hear it. Uh, and uh, the two of you kind of, uh, you know, met up and worked together here. Uh, Surgeon, uh, I'm saying it right, Surgeon, right? Regen. See, one more time? Yeah, Sweejan. Sweejan. Sweejan, yeah. So Sweejan. No word. Okay, so Sweejan, um, You've been doing union work, uh, representing people, kind of like a lawyer is, is, is the best way. It's like the Expanse version of a lawyer. So when they read people their rights in the Expanse, they say you can, you know, you do have a right to an attorney or your union rep. Like that's actually a canon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you kind of work that kind of angle, but you specialize in negotiations. Um, Isabel, how would you characterize Carmen? I mean, Carmen's a pilot, like has certifications in piloting, but how would you characterize Carmen's kind of, uh, I don't know, how would they describe themselves as a, as a, as a job title? Or kind of work they do, or is it that simple? It, it's it's that simple. <laughs> it's that simple. Okay, no, that's fair. That's fair. I like that one. I like that one. Um, I'm trying to remember how to do. It. Uh, Spurgeon. Wait, wait, I, I did it wrong. Or, hey, however you want it, buddy. I can. Okay, okay. It's your birthday. I'll give you a birthday pass. Oh, well, I feel bad then. 
Swedishen, Swedishen. So I, I can't want to say it's Swedish now. Um, so Swedishen, you uh, you were contacted uh, through one of your OPA contacts. You kind of started becoming kind of a worker, a little more em you know empathetic to the to the plight of the Belters, seeing them and wanting them to be treated fairly. Uh, okay, gotcha, perfect. And um, you. One of your contacts kind of said, "Hey, there's a job here. We really need you on. Uh, we'd mm -hmm. like you to meet with somebody." And you get a you get a, a contact of a name. You get a, a photo of a, a younger man, maybe like in his uh, late twenties, uh, Earther for sure. You can tell by you know how mm -hmm. you know clean cut he is and everything. Um, and uh, kind of a blurry photo of the guy, but he's saying that you need to meet with him at this place. Um, and it's a and you're, it's on Eros. Uh, you're on Eros, you're on the station of Eros and stuff like that, which is known as kind of a place where people go to have, uh, spend some money. Uh, there's a lot of uh, brothels, there's gambling, there's betting, there's like racing, there's all kinds of boxing, uh, all kinds of entertainment here. Um, and uh, you've been told to meet with uh, a man that goes by the name Dinga hmm. uh, at a place called, at a little small little hole in the wall restaurant, little hole in the wall, because that's like how they build their buildings on an asteroid. <laughs> Um, place called Maritos. The, the name of the restaurant is called Maritos and More. It, it's like the word burrito but with an M. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, Dingo, uh, you're, you know, company man, working for Tycoon now for a few years, security, um, operations there. Uh, your current task is to, at least publicly, is to escort a pair of engineers. Uh, one by the name, a Martian by the name of Dr. Marv de Valentine, and a Earther by the name of Dr. Mel Holson, uh, out, to, out from Luna to Tycho Station, where they'll oversee some of their operations and such. Um, but uh, part of your instructions have come from directly from Fred Johnson himself. Uh, and he's asking you to, to, you know, he's asking you a little bit of a favor, a little bit of a, little bit of a job, a little bit of a task, to give you a little bit of something to do here. And uh, he says he's sending you some a, a little bit extra help in the form of a of a pair of Martians that he he trusts, um, and you're to meet them in a place called Maritos and More. <laughs> All right. Well, assuming that um, most special favors from Fred Johnson come in the form of some kind of paid corporate espionage, I'm going to put on my uniform, make sure it's straight, and put on my my cute ass little fucking name tag, and uh, and I'll uh, make sure I report fifteen minutes early. Well, so Fred's already kind of issued the orders through through various uh, mm -hmm. non direct means, and uh, the the job seems to be one of a little more not so publicly Tycho oriented. We'll say Tycho doesn't want to put in. Oh, order. so I put on my regular. I put on yeah. some street clothes, Which and looks, I looks great right now. And still mm. a name tag because we gotta have a cute. Yeah, you have a name tag. Yeah, sure. You, you, mm -hmm. you, it, it could, you know, it could say like you know, princess or pinky or <laughs> you know, you know, I have some fun. You don't want people to be. Um, you want people to feel like they know who you are. Exactly. You don't want people yeah. to be confused. Exactly. Yeah. So even uh, though I, I also stand out because I have a very visual, uh, visible visual implants. implants yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like like George. So. Jordy, uh, yeah. Not, not. It's not oh. protruding, but yeah, it's like embedded in your skin. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Marv and 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 Mel, the two of you, have, you've worked with each other. Uh, you were working on this kind of a concept for this thing called like the Nabu project. So this is a proposed ship going to Tal Ceti. Uh, the Latter Day Saints are willing to pay an absolute fortune due to their um, disagreements with certain policies of the UN. And um, you. Uh, you're now being reassigned to Tycho Station. It's unclear if the Naboo project is going to be uh, go off from, from Tycho's point of view or something like that. But uh, you you are now under the uh, I don't, the juris I don't say jurisdiction. The, I don't say command. You're you're being you're being escorted by Dingo, <laughs> and you are sitting in a restaurant called Maritos and More. Okay. Um, Delicious. It actually this. is. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that. I, I I did I did once again disclaimer. I love talking about food. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, all right, here we go. Srijun, Srijun, you, uh, uh, and Carmen, you, you two, uh, get to the approach. You can see, uh, clearly off the corner of the side, there's a small table. It barely sits five people, but there's three sitting there. Uh, two of them look pretty, uh, they all, they're all, two of them are earthers. One's a Martian, but you're, you know, maybe he doesn't have as much dust in his veins as some other Martians. 
Uh, but he's, uh, they're all kind of sitting there, uh, chilling out, just drinking, having some drinks, whatever they may be, uh, water, alcohol, etc. cetera. Uh, but the food does smell good. Actually, it does smell pretty good in here. So, oh. And as you walk in, uh, this, this man comes up to you, goes, hello, uh, can I get you a seat? Oh uh, yeah, uh, room for, room for three, a little, probably. Um, you want anything, Carmen? Uh, they have tequila? Uh, tequila? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, we have a an excellent. It goes well with our maritos. Perfect. Well, is it those. real tequila or is it just? Uh, uh, he kind of looks back, and <laughs> you you know you, uh, this this station stuff's cheap and it's cheap for a reason. So, I mean, he, it'll it'll taste. Tequila like substance. Yes, mm. I mean he might be spicing it with some like you know engine fluid or something, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll oh. we'll get the job done. Oh yeah, I mean, that's, oh, God, God, oh, perfect. God then I I don't care what you'll get messed up. It's okay. 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 Perfect. Um, Dingo, your your uh, optic, your little like interface kind of you can you ping off and you can you can see quote unquote see um, across the room both uh, one of the, the figures you're supposed to meet with this uh, uh, Sri Jun. Yeah, and just um, before I approach anybody, just because this is kind of how Dingo always operates, how much of a, because he, he lives in the internet at the same time, how, how, how much uh, of how much network am I aware of at the time of, you know, so right now? Am I you, in a friendly environment or am I pretty uh, locked out? Eros is, okay, so as a, as a security expert, uh, Eros is a shit hole. Uh, not just like its own, like, set up and everything, but even the security here, the, the, the current company that runs their security is some some shitty company called Protogen. And like, it's just not like, they don't seem to be taking care of their gear. Uh, they, they have, they don't have many guards. Um, there's some no-name company, you're like, they need to upgrade their security like fastly. Um, as far as your like access to the network, uh, I mean, you can you can talk to the Eero stuff. It's, it's okay that like, you can get some information here and there. But if you're trying to talk off station, you're going to hit like delay immediately. Oh. But yeah, you can. Get it. I mean, the station's. Uh, but yeah, the security station's like a joke. Yeah, and I have no. So I have no um, confidence that I may or may not be monitored. Like this conversation you're could or could monitored. not be monitored. There, right? You're probably not being monitored. Okay. There's also a pretty decent right. crime element on, on on here too. So they seem to be kind of a a back and forth to some degree. All right. Yeah. Do I? Do I? Is it? Is it apparent um, which table my party might oh, yeah. be at? Yeah. You guys are clearly up. Yeah. yeah. All right. Do you want to wave them down or? Yeah. I'll, right. I'll. 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 Hang, I'll hang back for a minute and see who else shows up. And yeah, I'll, I'll head up in a in a couple minutes. Okay. Obviously, assuming mm -hmm. yeah, it's uneventful. Our, our, our party commences. Um, All right. You're. Uh, you guys approach. Uh, the smell. You can smell in the air. The the aura. It, it is a. Um, uh, they, they serve moritos here, so this is actually a local delicacy in my area that we have. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's basically like chicken tikka masala in a burrito form, um, and it's it's actually quite good. But they don't sell they don't they don't they do have quote unquote chicken here, um, but their, their yes. primary their primary form you can see is a fungal curd tikka masala. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's, killing my Indian heart. It's, I, it's space, man. You can be practical. <laughs> um, but it's flavored. It is flavored. I will say that they do have they do have flavor. Um, they, and they do have a tofu version if, if you are interested. Um, but um, it does it does smell. Uh, and you can even tell uh, as uh, actually Carmen, you would tell this. You can tell this place isn't operating up to up to snuff in that you can see that they've modified the motors on the uh, air the air purifiers to like make sure their smell lingers longer. Um, so they're, they're definitely kind of making sure they market themselves uh, to your smells, but... Like cookies when you're trying to sell a house, but it's... Yeah, you know, they, smell. They, <laughs> they put the fan directly in front of the oven. Yeah, it's it's that whole it's that whole game, yeah. Uh -huh. um, yeah some things never change. Uh, <laughs> so, but um, yeah, the five of you uh, kind of, you, you kind of see each other, you kind of you give each other a nod from across the room, but uh, you guys can approach. Uh, feel free to interact here. Um, and if you uh, want to describe your character a little bit too, uh, or are you want to eat anything or have any questions like that? Please let me know. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, Srijan's Sri just going to be like, um, and when you guys approach him, he is definitely an older gentleman, uh, someone who's been in the workforce for quite some time, um, probably fit at one point, but now he's kind of in his age. Um, he's a bit more 
rotund, a bit bigger, um, very strong, uh, uh, like forearms. So someone who's clearly worked uh, all of his life, uh, the muscles that he has underneath is just built up from straight doing labor. Um, but you know, just being at the desk, you you don't need to use that anymore. So you know, he's seeing the later aspects of that. Um, his hair is slightly balding. You see kind of the widow's peak forming pretty predominantly on top of his head, a lot of gray coming in. And he's just very much the type that's like, I've seen it all. I've seen all this <laughs> shit. And he's just sitting on there and orders himself uh, one of the one of the Maritos and just starts flipping it down, waiting for whoever else approaches, occasionally offering it to Carmen to see if she wanted it, who's just straight up ch chugging tequila. <laughs> you know, you probably need some in your you know belly there before you take that all down. It's gonna hurt you in the long run. Gonna lay a base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta protect them. The stomach linings. <laughs> oh, she's, 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 she's drank a lot more, uh, with a lot less in her stomach. So, she's doing great. <laughs> tell, tell us about uh, Carmen. Uh, what does Carmen look like? Uh, Carmen has. So she's. So she, is very. A kind of like she's built. The first thing that's coming to my head is built Ford tough, which is not. <laughs> <laughs> She's very stout. Uh, she does not get knocked over easily. Mm, okay. um, and she's got uh, long hair, but it's like kind of braided back is what I imagined um, mm. and a single braid down her back. Um, should I say kind of her background at this point? Uh, I mean, if, if things are given away by her appearance, if you have like tattoos that would give away like your previous service, that's something. Oh man, uh, I didn't think that far into the, <laughs> her appearance. Do you want to say you have a you have a marine tattoo or something? Yeah, okay. let's let's do it. I yeah, have a, a Martian marine tattoo. Clear, clear Martian marine tattoo. Uh, placed. What do you say? Forearm or something like that. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Forearm tattoo. Very good. Um, yeah. Okay. And <clears throat> a drinker, uh, as we've established. You know, you know who I, I feel I, we haven't heard from is uh, Josh. I want to hear about Marv de Valentine. Let's put him on the spot. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I'm I'm doing that freelance thing right now. So, uh, of course, you, you, you see Marv. He's uh, always been uh, kind of in a lab or, or you know, uh, at a desk. He does not look like uh, he could survive getting pushed over by either of these two individuals. <laughs> uh, uh, but, you know, he's got kind of a, a pretty straightforward, uh, I would say, like, jumpsuit on at this point. Um like, you can tell from the way he carries himself, right? He is, uh, uh, we'll say, a man of science. Um, but, uh, you know, he is uh, probably, you know, mid mid to late 30s uh, and and uh, starting to starting to show uh, just the, the, the wear and tear of, of being on the go uh, all the time. Um, he, he has not been in a single uh, place for, for very long, um, for the past few years. Uh... Just a month ago, you know, uh, Fred Johnson practically kidnapped him and dragged him to a, uh, uh, a spa. Uh, big, well, to a spa and then to a big ass meeting. So, you know, uh, is what it is. But, uh, uh, yeah, he's kind of a, a, a scientist, engineer for hire uh, or kidnapping, apparently. Okay. okay, fair enough. Let's hear about uh, Dr. Holston. Yeah, Mel is really trying to get Marv deep into a discussion about like the best generation of like landing shuttles on Mars. Like she's she's into ships. She loves ships. You know, she her thing is to design the biggest, best next ship. Um, and and she's just like, and then you know the generation two proton rocket, and then oh, it was so cool. But then oh, then they wrecked it with generation three, and she's she's just like you know. She has this air that she actually doesn't care if Marv is interested in the conversation. She just is like, oh, the ship's yeah, eating, drinking, talking, and just like hoping that someone is listening, but just eating, drinking, talking, and excited. Uh, she's a 20 something young Eartha, uh, hot shot out of the, you know, Astro Space Dynamics uh, department. She She's all over it. She loves it. Uh, she's actually not good in space. Space is very exciting and fun to think about. She's not a space person she's an earther so every anytime she's kind of out of that environment she's a little mm. covering it up a bit with like oh let's eat and drink it's great um so yeah she's just trying to draw marv into a conversation about shit yeah. well i'll engage with it but there's a not not uh 
not a reticence, but um, as you're talking, you know, right, like, and you're talking about, oh, like, the features of this ship versus the features of that ship, and then they ruin it with this one, Marv's like, well, yeah, I designed that one. Uh, uh, well, and I, well, I did. I had a, a very uh, crucial role in the development of the engine on that one. Uh, and, and so there's, like, almost like a sense of, like, um, like uh, just amused listening as mm. some of the things you're talking about from this ship. He's like, yeah, well, I could tell you all the lessons I learned developing the Gen 3 as opposed to the Gen 2, but I don't know that we necessarily want to get into that right now. Uh, kind of like maybe trying to gauge, like, mm -hmm. is is this, uh, you know, uh, a scenario where I should say, oh, yeah, it's story time. Let's talk about, you know, the years and years that went into developing the Gen 3, or should I, uh, She you just know. wants to talk about rockets and ships. Like, if you have stories. Okay. Yeah, what, yeah, what, what, what? Well, remind me. I'll tell you. I'll tell you uh, another time. Uh, Cause I, I was on the team that developed the uh, the Gen Three, uh, the, the engine components, of course. Um, uh, uh, remind me to tell you about it later. Uh, you know when we aren't uh, waiting for a meetup. But uh, yeah, I, I, I okay. can tell you. Okay, some okay. I think the meetup might that. be about to happen, but I do want to hear this. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, very uh, soon after. I have, I have. Another time. Convenient. Yeah. You know, conveniently timed interruption. I have to. I have to go look at the rules for egghead combat now. Um, <laughs> we said this would happen. Yeah, no, I, I do. I, I, I'm absolutely. This is beyond my dream. Thank you so much. We we are uh, technically on the same team, so there is no combat. It is just uh, it's simply friendly sparring. Uh, we'll play a friendly sparring. We're trying to out nerd each other a little bit. Uh, out nerd each other. I, I think the entire time you just see Strigen rolling his eyes like oh, eggheads, oh. and um, <laughs> like you would hear him occasionally commenting things like. Uh, He's like that old guy who was like the old old stuff was better. Mm. They were more reliable. Uh, back in they my were, day, you know, easier to <laughs> fix. No need to go and change things up on things. Uh, you know, they work totally fine. Too many all these fancy in these things days. and all these fancy little bells and whistles coming in, just mucking it about. Uh, Jacob, let's uh, let's let's hear about Dingo real quick. Give me a give me a physical rundown. Now, if you need me to describe certain aspects, I know they get a little technical. <laughs> Dingo is a is 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 an approachable, middle height, well dressed, soft bodied um, Earther born into middle privilege on Earth, which on the scale of the solar system is a vast amount of privilege. <laughs> um, and uh, I, you know, he just he just gives he gives all the trappings of um, of tired, well compensated nine to fiver. Um, uh, also, I think uh, Srijin, where we're both we're both on the uh, the Widow's Peak um, brigade. You know, I, I think in, in the really in the really awesome um, uh, uh, profile that John commissioned of Dingo, he's got that and he's got that really healthy you know widow receding hairline. Um, uh, but I don't know. I, he, the one, he's friendly. He's friendly enough, but I don't think you're ever going to see him smile, which him seem might might be a little scary. I don't know. I I, I I I bet he gives off an air that he's always lying to you, but he's not lying about the fact that he's lying. I don't know. <laughs> Let's. Yeah. Uh, I would say that real quick. Uh, the one thing about Dingo that's most distinguishing is that you see that he has a lot of circuitry built underneath his face, uh, around his eyes, and his hands. Uh, he has some sort of implant that allow him to basically quote unquote see. Um, Dingo is blind, Ding but he Dingo sees. He sees blind. through. <laughs> Where it counts. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, he sees through. He literally sees through his fingers, and he sees through oh. the internet, and he sees through. Well, you guys remember the reporter on season four? Yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's a little more. It, his is a little more prototypey, but yeah, this is like super prototype tech. That is one thing that all of you will acknowledge that like. This is not something on the market. Um, mm -hmm. This is a this is an augmented person. This is a person who's been augmented like like in a very distinct way, uh, certainly by their own will because it is not cheap. Um, <laughs> all right, so um, Diego, you see your contact? Yeah, I'll, I'll approach the table. Right. I see. Uh, so so the table the table just the table. has Marvin Mel. Yeah, Marvin Mel and you are the are the table, and then you see uh, Swijin uh, Swijin come in and with uh, his. Uh, his large uh, Martian friend um, with uh, Martian marine tattoos. All right, fantastic. So all, all five of us are, yeah, are in, in one you're, spot now? You're at the table, you're around mm -hmm. it, you're having drinks, food. But um, yeah, uh, maybe you want to bring up speed on what you're... 
going on here? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I thought our contact was named Dingo, not Princess. <laughs> who's who's uh, who? I'm just looking at your name tag. My my, pr- my oh <laughs> good nice um you're fun I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna enjoy getting to know you um hi hi but well, welcome everybody I don't know I'm not good at this uh my name is Dingo I'm a security officer I'm I'm supposed to be in charge right now I don't know if any of you are familiar with classic cinema but I you I guess you can think of me as Danny Ocean um we're all uh. I appreciate you all being here today. Um, we're basically laid over for a week and we're here to escort uh, Marvin Mel to, um, to Tyco yes. Station. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm, uh, how, how are all your flights? Are you all set in? Does anyone, does anyone need anything? Uh, all I need right here points to like his all these like his belt of utility essentially has like all pouches of tools and stuff on it mm-hmm. uh, uh, I, Mar- oh, yeah Amar, uh i mean you you you've been privileged to why you're here you uh i guess my question is are you i mean aside from geeking out with, with mel have you kind of um let have you let anything loose about like because you know why you're here yeah, I do. Um, am I under the impression that uh, Dingo is uh, equally informed from Fred? Yeah, or, yeah uh, Am I? One hundred percent. Okay. He would be, okay. In, all, he would be right. in on the job. Yeah. Uh, and I seem to recall uh, that that Fred and I had a conversation, and uh, feel free to correct me on this if I'm wrong. Uh, that perhaps we wanted to, you know, uh, accomplish this, um, you know, with with some assistance here. Um, but maybe without uh, revealing our our full uh, you know hand of cards uh, off the bat, is that a, a correct understanding of what uh, what Fred Johnson might have told me? Yeah, that, that's fair. Yeah, you might want to start easing them into it. Yeah. So uh, if I may, um, uh, hi everyone, uh, Marvin De Valentine, uh, a scientist. Uh, uh, the the short version of of. Uh, what we're here to do, Dingo being our uh, Mr. Ocean. Uh, are you sure it's not Frank Ocean? I feel like that's the name of the character. I don't know. Is it? Oh. I, uh, to be are you talking about, about one of these old 2D movies? Yeah, well, yes, you know, about, yeah. it's been a few years since, I, since I, I, I've, you know, really had time to watch any kind of, kind of, you know, hollow programming, so. Uh, it, how about, how about Nick Fury? We're putting together a team. Yeah, oh, sh- sure. I think I think I did uh, read some of those comics uh, when I was younger. So, um, classic yeah. classic literature. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, th- the short version is uh, there is a, uh, a, a a mark. I'm pretty sure that's the right term here. There's a mark uh, that uh, we have been hired to. Um, uh, Use their connection to a uh, off-world uh, uh, network um, to upload some, uh, shall we say, faulty information, um, and that's why we need everyone's uh, individual set of skills here. Uh, I was just gonna like slow down her eating and just be like, <laughs> like this information is starting to trickle in, like, <clears throat> oh. That sounds um, a lot like a criminal I, activity. Well, there's a difference between criminal activity and uh, what I would call corporate espionage, which is probably closer to what we are doing here today. What? <laughs> I think I don't know um, about the law. I feel like the law wouldn't uh, would see both them the same thing. But uh, if you want to make them distinctions, you can make those. If you want. Who, which, okay, corporate espionage, uh, which corporation? Well, all, all of us have been hired. <laughs> all of our paychecks are coming from Tyco Corporation, but they're also coming from Fred Johnson, so it may be from any amount of um, shell corporations. I can see that the art of subtlety is lost on us. Um, I can assure you I'm not very good at lying. I usually... 
uh, omit the truth, but you can assume that you're, I'm pretty sure if you're under the, um, in, uh, the employment of Fred Johnson, you can always assume you're being lied to, but let's be frank here. What we are doing is crime. Mm. But we're design not design a cool spaceship. But yeah. it's for a good cause. It's for a good cause. Uh, we're here, because... and let's be let's be clear. We're not stealing from um, innocent people. It's one co- it's one private company stealing from another private company, for the sake of jobs within our sphere of influence, for the sake of prosperity for the people that on our own payroll. I don't want to mince words, but please, if do you want to, is there anything Wait. you want to add to that? going to say technically we're not stealing anything we're we're given we're given a gift we're, we're stealing a job <laughs> so Tycho's Tycho is not being given a contract the contract is being given to the gentleman we're here to find today and the gentleman we're here to find today contains the uh, the work he's been performing for the contract and we're basically here to sabotage their work so that Tycho will receive the contract. Uh, I'm gonna have uh, both Carmen and Srijan uh, make current affairs tests. We're gonna actually just roll some dice here, guys. Uh, those are hey, fun. People like roll. We, yeah, these games, we actually get to do that, do that in these games occasionally. Um, um. So <laughs> this will be uh, for KP, this would be just your intelligence. Uh, Isabel, you have a really good current affairs. You go plus three. So roll the three dice and add three to it, Isabel, and uh, KP, you're adding two. Okay, and how many dice do I oh, roll? Three six dice. Three six dice. Okay. Three six dice. Let's see how you guys do this. See if you guys can kind of know what's going on here in the context of the, if you watch the news or not. Okay, I uh, I rolled a ten plus three okay. gives me thirteen. Very good. Okay. And what do you got? Okay. Sorry. Go on, Kiki. Uh st- oh, I'm using a digital dice. Okay, so. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, an eight, nine, eleven. Eleven, including plus two. Yeah, that right. so nine was the base. So, and then plus two. Carmen, you you have a, you know a little bit more of the scuttlebutt about this. Is that you know, Tycho's been really they they've always reached for the stars. They've always tried to do the the really hard engineering jobs. They spun up this station. They spun up series. Um, they go wherever it is. The last thing you heard about them was they were trying to like build some ship for some Earther religion or something like that, but. It sounds like some other companies gonna get that. That this might be something to do with like a, a, sh- a really large ship being built. And when I say large ship, I mean like bigger than any Martian ships ever been built. Like unbelievably massive. Hmm. Okay. Lots of money's at stake is what they're. <laughs> this is not some small job. <laughs> they're trying to steal. So can I ask what's in it for us? Yeah. M- money, money, dude. I mean, I, I want to offer Carmen and Srijan the uh, the opportunity to be as ignorant as they want to be. Um, if you want to build a shell of liability um, around yourselves, um, the three of us are committing corporate espionage, and your job is to uh, make it easier while we do it and be around. Um, if you'd like the full details, I'm happy to share. But um, y- yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're 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 just we're 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 stealing. Uh, think of it as a giant military contractor um, getting a government contract. You're st- stealing from another company. We're 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 stealing a job, and um, um, uh, I, I will say, that, uh, Carmen, you would know that the Tyco Corporation, uh, especially with them hiring Fred Johnson recently, has been more active in providing jobs in the belt than Earth corporations tend to be. Um, if there is another company doing this, they would probably not be as, um, we'll say, like, gracious to Belters or even Martians or anyone else. They would probably try to keep it close to Earth. I'm and, not and asking... Go ahead, sorry. I, I would say I would even uh, specify that point also. A- and to be clear, uh, we are... Um, Targeting a company that um, has uh, only, um, we'll say, uh, financial ties to Earth, and so therefore, um, perhaps you could say we are uh, spreading the wealth to the rest of the solar system. 
Sure, absolutely. If you want to spin it that way, yeah, we're we're promoting uh, wealth in the belt as opposed to the uh, the earth. Or we can put a Robin Hood vibe on this if you like. Um, if that I'm makes like you feel Jim. better, I'm not going to ask you to murder anybody. I'm not going to ask you to hurt children or vulnerable people. Um, uh, just, just, I don't know. Shoot somebody if they attack me. You know. Um, what, how, how do you how do you feel? What's 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 going on on your, your side over here? Um, Mel's just going to start quietly hyperventilating while this conversation happens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I, I turned to Carmen and was like, "So, what do you think, Ace? You think we should pick this up?" Carmen puts down her drink, which is unlike her. Mm. Uh, That's a statement. She, her 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 interest is peaked. Uh, do we know exactly how much money? would he be getting out of this? Uh, well, I uh, was involved in the initial uh, pitch um, uh, to the Latter-day Saints um, about a month ago, uh, and let's just say it is uh, more money than God. <laughs> is there something that you would like besides money? Like, I can, I can... I can divert lobbyists to your favorite charity or something. Like, is there a is, is, is there something else that would make you feel more um, emotionally invested? Because money money's great. It's also boring if you're like a if you're a yeah. hero type. I, one more one more tidbit of information too for the group. Um, the um, Tyco Corporation is also known throughout the socials because they actively give money to every government possible. Um, they've paid for several Martian. Um, uh, legislators, they pay for several UN legislators. <laughs> uh, they pay. They are more than likely paying uh, for Belcher rights things. So they're very, um, they're they're an equal playing field, an equal opportunity corporation. We'll say this is, and tend to um, tend to really enjoy doing the hard the hard tasks. Um, but speaking of hard tasks here, uh, Mel, can you make a stamina test? I, I like to have Mel make a Constitution stamina test here because I feel like hyper. If you're if you're actively yeah, yeah, hyperventilating, yeah. which feels, one? Is, that's Constitution. This is constitution so yeah. Roll three and add, add one. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, it's not. It's nine. It's not great. Okay. Um, <laughs> two you on guys, the two on the drama die. Oh, that's that's fun. Yeah. Um, uh, like the, Mel's uh, not great at space and confrontations and things. Uh, <laughs> Dingo, you your your sensors pick up like uh, your your little sonar thing picks up that uh, Mel's heart rate's going up quite a bit like like where you can't not notice it the distance right. <laughs> doctor it's okay to walk away from this table we're not being monitored there's no you're not committed and you're not um what's the word accessory yet so you relax you're okay if you I want really, to walk really away wanna, right now I really want to get to I really want to get this job I want to design the ship I thought I was coming out here to get this job now you're telling me someone else is going to get the job well, yeah. I, thought, I, I thought it was mine. I thought it was mine. No, I think, okay. The, it it listen, could be yours. It could be yours. Think about if it this way. Us. The job has already been stolen from you. Pope Sanchez has immense connections and ties, and he's probably pulled a lot of strings to, to turn the tide in his favor to getting the contract. And the, it's not over yet. It's not over till it's actually over. This is your opportunity to pull strings back. Um, so no, no, you don't have the contract yet. And if you want to keep it, this is your opportunity. But if you're not willing to do what you need to, which everyone else is doing anyway, to get what you want, then I invite you to, to go away. What is the, what is the faulty information? Well, let me, let me, do we have um, that? There, do we need to make that? The, let me let me start by having Mel do a uh, do a do a current affairs test there for uh, for Mel. I think I don't think she has current affairs, but you get rolling intelligence, so you're you're I smart. You're already yeah. You're already okay. ahead of everybody else on this. <laughs> At okay, five, that's yeah. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. So Pope Sanchez. And if uh, that's a success, you uh, have to provide additional I will information. Provide you a ton of information. Pope Sanchez <laughs> is a uh, kind of conglomerate. Uh, the it's it's run by two guys. Uh, the main one's still running his name, Sebastian Pope, um, and he's he likes the stars. Uh, he'd be a fun guy to talk. To. He's one of these people you've always wanted to meet to talk to about spaceships. Um, yeah, I recognize the into, name. He's very much into mm -hmm. landers and everything too. Um, fairly wealthy. He's probably like the like the twelfth wealthiest person in the solar system. Um, mm -hmm. And 
you know that his company has been working on some like possible cryogenic oriented ships where they would like freeze people and then you know go way out so like making the trip easier and stuff like that um and with the the quote unquote Naboo project that the Mormons are pitching uh his, his company was one of them but it sounds like they're gonna beat Tycho somehow like somehow the, the Mormons prefer to freeze themselves and shoot them shoot them at a moon versus your magnificent generational ship with a rotating drum and can hold animals and you know have an artificial sun and is amazing they're just gonna freeze people and send them to another sun crap lazy okay mel is very stressed <laughs> she's trying to think through <laughs> like so do we know what the faulty information is that that we would need to somehow upload? Is that something that I... Uh, you wouldn't have it, but you suspect that either uh, you would imagine that Marv, who seems to know a lot about this, and, and or Dingo would have it. It will be provided for you. We just need you to implement it. Implement it? Mm-hmm. What does that mean? We're go... Well, uh... Like, literally, John... she's like... John, remind me of so, the of oh, John Derek Gunk. All right, oh, Captain. Yeah. Do I have Do I have a photo? Do I have a cool data pad like in you the movies? You throw a out a little disc and it you, shows you, up a hollow. Well, you can yeah. you can send everyone's data pad. Swipe yeah. it off your handheld. Swipe it off your hand. Yeah, yeah. You everyone's like, so you send a photo around of a gentleman. Uh, it's labeled uh, Captain Derek Gunhilder. Uh, Derek is uh, you, you kind of see the image of him. Looks like a pretty straight cut guy. Earther for sure. Um, he seems to, in, in the photo, he's wearing like a flight suit, like he's coming off like a dock or something like that. There's a few photos of him in there, pretty easy to identify. Uh, he has kind of a goatee, kind of slick back hair, black hair, um, paler skin, uh, probably spends a lot of time in space for an Earth. He has that kind of gray tinge to his skin because he hasn't had like natural light in his skin for a while. Um, and it comes up and tells you that he is a uh, ship captain for Pope Sanchez. He, he uh, works for them in like, uh, runs cargo for uh, one of their uh, subsidies, a company called Vector Security. So there's some small security firm that tends to just do kind of transport. So it's like, like, like armored cars in space is the best way to describe it. Um, okay. Um, mm -hmm. I like that I made KP smile because KP's like, that sounds fun. Um, <laughs> I want that job. Armored cars in space. Oh, yeah. would, a five-year-old would light up if you told him that. Okay. <laughs> this, but, this guy, yeah. this guy is going to be on station for a week. He is, and he's not really a person of consequence to us. He just has, he just works for the Pope and um, has access to the Pope's network, where, which is where we're trying to get. I, I need so, to make something very clear. This is not the Pope. This is a guy whose name is Pope. Oh, oh Pope yeah, Sanchez. Yeah, I'm not trying to pitch. But, yes. Sebastian Pope. Yeah, this isn't, this is isn't, isn't the Catholics versus the Mormons, dude. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to play that game. Like, like, that's, a Look, very, that's a very different... But as we've been plotting this heist for the last month, I think Against we have the probably... Yeah. I think we have probably, uh, for shorthand, stopped wanting to say Pope Sanchez. Okay, and just the say, Pope. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're right. going after Pope, or okay. the Pope. I think oh, it's just nice. shorthand. Nice okay. save, Josh, so I don't sound so fucking no, stupid. No, no. Um, we, um, <laughs> we've been talking about this for a month. I just got a really yeah. great plot line in my head that I want to run for something else, but go on. <laughs> so, so this man has access to, um, <laughs> to, the, to, to the Space Pope's network. Um, Pope... <laughs> I, I've already forgotten his last name. I'm sorry. It's, it's, um, it's, it's Sebastian. Sanchez. Sanchez. Yeah, Sanchez. Is, so if that's the name of the company. Is Pope Sanchez yeah. with two names, and the guy's name is actually Sebastian Pope. So you can say Sebastian okay. or something like that. Got it. Name. Sorry. Okay. All right. Sebastian's network is our target. We need to get into his into his network to um, sabotage his his project's data. This man works for him. We don't. He's not a really a good or a bad guy. We're not trying to hurt him, but we're gonna use him to get through to Sebastian's network. He is an enormous gambler. He loves to gamble. And that is our in, ladies and gentlemen. There will be a contest here this week that we have rigged and he's going to win. This will, um, uh, we're not sure how yet, but this will let his guard down. This will allow us a certain amount of access to him. We are going to, um, we are going to use the opportunity to get his privilege to Sebastian's network. And, uh, Doctor, that's when we need you to, um, plant the data. 
something. And it's, the data itself doesn't hurt anybody. The data just makes their project proposal look bad. And I mean, if zeros and ones have feelings, <laughs> if, you she's know, really trying to reconcile it in her head that it's not actually that bad. She the gets plan, the ship. I would say, is just to point out the already egregious flaws with their plan and highlight them for the Latter day Saints. Doctor. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's a good idea to freeze people and, and shoot them into space? Do you think there's uh, do you this, think there are any dangers? This is not proven science yet, but it is. It does seem theoretically possible, and it does seem like Pope's at the forefront of this. But he's promising to freeze like a thousand, like thousands of more than <laughs> send them to another star. Yeah. Right now, think... with the technology we have now, the generation ship is safer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. I'd 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 wager that um, the data with the, sab the the sabotage would save lives, because the project that we're sabotaging is more dangerous to to the settlers. All right, I need I'm gonna need it's coming along a little, but it's I'm gonna need Dingo to make a persuasion check because this is amazing. I'm really enjoying this one. So go ahead and roll. Uh, you get roll this at five to it and tell me what you get. Persuade. Yeah, so just, just roll an add five? Add five to it. You got it, dude. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What's the logo? Uh, six. Six. Oh, uh, it's not bad. So nine, uh, 14. 14? Hey. Okay. Um, Dingo comes off decently persuasive on this. It's it's a solid con It's a solid piece. You do feel a little bit better. The... His perspective of like live save is an interesting perspective, but it's not a wrong one either. Right, right. And uh, the fact that like... you know we're not going to hurt anybody to get the data where it needs to go is making her feel a little better. But she's still very off guard. <sighs> yeah, we're not hurting anybody. We're saving lives. Uh, the only crime being committed is the a um, aggregation of wealth into this pocket versus that pocket. I'm um, not being dishonest about that. I'm kind of surprised you've made it this far as a grown adult in this world where people die all the fucking time. Um, so... Fire. God damn. Without dying? I just care about ships and making cool ships and making them fly better. I thought I was yeah. just coming out here to design a cool ship, dude. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm a nice person, but I'm sorry. Yeah, out here, everyone is stealing from each other all the fucking time. And you can be a perfectly nice person, but you have to play your cards to to get ahead. And I, I mean, we're 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 stealing from stealers. If that makes you feel any better, but we're 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 not hurting anybody. We're we're just we're. I've said it a million times. We're stealing a job. At at this point, Srijan puts down his half-eaten marito. Um, and uh, looks at looks at the doctor, and he goes, "Well, putting aside the legality of this plan, this situation, this whatever we're, we're trying to do, um, morally, as let me tell you, doctor, someone who's been in the, uh, in the in the union and has been in the workforce for a long, long time, none of these companies are actually morally just. Most of them corrupt as hell." and looking for any way to screw you over and screw everybody else around you over. So if we can do our part to perhaps divert some of these funds, divert some of these plans to someplace else, which is what seems like we're trying to do, um, might actually be a good thing. And, and then he looks at Carmen, and I feel like they've known each other long enough that the fact that she put down her drink, he would be like, okay, she, she's very peaked. Um, he goes, and uh, looking at my partner, I think we're both probably on board on, on this matter. Uh, not to mention, union pensions aren't that great. So if you're telling me a little money goes on goes my way on this, and I can help some folks out, sign me up. Doctor, if you'd like to do this the right way, if you'd like to gain access to this project and um, make all of your dreams a reality the correct way I invite you to go back to earth and um, spend another 10 years trying to get the attention from someone else with this much money but if you're not gonna do it for anybody else I recommend you do it for yourself because you'll never get this opportunity to build a project like this ever again 
yeah, the project is really selling her. She's just like, oh, God, I want it so much. It's mine. I ha the idea is so good. The idea is I'm going to so stand good. up and I'm going to walk away. I'm going to say, everyone take a couple hours. I And I'm going to I'm gonna throw, I'm going to pay the, the tab sure, for the no drinks. Problem. And I'm going to say, everyone, this is tense and this sucks. I hate this energy right now. I'm going to go relax. Um, I'll meet back here and meet back here tonight, you know, for dinner. And anyone who doesn't want to be here, bye. Uh, but anyone who does, I'll see you for dinner. And I'll I'll, I'll bounce. Dingo bounces out of the room. What's up? Um, as he walks away, um, you, you, you probably hear, you probably will hear him. Uh, but Svijan looks at that whale. Since he's paying, I look up the menu and I look at uh, the, the real chicken. The but, well, yeah. <laughs> well, I had the burrito. What's the more? Uh, the more would be they. They also do um, noodle filled burritos here. Uh, they have like yeah. I had them in L.A., dude. They're real, okay? This is all, like, the expansion <laughs> is based on real science, and I've had noodle-filled burritos, okay? Uh, okay, okay, that's um, the thing. Well, the, the, uh, the, the little the most expensive thing. The, yeah, but they have, like, they have, like, a different quality of noodles, so they have, like, the generic kind of like, fungal-based ones, but mm -hmm. then they have other ones that are higher quality, made of actual, like, you know, what you would get on Earth or even on Mars, um, but they have to, like, special put that out and everything like that, too, and, you know, but it, it won't be cheap, yeah, but you would definitely, uh, put a ding in Dingo's budget. Um, and yeah, he just goes in and orders, well, okay. All right. when, when, when in Rome, might as well. Yeah. All right. And then, yeah. uh, as he's doing that, he looks at Carmen, looks at her drink, and then points it to Mel, just to, like, maybe give her a, give her a drink to calm her down, kind of as a... <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, I'll get I'll uh, give uh, Mel the rest of my drink. Um, but ironically enough, uh, Srijan, I was actually going to do the exact same thing since Dingo's picking up the tab. Yeah, more <laughs> the merrier. I, I think I'm, you know, that that bottle of tequila that's up there on the shelf. That looks like a nice bottle. That looks like. Hell, a nice I'm bottle. not much of a drinker, but I'd go for that bottle. Uh, you, I think you and me should go back. Ingo's going to be really confused later. when he looks at this tile yeah. later. <laughs> what the heck? Well, so, so, he is buying. So fun <laughs> fact about the expanse system, it actually uses an income score. Uh, Jacob, can you make an income test? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, add five to this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's actually an actual stat in the game. Yeah, you don't have money. You have like. That's funny. I mean, I will, I will pay this personally if I have to. But oh, I yeah. assume Fred, I assume Fred gives me a grease the wheels. Yeah, I was card, say, you have some kind of You, you have budget. a, you, you do actually have an emergency cred chip. Like you have like the great for like for like the really. Bad well, this stuff. isn't an emergency. Yeah, I'll pay personally before this isn't yeah, an emergency. You don't know how much Whatever. I eat. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, um, what do I do? I just add give five. you the roll or do yeah, I add five? Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, you you can afford this readily. It's not too bad. But you can see that you can see that they're hanging out eating. Which I don't know if that was Dingo's plan to have them hang out and eat, but that means that people are like are together. You know, you know that they're together. Mm -hmm. If it goes, this is fine. If it goes, if it keep, we'll see how they role play. If it keeps going up, let me know, and maybe I'll <laughs> cut them off and send them a send them a curt text or something. Okay, <laughs> guys, come we'll on, see. curt text. All right, I'm gonna let you know. Carmen slides this drink in front mm -hmm. of me, and I'm just gonna kind of look at it for a little while, and just like really, she needs she needs a minute. I'm sorry, she needs yeah. a minute. It's so um, Dr. Dr. Holson, a surprise. I'm sorry. Go ahead, <laughs> Doctor Holson. Have you uh, had to do much in terms of uh, grant writing uh, in your career? I mean, yeah, back in back a few years ago, not for a while, but yeah, yeah, grant writing. And I never well, would have sabotaged someone else's grant. Well, let's just say uh, from from a, a, someone who's been in academia a, a hair longer than you have, and I got out for a reason. Uh, there's a game you play. No matter what industry you're in, in academia, it's the politics. It's, uh, you know, the, the networking and relationships so you can get, you know, the funding for your grant as opposed to somebody else's. It's the same thing here. It's identical. You're trying to get a leg up 
professionally. Yeah, I can. I'm that. not a philosopher. I can't talk to you about the ethics or morality of everybody's doing it, but um, from a pragmatic approach, everybody's doing it. And so, if you aren't, uh, you're the one that's going to get left behind. Um, and I think that's just the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. John, if we think we have a few hours, I think Mel would probably want to like think more about sure. the Pope, the Pope Sanchez sure. proposal, and like whether you know if there's any way to do an investigation into whether sure, I really yeah, think absolutely. they have totally. like faked absolutely. their numbers. Like, absolutely. could they have faked their numbers? Like, absolutely. I'll feel better about it if I genuinely think their proposal okay. is is like shoddy in some way. This so is going to be there... a research test. This will be a, you okay. get a plus seven to this because you are a hell of a researcher as character. Um, That's what since I, I, as part of the I gotta initial, know on like my handheld or on the internet yeah, or something. Right. Go ahead, Mark. Since as part of the initial, you know, like proposal process, I was involved and uh, did With some of this Sanchez sort of. One? Uh, I, I was not. Uh, I did not propose the the Pope Sanchez project. I was proposing uh, the Taco project. Um, we were all in the same place. There were a series of meetings and we gave all our proposals kind of around the same time. And so there was a lot of, at that time, like, shall we say, um, uh, you know, uh, espionage and counter espionage, trying to get a sense of who was pitching what. Uh, do, is there a way that I can assist with this, John, in order to um, uh, yeah. maybe yeah, recall some right tidbits, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, yeah. a white paper that yeah, I saw, sure. you know? Um, I'll give I'll give Mel an extra uh, bonus plus one on this because uh, you're getting assisted by it. So yeah, plus eight on the total. You, okay. Mob is pointing me at the, you know, yes. the right. Yes, you know, that's hopefully. And Huge. I'll tell a story as part of it. Uh, part of my help is, you know, I say, well, you know, if, if you're looking, I'll uh, let me tell you a little bit about this time where, uh, uh, you know, I assisted Fred Johnson as part of this. And I'll regale the stories mm. of, you know, Adipa's fate, part one. Uh, <laughs> who, fill, fill me uh, in. Okay. Yeah. One. All right. Basically, he explains to you that, that him and uh, several other people with Fred Johnson went to present Tycho's proposal. Uh, against other people's proposals, including Mal Kwiatkowski, other companies, something like that, too, Ice Jar, a startup. And basically, the Mormons preferred the cryogenic solution because their whole idea is that they would like to have the people that get to Tau City be the people they put into to go to Tau City. Sure. I mean, would, that's human nature. I that's human nature, that. yeah. The, the, people that, the people that basically, their, uh, their donors who donated are the ones that get the actual reward, not their great grandchildren. Is the premise so? Uh, I rolled twenty one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you go and pull all this stuff up. There has been. There's no certified uh, human tests on this. They do have like tests on like rats and like you know some animals here and there, like small animals, but full blown human size. And even then, the way they've proposed it is that it, so it's like a hundred year journey or so. Mm -hmm. um, even with like a with like Marv's your basis and everyone's staying hundred years at least, uh, unless you want to you know liquefy everybody. Um, but, um, you can get there quick, it's not in one piece. But um, uh, the idea was that they would put people in cryogenic stasis for 20 years, wake them up for a year, they do stuff, maintain the ship, go back to sleep, and do this in shifts to then get there. That way, like, people really honestly, quote unquote, only would age like five years on the way there or something. Mm -hmm. um, this is. I'll say, I'm looking for evidence that they've, like, bodgy their numbers like but i'm you know dingo saying everybody lies everybody espionages everybody's like doing something wrong and i'm like are they are they doing something wrong or is it just immature it's immature it's and unless like they're they're really keeping this a, like they they have to be keeping this a super secret and there's been no proof of concept deployed like shown that they can actually like do this on a big scale for that long okay um, so i really do feel like they're over promising though Right. Yeah, it, it feels uh, they're you know they're promising a moonshot. They're getting into orbit type thing. Like you know they're not they're not there yet. Um, okay. And uh, and especially with unless like unless they're already engaging in human tests, which if they are is extremely problematic. Uh, but according to what they say, they haven't engaged in any of that. They've just done like animals for like a, they they have like a few rats they put in cryo in cryostasis for like two years and got them out fine. But okay. that's a rat. The, sure. the biomass is a lot. <laughs> That's a big yeah, scale. Yeah. There's a scale issue here, especially when you're free of a thousand Mormons. 
Okay. Well, I think that's enough information for Mel to think that like the proposal is genuinely not ready you, and it shouldn't go ahead. You can readily convince yourself of this. Yes. If you if you feel yeah. If you there's doubt. There's enough doubt. Yes. yes. Okay. I I want now. I I got this is my own personal feeling here. Uh, I, really want, I really want to know what Carmen's up to in all this. I want to hear Carmen's like hanging out here with these people, watching them debate. Like, could these guys, could these eggheads do this? I'm really curious how Carmen considers all this. And uh, by all means, um, we have our union rep here, but uh, you can you you get a vote. I'm, I'm really curious. Uh, Carmen Carmen is into it. She's she's intrigued. She will do almost anything for a big enough paycheck. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that uh, Srijan is is down for it, she's also down for it. You know, she's she likes the idea of kind of like the the the, the Robin Hood stealing from the rich, giving to the poor kind of mm -hmm. angle that was brought up earlier. Um, and she thinks that, that there's a good opportunity for adventure in a lot of this and trying something new um, and just doing something that she hasn't done before. And it sounds like an opportunity to to kick some ass. And she's always down for an opportunity to kick some ass and drink some tequila. <laughs> I, I mean, almost out of tequila. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. All right. I, think, I think Mel has convinced herself that, you know, I don't think she's 100% there, but she's like 95% of the way there. So she's not leaving. Okay, I dig it. I dig it. Um, do any of you guys want to ping Dingo? Or Dingo, do you want to make your way back? Or uh, you guys can do what you need to do, relax a little bit here, take it easy. Uh, well, if if we got a couple hours before mm -hmm. Dingo wants everyone to meet back, I will, you know, kind of go uh, stretch my legs. Sure. Get the lay of the land, and then uh, you know, uh, of, reconvene um, when the time comes. It's a it's a fun station. Uh, the the main station is built. It's so there was originally like a large like mining complex here when they were mining the actual asteroid way way back, like a hundred years back or so. Um, that area is now a casino, uh, <laughs> and the whole station, everything runs through the casino somehow. So like gambling is a big thing here, uh, of particular interest. Because of the novelty of gravity to belters, pachinko machines are extremely popular. <laughs> Especially with spin gravity. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, a, it's a different uh, type of game, and like supposedly certain machines on certain levels have different like you know, odds and all this stuff. Like you can play the same machine like-, like Different Coriolis forms. Or different Coriolis, yeah. It's, it's a very much a, a niche kind of- uh, uh, novelty feature. Uh, those of you, since you guys are all Earthers and Martians, you're like, you guys are weird. But like, this, it's it's a big gravity is kind of like a, it's a novelty to them. It's like this is a fun. Oh, look, they got they got you know. It's like it's like when you go to Vegas, they got free drink refills. It's it's that kind of novelty, but it's gravity. <laughs> um, uh, remind me, is this is this a quarter G or a half a G? Oh, here? geez, no, not even that. It's like I think Eros's spin is like. Uh, twelve point one two G or something like that. Okay. Point okay. So it's one. It's low. Yeah. It's still low grab. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. It's a lot right. of low grab. You're not like bouncing around, but and it also depends where you are on the station. But like, um, the closer you are to the center, but like the center is all like the reactors and like, it's pretty bad down the center. You guys are mostly towards the, the top here. I also like to mention, by the way, for those, that, those that are new, you have to remember going up goes towards the center of the of the station, towards the center of the, the asteroid going down takes you outside to space uh, just it's always it's when they say i'm gonna go up that means they're yeah, they're not going towards the sky <laughs> um, so they're going underground essentially but yeah um yeah no, it's uh you walk around there's lots of smells uh people are advertising different things there's like boxing events if you want to go bet on slingshot racing they got that here um it's pretty indiscriminate compared to martian society and, and your time on earth it's very uh open-ended in terms of what you would want to do here um, and station security, once again, is pretty minimal. Uh, you're noticing a lot of the, like, like people keep themselves like uh, people have bouncers or like private security or places don't put up with people fucking around. Uh, they will throw you out, um, and their neighbors will come over and help help them throw you out. Um, but protogen, you do see some of the officers here with guns, and like people do open carry here to some degree, but like they're not really. Um, protogen is yeah, very hands off, I'll say. How they have those contracts? Just, it's, it's, you, can, you can't imagine. Cool. Just, just doing a quick, a quick 
walk around trying to get a sense sure. of my bearings. Sure, sure. It's, it, it's, it's a nice station. You can tell it used to be nice, but it's, it's gone run down and everything. Uh, then you go to uh, Svijan. What, what's something yeah. you got? So, I, you uh, I think at this point, while uh, the rest of the uh, the Tycho Corp, Corp guys leave um, and the doctors having her <clears throat> existential crisis, uh, <laughs> I think I think uh, what Svijan might do actually is try to reach out to some of his contacts in the Union okay. and see if we can kind of get more information about anything else he could find out about about this deal, about these two companies. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, any other relevant information? Okay. Um, this will be, uh, since you have, the, you have the union contacts and you are a distinct member of that, uh, you can go ahead and make a uh, communications check. Uh, so roll the 3d6 and add five to it. And then you get bonus stuff points because you're a union association. So you're going to get a lot of information out of this, basically. Hey. All right. So let's see what we get. Ooh, big number. Oh, shit. Wait. All three of them are fives? Isn't that 15. like... That's 15. Yeah, yeah, 15 and you get doubles. So you, you have like seven stuff points on this you can spend. So you can like find out like, okay, so you have the union contacts. I'm just going to run this for you. You have the union contacts. And what happens is you start digging, they start getting back to you. It takes like with light delay, it takes like maybe 30, 40 minutes for a few people to get back to you. And um, they're all, but they're on other stations around the belt and everything. And they're saying like one of the guys, like three of the guys come back, you know, you've worked with these guys personally. I'm not going to name them. Please, please don't have to name them. Um, and they are like, hey, oh shit, like, uh, they're like, Tyco is pretty good to work for. Uh, we don't really trust Fred Johnson being the quote unquote butcher of Anderson Station, so we have some problems with that. But they mentioned that two years ago, a Pope, a Pope Sanchez subsidies, a company called Vector Security, quelled a union uprising. Actually, came in like Pinkerton style and like like busted heads. Um, they and showed which up. Which one did this? The the Pope one? Yeah, one of Pope subsidies, a, a company called Vector Security. Yeah. So yeah. um, they're like, that's the yeah. one that the the Captain Gunhilder yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a, it's it's the same. It's the same. He works for the the bigger corporation, but yeah, it's a, they have a sub corporation. Yeah. And basically, yeah, he's like, yeah, they uh, they haven't made any favors out here. If they're gonna build anything out here, they're definitely not gonna use our labor. Like, we won't work with them type stuff. Like, a lot of the unions are like, no, we we you know we won't work with those guys. They're scabs. Fuck them. Yeah. Um, so they're like, they give you some info about that. That's a big part. Uh, they also say that um, there are also a lot of the Belter, some of the Belters and the Martians, you know, are like, uh, I mean, we're cool with freezing Earthers. Good luck to them. Uh, but like, you ain't getting me in one of those pods. You know, like, uh, you know, the, only, the only pods that Belters get into are like slingshot ships. Like, you know, <laughs> like that's it. Yeah. Like, they, they already have their space cop. <laughs> yeah. They don't need yeah. to be, yeah, they don't need more of them kind of thing. They're like, that's, they're, everyone's kind of like, these, these guys are nuts, but, um, you know, the, the, if the Mormons want to do that, if they want to freeze themselves and send themselves to a new, a new sun, go for it. I think, you yeah. Know, it's free, it's a free solar system, bro. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> Good luck, bro. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, uh, let me know how it works out. <laughs> Godspeed. Um, um, yeah. But yeah, you get, sorry, you get, was there more? Yeah. Um, is there anything you kind of want to know more specifically? Um, I think I think as I get that sort of information, um, first and foremost, uh, before I continue asking further questions from my my contacts, mm -hmm. um, I take my data pad and then flick it to both the doctor and to Carmen, mm -hmm. uh, more so for the doctor. And I say, well, if that ain't the final proverbial nail in the coffin, I don't know what else will convince you, but uh, not the nails. If our work here can help a bunch of people and make sure that another uprising like or another crackdown like that don't happen again, I, well, I already know where I'm gonna go with all this. But if mm -hmm. you clearly, that company ain't gonna be good for anybody here. And on top of that, seems like your plan is probably gonna be the better one anyway. So if we can tilt things in that favor a bit more, I don't see why this isn't a, bad, a good thing. Yeah. Okay. She's she's there. She's there. Yeah. She's just not happy. She's there. Yeah. Um, I, will um, give, I am going to give both of you uh, a bond where basically uh, you guys get a bonus at some point in the future. You guys get a bonus stunt point you can spend on the other person. Okay. All you right. Get like, cool. you, get like a, you get like a little bonus like because uh, you guys there's a there's a trust there. Yeah. Cool. Um, um, would I already have one here with Carmen, considering we've known each other a long time? Uh, you would have that bond because you guys. Uh, yeah, I'll give you guys. You guys get the bonus. Yeah. Thank you. you can use that in the future. So. 
You're the buzz. Uh, Carmen, is there anything you want to be doing while everyone else kind of like, you see like Mel's going through the data pad, uh, you know, uh, Svijan is like going through and like contacting all these people, doing the union thing. You've seen him do this before when he starts like hitting all the forums. I should also mention in the expanse, uh, forums are huge because of light delay. Uh, mm. it, it's, it's, uh, yeah, your little live communication, the same Star Trek guy. Is, um, um, they, yeah, so we, we obey the, phys- the laws of physics in this uh, universe. So, um, <laughs> But yeah, there is the there is that whole element of uh, of light delay. So again, the form you get all these like the contacts kind of it's like a Discord server, like in the future, in the future, but better. Um, <laughs> it's not saying much. Uh, right. Are there any are there any uh, points of interest where we're uh, at right now? Um, down. Uh, I mean, there's casinos, gambling. There are docks. Uh, the the one thing about Eros is that because it's kind of outdated docks here, um, docking fees are super cheap here. Um, so like the docks are actually pretty uh, well, uh, I'm not saying they're not abandoned or anything like that, but there's not like the constant traffic of like moving equipment through them. Like you would, like you see on series or even see like like uh, near Mars or something like that. Like there's no, there's not goods coming in and out like rapidly, like people aren't doing industrial scale. They're bringing in food, they're bringing in like, you know, more pachinko balls or whatever it is, but like, it's not like real um, over the top, like, uh, like shipping is more people, more of like transports and everything um, okay. would be something you notice about the station that, that is a distinct element. Um, the one thing you do notice as a uh, Marine, especially, um, you know, knowing about where, you know, the, the doors and corners are, as it would be, I said the thing guys, um, is that uh, every thing in the station, wherever, almost wherever you are, unless you're on the outside of the station, pretty much towards the outside, you have to go through the casino. The casino is like the biggest choke point on this entire station. It's like the duty free zone in airports. <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Um, buy something. Yeah, it's gambling is the big thing here. I mean, by all means, there's brothels and 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 there's like uh, sports bars and like some you know fight matches. But people love to gamble. There's not really card games. They're more um, like rule, kind of roulette style games or pachinko would be the best ways to put them. Um, and even like it's even more the, like it's more like Reno than Vegas, though. Yeah. In terms of the class that we're talking. Now there about. are there are like quote unquote private games you you do know of, Carmen. There is always a private game. I, I think okay. I think the March Marino is always a private game. <laughs> is um is there an armory at all? Um, there is places to purchase weapons here, and they do have an open carry policy. Um, however, though, you, ha- you are required to keep it holstered and it has to be uh, revealed. It can't be a concealed carry, uh, okay. especially because, and they, the only place they really, they der- they really distinctly enforce that, you can tell, is in the casino itself. Um, okay. Did I mention the casino? Yes. <laughs> is, <laughs> is, um, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, Carmen's had a couple drinks and I think she might want to go check out the casino herself. Okay. Um, she likes to barter, so I'm wondering if there's maybe somebody there who has something on them that she wants to try to get, or maybe she can win from them. Okay. Okay. Um, there's like uh, most of the gambling here is done on like cred sticks. It's kind of like little chips, you know, or whatever you have, or you, you go through your account, so and you have like your your quote unquote your euros dollars. Um, each station has its own like currency that then gets basically for lack of a better term, like blockchain around the solar system. <laughs> um, uh, and you um, you can go in and like, uh, you kind of go in with the credits. The casino itself only does credit transactions. They don't let you like put your watch up or anything. Um, but there are other parlors that do that kind of stuff. If you want to find a place like that. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. You go and find some, uh, there's like some like bars where people are, are betting. Uh, there's like guys that I mean, you walk past on the table. Some guys got like what looks to be a, a trench knife in like the betting pool. There's it's like a pile of money, some like chips from other stations, like random currencies, and like I kid you not, like a guy's trench knife on top, like a like a little World War One knife on top of like a pile of money. They're gambling for it. it this is like, I, if this doesn't scream Martian Marine, I don't know what screams Martian Marine. <laughs> And they're they're okay. sitting there playing cards like they're they're not doing the pachinko stuff like it's um, them playing a card game in this bar. The bar's pretty rough. They play some music's a little little discordant. It's definitely a belcher bar. 
Um, but yeah. you see a few Earthers and, and, and uh, Martians there. You can tell that of uh, like to high stakes stuff. Yeah, can I join in on their game? Yeah, the guy, the guy is, oh. <clears throat> so as you do, like the guy who's the attendant kind of ponies up and he goes, uh, uh, yeah, we have a we have a buy-in or if you have something to, to put down as collateral, um, wh what do you have to put up? I'm looking at your sheet and trying to see what you have to put up. I think you have um we have a screwdriver <laughs> well i mean you have your tool belt uh you have like a, you have a decent actually like a decent quality tool belt um and you do have like um the only thing you would have a value on you would be like your um it, it might be like a not a metal but like um like a, a coin you got from the martian marines that would be a value uh what they called um oh not commencement coins They're, they have a name for them Proof coin. It's a thing in like military culture. I don't know what they're called. Um, they get the government gives them out. Um, but yeah, you have like that from the military, which is kind of a, a keepsake that's pretty valuable to you. But like they're asking for something like that or a fair amount of money to put up. Um, um does she does she have a fair amount of money? I mean, she's she knows she's about you, to. You have get some money. A fair amount of yeah, money. you have you have a decent amount of money. You're actually not like um, yeah, you're not. Um, it's called commitment challenge points. That's what they call challenge points. That's right. Okay. Let's let's buy in because she, I mean she knows she's right. about to. Uh, go ahead and make an income test. So this is gonna you're gonna be rolling three d six and add four to it, and this determines if you if you have enough to buy into it. It'll be a DC fifteen. That's gonna be kind of a hard check. Uh, thirteen plus four. You said. Okay. Uh, you were three d six. The three six sided dice plus four. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, 17? 17. Okay. Yeah. So this is. This is so much money that it's going to reduce your income score by one permanent. Okay. Not a bad move. You might be able to win some money. Let's do it. All right. So you go. All right. So you, so you, you put you put the, you put the books. You uh you you pony it up. They go. All right. Well, we got a new big spender here, and they, they cash you in, and they sit down, and you sit down and start playing cards. Um, a lot of you have no idea where Carmen went. <laughs> um, and we'll we'll come back to Carmen's uh, night of gambling. Uh, Marv. You got anything while you wait for Dingo? Oh, oh no, no. Nah. I, I think after kind of just doing a lap and getting my bearings, I'll probably sit down. You know, the the constant challenge, uh, I feel like, is just staying on top of emails, uh, you know, messages, things like that. So I'll go uh, take a little time. I'm sure I've got quarters somewhere and, uh, you know, catch up on some correspondence, uh, maybe jot down some notes uh, for, you know, whatever my current, uh, you know, pet project is, and I'll kind of lay low until we're supposed to meet back up. All right. All right, cool. You go ahead and uh, you start uh, hanging out. Um, the, uh, y'all take it easy, take it low. And I want to say thank you. Uh, we have someone, thank you, Jesse. Uh, the churn has gone up to a mighty oh, seven. Uh, I need to catch up on that. And uh, I want to thank one of our donors for giving me a, uh, I'm going to say the thing, Jacob, uh, it is uh, that redeem the uh, hard times all around, I guess, uh, reward, which is a, I get a reroll. I get a reroll. Uh, mm -hmm. I make things hard for you guys. Yes, me, not you, me. Yes. <laughs> um, sorry, for those that don't know, that, that was one of my favorite Eric lines from the show. Hard times all around, mm -hmm. I guess. I mean, it's just such a good line. Such a good line. All right. Um, <laughs> Especially coming from Clarissa, because he he's responding to something Clarissa Mao yeah. said. Yeah, it's like yeah. whoa, shit, Clarissa, <laughs> daughter of Jules Per Meow. Okay, I wanna, right. I, I actually I, I gotta drop I gotta drop some geekery on uh, Jesse real quick. I, I need so in the books, you need to understand how rich like Jules Per Meow is. He owns one of the um, uh, most unique pieces of real estate Earth has. He owns the Grange Three. He owns the Lagrange point three, or did I say it right? You know the Lagrange points, like on um, like. Oh, like the gravitational. Yeah, point. he owns that. He point. owns Lagrange. Yes. Yeah, Lagrange. Lagrange. He owns Lagrange, Lagrange three. three, and just has like okay. his, his, his space mansion there. Yeah, casually, just just, that's just, fine. just casually, because he had the money to do it. The other ones are occupied by like the other ones are occupied by like you know shipyards and like military bases. <laughs> and he's yeah, just, yeah. Like, NASA spacecraft, if they're still yeah. there. Yeah, he's just like he's just like yeah, I, you know. Let's buy something like that. Why not? Right? The rights to that. It's just like that's just insane. How that, I love that perspective of cash. That he has. <laughs> there are limited supply. The Grange Three is is a, a position in space that is 186 million miles 
from Earth and it's located behind the sun, opposite yeah, Earth. Yeah, yeah. yeah he did wow. sit there. Yeah, so, in a, it, so it's 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 behind the sun in a permanent blind spot from Earth. Yeah, and he, good place yeah. for some shady stuff. Good, yeah, <laughs> good, this is just his mansion. Yeah, he hangs out. So that's his that's his that's his, that's his uh, you know offshore home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hell of it all, hell of a shore. Anyways, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, um, so yeah, he uh, uh, you guys uh, you guys kind of do it all. Uh, I'm gonna have Isabel roll the gamble check here, and then we're gonna reconvene here uh, and uh, take our take our first break of the day here shortly. Uh, uh, Isabel, you're gonna make a gambling chess. So this is, I believe. Oh my god, I, I have not had to do a gambling test this game for a very long time. I remember what gambling is in this <laughs> game, um, and how much. Uh, and uh, let me see right here. I gotta look it up. Cause While John's is... looking that up, I'll say Mel just is just redoing all of her calculations again. Just <laughs> she just sat down with her with her proposal and there she's looking at the ship and she's just recalculating everything because it's got to be perfect. And it is. It is. It's communication. So uh, this will be uh, Isabel. You'll you'll add a plus one to this. Okay. I have a feeling we're gonna spend some fortune here. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> Thirteen. Uh, as long as it's red. Thirteen. That includes a plus one. Yes. Okay. All right. And I, I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll your gam. What you need to beat. Eh, I'm gonna use one of my re rolls because it's hard times all around. I guess. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, you're gonna need to up your roll by one point. So what this is, this was for fortune. So what was your lowest die? What, what single die was the lowest? I had two threes. Two threes. Okay. So you need to push one of those to a four. That's gonna okay. that's gonna cost you four fortune. So if you look at your sheet, at the top of it has a fortune total, has a fortune amount. Lower that by uh, by four, and you can succeed. If you don't, you'll lose your money permanently. Oh. So do you want to win the gambling or not? That's my question. Um. And fortune's just kind of your hit point slash luck in the game is the best way to describe it. Not actual damage, it's just like luck. Above the table. It's a one shot. Spend them all. Yeah, spend them all. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do all it. Right. So you spend four. And I get up the churn. Um but yeah, you managed to win. Uh you now have your you have your you have your full income back, so you have the four. And you also get what's called a temp bonus of, of two. So you can you have a one time when you make an income test, you get a one time bonus of two whenever you want. Basically you have extra money to burn. But you end up um, oh you but you wanted to get something, huh? Um I wanted you that win, knife. You wanted oh you wanna win the knife? Okay. You win the knife. You have a trench knife now. <laughs> yeah, next and the next bottle of tequila is on common. I yeah. should have known fate would have, have let you win against yeah. someone um, like me. <laughs> she says drunkily. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll give you. A, I'll, I'll find a fun picture of a trench knife for you. So, uh, yeah, it looks like this. We'll use this one here. This, this is a fun. One. I'll put this in the chat for you. There okay. you go. There, there's a trench knife. Um, okay. it's brutal. Yeah, it's, yeah. They're like the knives with like the spiked handles. Like it's it's yeah. For trench combat, yeah, they're uh, very. Uh, the handle is very helpful in space. Um, uh, ask, ask any astronaut about the lost a tool; uh, <laughs> they'll tell you. All right, so um, Dingo shoots out a message to everybody that, that gets to everybody here, um, and it says, uh, "My open bar part. My open bar party is over. The perks <laughs> are now for uh, closers only. <laughs> uh, message on board if that's you. Who wants the message on board?" Um. Uh, I think Strijan sends Strijan? on board. On Mel sends on board. On board. Marv. I was on board to begin with, but <laughs> I'll say it again. Uh, on uh, even boardier. <laughs> uh, Carmen. Uh, Great. I'm so, oh. Absolutely. I'm so sorry. Can you repeat the question? Oh, I was um, at my basically, stats. Dingo's asking, "Are you on board with the mission?" Oh, on board. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. You guys all message back. Uh, he gives you a location to show up at. And uh, the plan's going to commence here. Um, I think we're going to take our first break here. Uh, so we're going to take a 15 minute break, guys. Uh, let me go ahead and set that up. Um, but we're getting close. We're getting. We're about a, almost a quarter of our goal here. Uh, I got to. Oh I got to do math in my head real quick because I, I have to like put this in seconds, and it's a big number. Um. Uh. So, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and take a a, a break here, um, and then we're going to come back and do our second part of our game. Um, guys, you can donate and everything like that to World Central Kitchen, uh, who we're playing for. Uh, you guys having fun over there? It's okay. it's okay, that's all right. Sure. I, haven't, I haven't disappointed you. I haven't ruined the expanse for you yet that you're not gonna wanna finish the series, KP. 
or play the video <laughs> game. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't that been that bad? Um, but thank you guys, everyone, for watching. Uh, we're gonna be back in a uh, in about 15 minutes here. Go ahead. Oh, let me make sure I got the. Uh, yeah, let me go and get the thing here. We'll return in about 15 minutes, uh, and uh, we'll see you then. All right, see ya. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you, everybody, for the donations, too. Uh, we're about almost a quarter of our way to our goal. Uh, plenty of time to donate here, uh, raising money for World Central Kitchen. Uh, your donations can go to rerolls, which I will waste extravagantly to try to get <laughs> Isabel, Isabel's character to lose money. Um, <laughs> you can use it to raise the churn. You can use it to uh, even get an autographed photo of Jacob Mundell as Eric from The Expanse firing a large gun. Uh, which was dope. Which is actually a great shot. You 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 got I, you got a lot of good sh got uh, stills of you with guns on that show. Like, <laughs> fun fact, fun fact. That gun. I don't know where it is now, or if it's been. I don't know where that prop is, but that prop gun. Uh, the very end of it, it's very gnarly. It's got spikes and stuff. The mm -hmm. props guy told me that was a a, a cooking. You t that was a meat tenderizer. <laughs> I suppose any, any gun could be a meat cool. tenderizer if you if you really think about it. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, it's so cool. But yeah, we got a lot of great stuff here. Uh, still time to uh, donate, so please uh, take a look at that and help out keep pe pe people all over the world in all kinds of disaster zones and such like that. But speaking of disaster zones, let's get back to this game um, <laughs> and uh, Eros. Uh, uh, so uh, Dingo's recalled you all back to a uh, hotel kind of boardroom suite area type thing. Uh, it's at a it's kind of a not a great place, not a high end place, but kind of one of those off the the main beaten path, someplace called the Blue Falcon. And you go in, and um, the uh, it's it's not clean. It's kind of a check yourself in type situation. Uh, you know, you get that because you clearance. It's, it's like Airbnb, but you know, more ethical. Um, and so you uh, you go on uh, meet up in this room. Uh, does Dingo provide refreshments or anything? Or do you have like a bottle or something? Or just, just water? Or how, how you want to do that? He's already provided us a lot of food and drink today. That's fair. This is fair. <laughs> yeah, there's 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 uh, one bottle of tequila for Carmen. I don't know. I've paid attention to kind of what their favorite things are. There's like a, a soda, water. Yeah, there's there's a there's there's a light there's light fare. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Okay. So while while my we can roll this however you want but just one thing that i've been doing while my crack squad was gambling and um having a meltdown i i'd like to i would like to actually do some work and i'd like to use my my burglary my observation and my contacts talents to um identify uh and possibly make contact with anyone who's working this station who has access either to um, Gunhilder's quarters and or his spaceship. And I'm, I'd right. like to target right. somebody who has vulnerabilities such as debt, addiction, or other um, uh, pro <laughs> pro proclivities. So, uh, yeah, you knew that Gunhilder was a gambler. That was the whole premise of setting up him winning this yeah. kind of, like, excursion. And he seems to be excited about it. He does seem to frequent Eros at least, like, once a year as kind of a vacation, but this is going to be an extra special year for <clears throat> various reasons, we'll say. Um, and, uh, he is, he is held up in a, in a, in a higher scale hotel, one's closer to the, to like the docks and kind of the, the casino and everything. And it's got like nice, um, a lot nicer than where you guys are right now. Um, you know, the walls are actually, you know, fully padded and painted uh, versus having exposed rock, like a little bit in the room here. You can see where someone punched a hole through like the, the padding to the rock um, or carved the, carved the way to it. Um, and it's at a place called the, um, we'll call it the, um, the extra roll. It's called the extra roll, mm -hmm. and it's kind of a nice, nicer place uh, for uh, really kind of bring high, not like let's say high, um, high rollers, but it, high rollers do do occur there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you do make there is some you do have some con. You could try to contact someone in Protogen if you want to to ask about this stuff. Um, but uh, as far as like, I don't know, like 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 who are you, who are you thinking of asking? Like, do you want to talk to people on the street? Do you want to like go and just like call someone at Protogen, the security station. Do you want to try to like talk to some of like the locals here? That sounds good to you. Well, I want to, I well let, let's pool my, my team together. Okay. And I want to say, let's, let's make a, let's make a, uh, let's make a, let's make a plan guys. And I want to clarify, explaining this to my team. I also would like to just clarify with you, John, mm -hmm. um, in this, in this dossier you gave me, it says 
The, um, we need to leverage means to plant the corrupted uh, plans into Pope Sanchez's network. Mm -hmm. And this will require going to a core base or a major node, yeah. namely some place not Eros. In addition, you need to ensure you are not... Uh, so Colorado, we need yeah. to... We need to leverage access to the network yeah. here, but we need to do it somewhere else. Right. Yeah. So Eros, uh, you would be able to like, access this data pad, but because of the, the way light delay works, like if, if a station's getting hacked from another station, they're going to have a lot of time to respond to the hack. Um, mm. Because like, you know, it's, it's like, you know, 30 minutes delay. They're like, oh, that's easy, right? Um, so uh, it's easy to cut off the connection because it's, you know, it's just a light signal. Um, but yeah, so you would have to like go to like either bring this to one of Pope's bases, like one of his like, like shipyards or like a corporate headquarters, a lab, someplace that has high clearance um, and directly feed it into their network. Um, you know that the, that the way that like the thing that Marv has on him, the, the data version he has, it'll like start overriding their versions of the thing uh, in kind of a clandestine way. So mm -hmm. it'll replace their, their plans throughout the network over time. Won't happen immediately, but over like the next like week, their plans are going to go to this like not not official version we'll say so here's what i'm thinking team and i would love this is not fully baked but i so i need your help what i feel like we can do is when gunhilder wins this contest he's we're going to we're going to ply him with alcohol we're going to make him uh, suggestible and try and gain while he is distracted and or vulnerable somehow we're going to gain access to his shit either through his hotel room or through his ship wherever it's docked and i'm hoping that's when the doctor and um and my and marv can hopefully if i if we can gain them access to the physical space they can implant some kind of the the, the corrupted data into like a virus or something that when the ship mm -hmm. later, when when Gunhilder gets to the place he needs to be, um, perhaps it can be programmed Marv to have a delayed activation that that once it's in the right network will dispel the information um, after he's left the station. Does that make sense? Uh, I think uh, what you're describing is possible. Now, I'm certainly not the most uh, technologically savvy person, but I might know somebody who uh, uh, has the capacity to uh, uh, create something like that for us to leverage here. Uh, and I'm also a security expert, so I can help write any code or anything like that. Oh, um, oh your brilliant, security, brilliant. Security is more about like knowing about how to like break the systems and also like get mm -hmm. in through systems and kind of like the, the general tactics those systems use. Coding's out of your wheelhouse, actually. Unless you have like, I don't think, okay. I don't think, I don't think, um, I don't know if we have a coder here. Uh, no. Um, you're, you're, I have cryptography. Yeah, your best bet would be Jesse. Or it'd be, I'm sorry, Dr. Holston. Uh, might have a way to do it, but yeah. So, is the plan? Can I ask? Yeah. Is the plan to subtly corrupt their data such that they don't notice that we've done something, and then they present numbers that actually look really bad? Or is the plan to wipe their system so that they have nothing to present, or something in between? I think, and tell me what you think. I think the idea is to sabotage the plan so it looks like their work is shit. If we wipe it, then they will know they've been hacked. We're trying to make it look like they have not been hacked and their work is bad. Okay, so it's more the former where we're trying to mm -hmm. make it look like it's bad. But we also, if they notice we've changed some, it can't be a, like a huge change because if they exactly. notice it, it'll be the same as if we wiped it. Yeah, and what 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 the proposed version of like what their little the little data crypt they have, basically the information they're they're saying they have. You haven't seen the actual crypt where they have the actual like corrupted uh, shard or whatever to call it. Um, the idea is that it would propagate through the network over time. And so whenever their system goes to try to match it, it just gets overwritten with the, the bad version. So it would be a very subtle thing. And it's and like you're guessing it's like minor changes just enough to the formulas that the stuff just doesn't work. Like make this pipe just right. off so we don't actually have a copy of their proposals. So part of the us, part of Mel and Marv getting access to the physical space is someone has to go in and make the change to the file. Yeah, just upload it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and so where? So, 
Is this in? So I, I this is probably on Gunhilder's ship, right? Do, I, do we, if you he, uh, so you look him up and he doesn't have a ship here. He came in on a transport. Okay. Uh, but uh, give me a uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, make this like a um, yeah, make this like a security test here. Uh, actually, make an investigation check here, uh, Jacob. Uh, roll investigation, so you get a plus five of this. Uh, Nineteen. Okay. So in the downtime you had, you actually asked around about this guy and kind of like looked at the data and like the docs. Doc, he's traveling with someone. You're not sure who he's traveling with, but he's tra- he's not traveling alone. He's got someone with him at least. At least someone with him. It, it, is it possible it's like a security detail? Could be. I mean, it would make sense. You you have a pair of scientists on this station with a security detail. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, <laughs> I'm think I'm thinking we either need access to his room or to his person. Like if we, uh, I mean, we're not going to be able to corrupt their work directly. We need to put a shard into some kind of a virus that will implant itself after we've so, parted ways along for a while. The, the premise Does that make sense? I'll, I'll, I'll let Marv chime in here. Uh, Marv, you understand the plan yeah. was to lev like Dingo's angle was like Dingo's role is to get this guy, leverage him, make him give you figure out access using him. So somehow either like steal a means of access or go and find him and you know give him a firm talking to, um, or something like that. It is yeah it, yeah yeah. Well, I I think you know. Uh, Perhaps the angle here, uh, we're, we're all connected by these, you know, devices, these data pads that we have, um, especially if his is, uh, you know, a company issue or linked to the company's network. That may be enough access for us to, uh, uh, you know, have our um, uh, Trojan horse, so to speak. Um, I think the real question is, um, one, how do we get access uh either to his data pad or, uh, you know, a, a copy of it in such a way that we can um, kind of use the information there to get to the network um, as, as you know, kind of the, the, the um, doorway, so to speak. Um, and then uh, the, the second question is uh, more about, I think, the technical component of how do we corrupt the data on the network if we can uh you know send you know uh, a file to the network that um does not immediately appear corrupted perhaps we could uh um allow that to then uh all the um, do its work from the the server side yeah the the version you were given by like fred himself uh was cooked up by the guy in the tyco on his little his little sack of tyco and it's basically like you plug and play it and like it'll work. Just make sure you like, okay. give it time to upload it and then walk out with it. So it's it's, it's ready to go. You, you guys don't need a hacker, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, you have uh, you have it in your pocket ready to go. It's just a matter of like getting it to a place where it can propagate out. Um, sure. <laughs> so just so so sorry. Oh, and you would know that like his data terminal, his little data pad would not be an authoritative like data source for the plans. You'd have to hit like a high a high level um, position. So it would have to be off heroes essentially. You guys would have to get off heroes somehow. But that's why you have a pilot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was gonna put out well I don't know about the coding and all that stuff, but I might be able to help somehow in terms of getting in touch with him and getting his information off of him. I mean considering he's here for trying to sell these plan this 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 proposal that he's got i mean he's probably trying to get in contact with some of the workers here or some of the companies or some representative and i mean i do have connections as a union rep i would i could possibly leverage or maybe even represent or pretend to represent whatever union or or Mm. or or workforce that he's trying to get in touch with Sorry to be redundant. Are you saying it might be possible to steal his credentials and then to pretend to be him elsewhere and upload the data? It's a possibility. I was thinking more about having a conversation with him and pretending to be one of the people that he needs to talk to and have him hand over the information directly to me or to us. Um, Yeah, you would know that this guy, he is ranked in in the company, uh, Mm -hmm. in in Pope Sanchez's company, so he would have pull of some sort. So like... Him, you might, yeah, I mean, this is not uncommon for unions just to, you know, uh, cold call someone 
or you know, hey, you're on the street. Oh, you like the same thing I do. I like to gamble. You like to gamble. Hey, well, I'm in the business. Oh, you're in the business too. I mean, it's that kind of situation yeah. where uh, your com camaraderie and uh, go a long ways. This is not Man. uncommon. <laughs> As someone who knows a lot about the local laws and rules and understanding about how how the you know mm -hmm. worker worker unions work, I'm assuming that he might have a little bit of interest if he wants his his plan, his company plan to actually pan out in the future, uh, to kind of get on the good side with the unions and make sure that you know all of the all of the details are smoothed over and uh, make sure that the the workers are happy and the plan's good for them. So maybe that angle I can approach him with and be like, hey. Your plan. I need to. I need to go over your plan a little bit here to make sure what you're doing is legal and actually might help out here and might actual work. You know. Do you think that's a good, ink like conversation to have with him after he's won this contest tonight? Well, I mean, got her drunk enough. Yeah. And then, as he but says he that, wanna... he pulls Why out like the, the three bottles that they before? bought from the from the, <laughs> from the from the restaurant. <laughs> like, I think we got that covered. I I do have. Uh, a suggestion a little mm -hmm. bit uh, unless my skills are needed elsewhere there's a couple things that I know how to do well and that is being a pilot drinking tequila and seducing men hopefully and not the know, same time <laughs> I don't all the same time she's a multitasker <laughs> multitasker uh, and I don't I don't know if uh, if my skills are needed elsewhere such as piloting a ship, I do understand that. But um, if this guy is into women and can be seduced and is drunk enough, I mean, I think that could be it as well. Uh, uh, Dingo, you, you have a, I mean, you have a dossier on the guy. You want to pull his stuff about his proclivities for uh, uh, intimate conduct? Uh, yeah, he he's actually uh, he likes men. He likes women. Uh, but he loves gambling. Uh, that's his. That's his first. That's his first mistress. Uh, we'll say um, he's he's one of those kind of guys who like who kind of likes the edge of like not sure what's going to happen type thing. You can kind of tell he is a captain. He's a pilot, but um, you're guessing probably moving ships around like for a company is not the the exciting piloting job that he wants. So gambling's kind of become his go-to risk behavior. Is what your your assessment tells you about? Uh, maybe maybe he would enjoy some strip poker or something common. <laughs> gambling and seduction. Yeah. I mean, I will say that <laughs> Carmen has had a lot of great influence on our dealings. Like we go together, we are one-two punch. Mm -hmm. Do we think it's possible to have him do it? I was I assumed we weren't. He wasn't going to be in on it. But are we trying to leverage him into? uploading the corrupted data himself or are we just trying to get uh, make him not realize he's carrying corrupted data I, the, the issue with that is there's no guarantee of it once he's off stage yeah. once he's, out, he's out with it you guys are out of big product and also that little shard that uh marv's carrying that has all that on it's that would it's evidence that would implement the shit out of fred johnson yeah i don't trust him so we got to get around him guys so he likes well, uh, what go I, ahead sorry i i think if what we need is credentials to access uh, the network from another place, uh, it seems to me that if uh, we could keep him uh, distracted or occupied for long enough, whatever form the distraction takes, whether it's uh, a gambling or uh, the company of another or some third mystery uh, distraction that we have not conceived of yet, um, I think we could uh, use that time to perhaps uh, uh, make uh, a copy of his uh, device, which should have his uh, his his uh, credentials that would let us access the system from uh, another place, such as uh, one of you know Pope Sanchez's uh, you know ships or labs or something like that. Um, it's, it's, I think that th our angle, I agree, we should not trust this man. He is not on our dime, he's on someone else's. But we could absolutely keep him busy long enough for us to, uh, you know, copy the, the information off of his data pad in order to uh, give us access uh, at a later time. And then 
could. Do we have any idea how long that kind of thing takes? The, the, data, the data transfer process of this thing? Or like cloning his device in oh, a way that um, gives us that's the not too, That's not too bad to do. Uh, it would go pretty quick, but you'd have to be on site with it with the device. Like proximity is a big diff a big thing. Uh, the network on Eros isn't great. It needs, it's in need of an upgrade, like the internal network. But um, you would need to get like if you could get into his room or get access to his device directly, that would make it a lot easier. Oh, I can yeah. get into his room if you need me to. <laughs> well, how, how, how about how about this? Oh, we lost. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so after he wins this contest tonight, he so will no be riding high. There's no guarantee he's going to win it. He won the what it is he won a, he won an opportunity of a contest for like a weekend to hang out and like gamble. Uh, mm. So he's already won the contest, but he's like playing poker tournaments and stuff like that over the weekend mm. and, hang, and hanging out. So he's like he's around. Like you guys could walk in the casino, and walk right up to him if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, he's not okay. like in some private room or anything like that. Uh, he might be the later at some points if you want to ask him. But yeah, he's. Uh, he won, he won like a, you know, he got a thing or, hey, you won like a spelling contest three weeks ago or, you know, whatever, like a, a truth telling contest. Now you have this, you have this free thing. It's like, oh, okay, cool. He shows up. And he's just redeeming it. But you, what you do know is he's not alone. Um, he's, All right. So if our target is to steal his, per is to clone his, our target is his data pad, which will have his, which we're cloning his credentials from. Um, yeah. Carmen, I, I love that. I love you. If you're comfortable distracting him, I think. That is a but I, I so so what if he's being distracted? What is the what is the end to that? I can try to gain access to his room. I don't think we know if his data pad, if his credentials, if what we need from him is on his body or in his room. And he pro, he has people with him, so that's also a big. I was going to suggest. Yeah. Oh, so sorry. No. Uh, in terms of the other people, I, like I said, this could be a one-two punch where. I'm just gonna let you know when 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 uh, we go through corporate training. There's a lot of com you know conversations about how you know other corporations they want to come in and do, you know steal your stuff and a lot of training videos about you know honeypot situations like this. However, mm -hmm. you, get drunk, you get people drunk enough, no one's gonna care. What I'm gonna suggest is in this situation, I can maybe give them a tour or something or take them the rest of them away if they're here on business. We can go and be like, hey, come meet, schmooze up and with this most important person over here. Go talk to this person. Oh, we can make this so easy for you and how this deal is going to make something grand and kind of separate, you know, separate the, the sheep from the herd, if you know what I mean. And then Carmen can come in at this point, probably a little drunk from all the smoozing and the conversations we've been having. And then Carmen can come in, take out that lone wolf and, uh, well, bing, bang, boom. Um <laughs> So if we're concerned about there being a second individual who is, you know, perhaps looking out for this guy, uh, do we have any information about who they might be? No, we know, we know, we know he's accompanied, but that's that's all I have right now. What kind of a uh, what kind of a distraction could we have for you know? I'm trying to think, you know. I think, I think you guys got a distraction with Carmen. <laughs> like, Wait, well, so, we, so, so, so we have we have Carmen. Carmen can Carmen can distract him if she cannot if she cannot get his data off of him somehow. And maybe it's in his room. Maybe maybe she can pull. It, if maybe we can while she's with him, we can also try to be gaining access to his room at the same time. Yeah. If there are guards at his room, we can get him to call guards away because perhaps he's in trouble. So, but uh, yeah, I, we have so a, okay, few, go ahead. a few a few things here. Uh, Ding a little security with your security expertise. One is that if you if if Carmen was to go back to his room, you would know where his room is, right? Two, uh, the other element too is that uh, you know you you've seen this before. Where people like get access to a room and don't necessarily do anything in the room. Like don't have any security issues in the room while they're there. They more have set it up for a later security breach. So you kind of like you know you you okay. put like the tape over the door over the the, the... I know words guys uh, the, like <laughs> latch uh, yeah the 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 thingy that goes into the thingy I, Jesus Christ that's the, the, like the latch, the latch. yeah the latch <laughs> thank you the latch Jesus okay sorry. <laughs> Great. Yeah. That sounds great. Let's we, we hang out with him tonight so that the next day when he's out partying we go in. We go, we go, we, we, we go back, we go into his room and, uh, and, and plant, plant the stuff. 
So we have we have two we have two phases. We have recon night and mm -hmm. we have action action night. Is the plane and still some kind of data pad swap? Like you're going in on night two. You're going okay. in on night two, and you're going to clone his device in room, and then that'll allow us to do what we need to do off-site at our own pace. Okay, so right. in this scenario, on night two, he leaves his room and leaves the data pad behind for some reason? Well, well that's what... the key question is, does he keep his data pad on him, or does he leave it? If he keeps it on him, then we have a second uh, problem, which is how do we uh, separate him from his data pad uh, for long mm -hmm. enough in order to make the, the switcheroo, so to say? Yeah, night one is Carmen, and we're going to have to answer those questions live. We're going to have to yeah. find out what the inside of his room is like, where his shit is, and how he carries it. And that's all going to be, we're going to figure that out yeah. night one with Carmen. Night two is when we take the information we've gained, and then we, we use uh, Marv and the Doctor to um, take advantage of what we figured out. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, uh, you guys rest up for the, the night here, kind of the plan that it's simmer. Uh, you know, uh, having uh, your breakfast wherever you guys are staying, or some of you might be staying like in like you know little two hotels. Some of you might be staying in like nicer rooms, like Dingo. Uh, other you, uh, whatever you want to, whatever you want to do. Um, but the next day, uh, you guys reconvene, uh, set up here, uh, kind of meet up in one of the um, uh, the Medinas of the of the station. So like not Medina station, but a Medina of the station, um, where you guys can kind of go out. And you're not too far from the from the the casino. You can see there's like different stores, there's different places to buy food all over the place. There's pachinko machines on every corner. Like every restaurant's got two pachinko. It's like it's like when you go to like Nevada and there's like pachinko. There's like a slot machine in the gas station just some for some reason. Um, you know, it's it's that kind of it's that kind of environment. But you can also see the main casino where you uh, believe your Mark uh, Derek uh, Gunhilder is Captain uh, Gunhilder. Um, who wants to start looking for Gunhilder himself? Who wants to start like eyeing the crowd looking for this guy? Um, I feel, I feel like yeah, I feel like okay. uh, I, I'm, I'm seeing Dingo and I'm seeing um, uh, Sri, Sri Jan. Yeah, Sri Jan. Sorry. Yeah, I I think uh, for stage one, you know, I can help do a lap of the casino in order to get eyes on him. But uh, I might, if we have a a, a third. A neutral location where uh, uh, someone can kind of act as, um, uh, I don't think Overwatch is quite the right word, but, uh, you know, a there mission is, command. Once uh, again, the casino has pretty much one entrance, one exit. Like, it's like as like the hub of the place. Everything has to go through there. Even if you're walking to like, like if you want to walk from the docks to like the reactor that runs the station, you have to go through the casino. <laughs> it's built that way. Um, so uh, there is like choke points on it. And outside of these things, there's like a vendor. So you can just sit there and hang out and drink tea and, or coffee or just screw around as, you know, just chill out and watch people come in and out um, all day long. But it is it is several um, uh, thousand people that come in and out every day. Uh, the station's population sure. is about a million. There's quite a few people here. Do, do both entrances have access to the hotel or just one of them? Uh, the hotel that he's in is actually um, part of the casino itself. It's one of the higher roller ones. So they would, mm -hmm. in that sense, you'd have to go to the casino to go to the hotel type thing. Got it. Okay. So, um, all right. Let me go ahead and get. Uh, how do you guys want to look for him? Uh, do you want to look just like ask around? Do you want to? Uh, let me let me start with uh, uh, Srijan. What, what's what's the way you want to kind of like look for him? Uh, for do this we, guy. So we have a photo description of him. You do. Right? Yeah, you have, you have an image yeah. on your on your phone. Yeah. Um, or your, your data pad. Sorry. Um, I think you you just see Srijan looking very like despite like how his physical appearance might be like very confident looking um mm -hmm. he's he, he's done he, he's 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 you know been in the business for long enough that he, he just doesn't give a shit about what other people think about him so but, he kind of just walks in very uh, like nonchalantly through he's been in such situations before so he kind of like you know observes games um mm -hmm. just trying to look like he's deciding on which one to play as he's like looking for uh Derek okay um, you do know, uh, and there are like help here and everything like that. So you can uh, you can certainly like ask people if you want to as well. And you are a good people person. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you want to if you want to ask around, you can. Uh, let's go to Dingo. Uh, Dingo, how do you want to look for this guy? I mean, you just start putting up your like sonar and see if you can see him, basically. I do sonar. Um, is it is there any way to like track um, uh, any kind of like a 
like his his digital ID moving through different different um, uh, parts of the building. You, you wanna, sweep for that. So the, the there is, but you'd have to go and hack uh, Protogen's network, and if you get caught on that, it's over. It's over. Like yeah. Um, that's not that's not worth it. Yeah. I'll uh, uh, yeah. I mean, you, yeah, you I'll, can, I'll, I'll like I'll, I'll, from, what, yeah, what you said. Okay. Yeah. All right. So go ahead and um, I'm gonna have. Uh, uh, I'm gonna have KP. Uh, did you want to like? So um, you kind of go around. Um, as you are like one of like the the kind of waiters, wait staff goes. Uh, Excuse me, sir. Do you are you having trouble finding some finding uh finding where you need to be? Yeah, I mean, I'm just this is my first time in this location. Um, oh well, welcome to Euro, sir. Thank you. It's it's a fine fine station, fine casino. Actually, I've never been I've never been in something this good looking. He like before. he like reaches in his pocket and like pulls him out to give you. He gives uh, you what, what, what? it's five pachinko balls. <laughs> well, wow, well, thank you. Oh, uh, so we, we really encourage you to try out some of the games and enjoy the, the festivities here. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if I may ask you, uh, what are some, some, what would you say is some of like the more higher rolling tables there? Oh, um, you'd want to go over there. There is a check in uh, for that. You have to go yeah. talk to our concierge about that because um, we don't. We a lot of people. We a lot of people kind of like to go in there and try, and they maybe don't have the funds and everything like that. So we, we want to make sure that everybody has a good and optimal experience when they go uh, for their experience to the casino. Um, but if you go over there and talk to, um, I think it's is it Sven? I think Sven over there is the is the gentleman uh, that's handling the desk today. But if you want to go talk to him, uh, he'd be happy to set you up with the game, sir. Sounds fantastic. Now, if I may ask, um, you, you've been probably doing your, your serving duties for a few hours now tonight? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, I, when I'm in these sort of situations, I love I love meeting new people. I love, you know, the, the celebratory atmosphere of it all. Anybody stick around out here for you that's like, oh, man, he's in a good mood. He's, he's really, like, putting down the money, putting down the... the, the, the the, the credits for all this, um, that guy that guy is really having a good time. Well, I mean, if you just look around, everybody here is having a good time, and uh, everyone's a winner on Eros. You can tell that this is practice. This is the most <laughs> practice shit you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> I, I like I I I, I drop like a like a tip into his hand, okay. and I'm like, you know what I'm talking about? The guy that's kind of having a little too much fun, a little. A little tipsy, a little uh, someone who kind of uh, looks like uh, would 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 be a great com compatriot tonight. Oh, um, yeah, uh, you're you're. Uh, I know what kind of services oh, you're talking about. I, I grab the tip. Off. Well, no, yeah, and your tip's more like you flash over like a little bit of money to his data pad directly. Um, he kind of goes, oh, well, we um, I, I know the kind of service you have. Um, those are one of the levels down. One of the levels down. You oh no, no, oh dear lord, my god. No, I'm not talking about like that kind of stuff. I'm just talking about like <laughs> friends, to, someone to gamble with. Oh, friends. Looking like he's um, actually having yeah, a fun I'm time out here. And also, I'm looking for a sucker man. I'm looking for someone that I can kind of laugh. He goes, he goes um, I, I think you'd want to go uh, talk to Sven. Uh, I'm going to have you make an etiquette check here. So this is actually one of your best skills. You're actually really good at etiquette. So uh, plus seven. Uh, hold on. Let me look up my screen. It's, it's uh, a plus seven. Yeah, I got. I got. I got a little loaded over here for you. Uh, that is a five, nine, uh, sixteen. Sixteen. Very good. Yeah. Um. He kind of goes through and he, he's like, "Oh, well, I appreciate your. I appreciate the tip, sir. And like I said, Sven is your best bet here. Our concierge service is better for the higher rollers. He's and you can see this guy. Like this guy's like he's like he kind of bends over, he whispers in your ear, he, like looks around. He's like, I just serve drinks, man." <laughs> I'm, just trying right, to like, well. I'm just trying to fucking earn a living here, bro. And you're just like, hey, you're the sucker. <laughs> and he's like, uh, I just, I'm just All the right, greener. No worries, bro. No, um, bro, no worries. No, I, I do want to make, I do want to ask a question um, for Carmen. Carmen, um, so I got the impression that Marv is set up at one of the entrances to watch this guy. Mel set up at entrance to watch this guy. Carmen, what do you want to be doing uh, during all this? Do you want to try to check the floor, uh, maybe shadow one of the people, make sure they don't get into an altercation? What, what kind of stuff sounds good to you? We... Okay, so Marv is at the door. Yeah, they're kind of like, they're not at the, it's, there's like, there's like these like giant entrances, like, you know, the big casinos have the giant fancy entrances, there's two of them. 
and outside of them are these bars and like food places and they're kind of sitting there watching the gate as they come come in it's like watching like people come to the tsa when you're at the airport the coffee bar you know you can see people come and go and... yeah yeah um uh can i just look around and maybe seem like i am looking to see what uh gambling table i want to join okay yeah you check out some tables and uh there's people as you walk by people are friendly the the people that run the tables are like hey please join us and um, you know, kind of look around. Uh, you can see that um, uh, Srijan is like going towards uh, the concierge where the higher rollers is. Uh, you're doing that pretty well. Um, and uh, you're welcome to follow. Or you're welcome to go off your own and look uh, look around. So. And we know what this guy looks like, correct? Yeah, you have a photo of him. Yeah, okay. he's got kind yeah, of a slick back hair, goatee, uh, no uh, no mustache or anything like that too. But uh, earth or dark hair, skin's a little. He's. Uh, we we would call we would call him like you know Caucasian, but like he's like gray, kind of his skin's a little grayer, like thinking like mine, but a little grayer just from not having access to natural light for very long. Okay. Um, so yeah, but and he, so yeah. Just by uh, a quick look around at the casino. Sure. Take a look. Uh, right. Do I do I see him at, at all? Good question. Uh, give me a uh, this would be a perception test. So roll your um, roll your three dice and add one to it. To be, uh, to be clear, as KP's on KP's side, like I assumed that he wasn't. He, it was because of how big this casino is that it would be hard to like look for him. So I was oh, like, "Yeah, this is what we call a complex test that everybody can contribute successes to it." Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, nine total. Nine total at the plus one. Uh, do you want to increase that, or do you want to accept that result? I'd like to increase that. Okay. What was your lowest die roll? What was your lowest number? One. A one. Okay. Uh, you would need to increase that to a. Five. So it's gonna cost you five Ooh. fortune points, but that'll give you a success. That's a lot of fortune. How many fortune? Seven total. But I'm loving it. I'm loving it though. I pushed that luck. Got to push it to the limit, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's All right, do cool. It. And then, what did you get on the off-color die? There should be like a different color. Uh, two. Two. Perfect. Okay. So, um, you start looking around, and you think you saw him over in the distance, um, kind of like walking around. He was in the high roller area, but he was kind of like. Looks like he's coming out of like the hotel area. But you think you saw him? Okay. All right. I'm gonna uh, meander over there. You start. You start going to try to follow the guy. All right. Let's go to um, Dingo. Uh, you kind of you, you reach out with your senses. So give me a hearing test. Yeah. Hearing. You have a plus, plus five. five. Yeah. I see that. Nice. Whoa. Oh shit. Here we go. Uh, sorry, math. <laughs> uh, 20, 20, 22. All right, yeah, we got to send those numbers off to NASA to calculate that result. All right, um, <laughs> what uh, what'd you, what'd you, uh, oh, the off is a six, perfect. Okay, so you get a high degree success. Um, Dingo, you start registering through and you, you think you pick up on him, uh, like a 3D render of him, because you're kind of reaching out, like it's a very confusing place, there's a lot of sound, but you kind of see through it all through your sonar kind of capabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, for those that don't know, uh, Dingo sees through, sees through hearing at distance. Um, and you, you kind of pick up on, you think you have a, a bead on the, on the figure, you kind of briefly get his face in it. Um, you also, uh, yeah, you, you catch it, that there's like people going on, but yeah, he seems to be in like the more like coming out of the hotel area, if you will. Okay. Um, and do I, do I, am I aware that, that Carmen seems to be on his tail also? Yeah, you track, you, yeah, you, it allows you to track both um, Srijan and Carmen. Carmen seems to be kind of going his direction. Srijan seems to be going off to the high rollers area. Uh, which is kind of gated. It's not gated, but it's like velvet rope type area. You know, it's, it's got like a nice, like, uh, you know, uh, fake wood finish, if you will, around it. Uh, and, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's certainly a choke point. Like, he's going to go in there. He's going to have to check in kind of thing. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, you kind of catch him and you catch uh, Carmen's on his tail or it seems to be on his tail somewhat. But uh, yeah, Great. I communicate, I communicate his location just to the entire team. So we're all on the same page. So Presumably, a, yeah, we can communicate through a group text or yeah, something like enough. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, easily enough. Yeah, group Absolutely. text. Now they they do not have group text in the future. If, if the future is going to be a good future, <laughs> there will be no group text. Okay, uh, okay. I I let I let everybody I DM everybody on Instagram and I tell yeah. them where <laughs> oh, no. where he is. Group Jesus, that's even worse. All right, no. um, <laughs> the future sucks, guys. All right, the um, <laughs> so there is no hope. You um you guys kind of follow you guys start following him and everything. However, though, 
Um, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let our uh, our new player uh, who's been nervous, Isabel, roll this. Isabel, I need you to roll one six sided die and tell me exactly what number you have. We have we have a possible churn event here. Ooh, the churn oh, went over to ten. Shit. Past ten. Yeah, that's all. Five. Five. Okay. There is no churn event. Um, oh shit. So nothing nothing rando happens that hinders you. Um, okay. Um, let me ask this question of Dingo. Dingo, do you want to let Carmen approach him first, or do you want to try to like catch him first? Catch him? Like, like, like um, get, get catch up to him. Catch up. I mean, like, I'm not, he's not a fucking Pokemon, but like, I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, do you, do you I mean, catch up to him. Sorry. Just yeah, you place. know, like, like, just in the interest of time, I, I don't. Th- we, we weren't terribly specific, but I think the goal is to let Carmen. Yeah, okay. lead lead the way. Okay. We're just we're just trying to get into his room, and we got to get sure. him drunk and horny first. And um, I think I think I think Srijen should um, I don't be ready to follow. I think he. I okay. think if All she's right. tailing him, okay. she, we cool. should tail her. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I think the hope was like, uh, does he look like? Is he alone already? Or does well, he you have... don't know because you're not. You didn't see him. Uh, but oh, according, okay. to, according to them, they they at least know where he is. It is a crowded place, so you don't know if he's alone or not. It's hard to tell. All right, uh, let me go ahead and uh, go to uh, Carmen. Carmen, yeah, you start catching up to him and uh, you have confirmation from Dingle you're, that you're high confidence this is the guy. Uh, how do you want to, do you want to approach him or how do you want to do this? Um, I want to tail behind him a little bit okay. and just kind of get a read on if there's anybody else that seems to be following him such as security. Okay. Uh, give me a. Uh, I'm going to use tactics on this. This would be a tactical assessment because you're ta- you're assessing the tactical situation switch. So uh, roll a three sided die, the three dice, and add three to it. And that's what you get for tactics. This is something you actually have. <laughs> oh man. You're going to lose all your four. Uh, ten. Ten. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You don't see anybody unless you want to push that result to a uh, fifteen, which would be extremely expensive. That no. Yeah. Okay. All right. I also mentioned the churn goes up every time you spend fortune, so yeah, it's one. Okay. But you, okay. Um, yeah, you you look around. He seems like he's isolated, and he's just kind of okay. you see like he's like walking with a drink. It looks like he, he's probably coming back from breakfast or something. Probably got the continental in there or something, whatever it is. <laughs> All the fungal curds you can eat. Um, and he's just kind of chilling out. He's got like a like actual like glass in his hand. I should also mention too. They actually serve drinks and glasses on the station, which is like, you can tell the people that are high end have glasses in their hand versus bulbs of like tea or water, whatever it is. Like, um, and most of the belters aren't, you can tell belters pretty quickly because belters aren't comfortable not drinking through a nipple. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so does Dingo, since he's security, or he's got a background in security, mm-hmm. can he, Tell if there's anybody around him that is. You want to ask him uh, if it's you can you can text yeah. him. Okay. Uh, Dingo, she's asking you if is it. Uh, oh no, yeah. So go ahead and make a uh, you can make a security test on this uh, if you want to. So plus four to this. Well, I, I, I'm going to do security. I also want to ask you if it's useful to consider my 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 notes for uh, covering my tracks, like to, to oh, not yeah. make sure we're not giving our giving ourselves away. Yeah, you can certainly do that. If you we're being the, observed. Yeah, if you pull out the stunt. Yeah, if you get the stunt point, but you can make sure okay. you're not. So plus you're not. plus four. Plus four, sir. Here we go. It's a good day. Uh, 19, tw- uh, 21. 21, what'd you go on the off-color die? That's a five. God damn, you, you're the devil today, boy. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> all right. I'm, g- I'm gonna be blowing churn later, so it's okay. good to roll all nice right. now. So, um, yeah, uh, you see Carmen's are approaching him and you're checking it. You see one individual behind him, you're pretty sure is uh, following him around. I'm gonna uh, following him he's around. Wearing, he's wearing like a suit. He's wearing like a, a business casual type thing, kind of like a, has a, a nice coat on, kind of like something you'd wear to Yosemite or something like that. If you're going out for uh, you know to the park for the day. Does he look like he's caught on to Carmen? No. You're okay, so Carmen, you are being. He is being followed. You have not been made, but you might be. So if you are, make sure. Sure, you're playing a common idiot instead of an agent. Okay. Um, do you, is that like in a group text or was that specifically that a group text? Yeah, we'll also that's in a group text. Um, we do have a tail. Uh, at that point, uh, looks at and points out maybe maybe we can distract the security guard. Like Marvin, the Doctor, and I could go and approach him each separately and be like, "Hey, do you know where this is at? Like, you know, can I ask you where the bathroom is?" 
I should mention, I mean, uh, KP, that one of your favorite your favorite stunts, so this is something you can do like really, a lot uh -huh. easier than other people is, is called Over Here. Okay. Where you just, you literally make yourself the center of attention and basically <laughs> like oppositional forces have to target you. Uh, <laughs> uh, it can be used in okay. combat, but it can also be used during um, social encounters. Right. Over here, um, as in over this location, not over here, as in I can listen in. No, <laughs> no, no. I yeah. first heard, and I'm like, what? yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I think then what I'll do is um, around where the secure, like, I'll make my way where the security guard is. Okay, they point and, out to you, yeah. Um, because I've, it's been pointed out to me. And then I'm just going to, as one of the waiters walks by, flip one of like whatever drink okay. tray or anything that they're having okay. and flip them like yeah watch where you're going all right this is going to be a sleight of hand check I, I i feel this is kind of like a ledger domain kind of like you're trying to make it seem like a fake thing uh-huh uh, so oh, no, no, okay all right cool you're trying right. to make it seem like you didn't do it on purpose i'm assuming unless you want to be like hey buddy i'm gonna throw this like drink in your face or something <laughs> like i feel more incidental than that like no no yeah yeah okay um, uh sleight has a good plus four or three six out of four um, Let's see. Oh, uh, come on. Oof. Ooh, that's not good. Oh, no, maybe, maybe. Uh, 14? 14. Okay, 14. Uh, what's your lowest number on that? Uh, the lowest is a 2. 2? Uh, you need to push that to a 3, so spend 3 fortune, and you get the success on it. Sure, I'll do okay. it. And, uh, yeah, so you, you do that, and uh, you flip the drink over. Carmen, you see a uh, surgeon, like, kind of, oh, and, like, you know, kind of, like, flails his arms. Uh, pretending not to be used to the, the weird Coriolis effect here. Um, and uh, the drinks kind of fall and shatter on the, or they kind of fall slowly. They don't shatter on the ground because it's like there's like quasi padded floor and everything and the gravity so low. But um, they kind of fall on the ground in front of the security guy. And uh, you can see him kind of like stop and stumble. And he's like, you know, uh, what do you, KP, what do you want your character to do to kind of distract this guy? Oh, I, I'm just making a ruckus now. I'm just okay. like, you know, how could you just go in? Don't you have eyes? Can't you okay. just walk around? Like, you can't just walk around just bumping into people. So the office, uh, the, office the of management medicare. of this place. What kind of shithole am I, am I working in here? Okay. Um, guards, guards, look at this guy. And I'm okay. just going to like, as I say, walk by. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> just being an utter. Okay, a nuisance. You're a nuisance. You're a public nuisance, sir. Okay. <laughs> uh, Carmen, you see your moment to, to approach Derek, Captain uh, Gunhilder. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, oh, I'm trying to decide if I want to be more subtle with this or if I want to be more heavy handed. <laughs> like, like, um, use, like use your character's melee weapons? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Get a little, get a little, get a little uh, primitive on it, just bop him over the head and yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go subtle. Okay. Um, I'm going to make it seem like this is kind of a, a like a, a chance encounter. Like maybe okay. I, I drop something in front of him and I do the bend and snap. Okay. All right. Um, so he, okay, give me, um, uh, I'm gonna put that as like a, I put that as the communications, I'll put that as dexterity if you're trying to like kind of do it. Um, it sounds like it's more physical. So give me, uh, roll the three, six, add the two to it. Nine. Nine, okay. What was your lowest number? <laughs> One. One, okay. Um. Spend three fortune. Is that a question or is this? I would, if you want to, if you want to succeed on this and not like have them ignore you, it'd be three fortune. God. Okay, let's do it. All right, cool. There's ways to get fortune back. I will say by donations, okay, people, you, you can actually donate and give us a fortune, give a character fortune back. Please um, give me fortune. All right. So, <laughs> um, so you you yeah you kind of uh, bend and, and he goes oh oh excuse me miss. He, he kind of says excuse me. As, he, as he's like, uh, did, what, what'd you drop? And he's like looking around at the ground for you. Oh, um, I, uh, I, I must have just dropped my, uh, my, 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 I don't know what I have. Oh, you can say like your data pad or like your, like, my data pad. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I dropped um, my data pad. He looks around, he's like, um, my oh. hotel key. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> he goes, uh, Subtly, I thought I thought he said subtle, um, and uh, he goes, "Oh, I think uh, oh, there it is." And he, he goes and he, he kind of picks up the piece of glass you and hands it to you. And he he kind of makes sure the gentleman not to, like look at it. He's like trying to like hold it away from him. He goes, "Here you go." Okay, um, I'm gonna 
say, I'm going to give him a, a little bit of a, a, a pickup line that's not too heavy handed, something like maybe like shock in the moment of like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't uh, expect to see somebody whose face is so out of this world. It's like, well, I suppose we're all out of this world on Eros, aren't we? Uh, he says, um, he goes and puts his hand forth and he, uh, he goes, uh, Captain, uh, Captain Derek, uh, Gunhilder, uh, he, he's like, you see him, you see him clearly looking at your, uh, Martian Marine tattoos. Okay. So he, um, and he, and he, I will say this, etiquette wise, he introduced himself with his rank and what he does, or with it, he has, he's ranked. So it's kind of like, he's kind of expecting to hear, I, from my understanding, I believe your character's a corporal. My character? Yeah, you're, you're, that was your rank when you left the military as a corporal. So you can introduce yourself as corporal if you want to, or you can just say, here's my name, but... I'm going to introduce myself as corporal. Okay, sure. Uh, how do you say it? John, really can curious. I... Oh, please, please. May I interrupt for a second? Um, I'm watching the whole thing, like... Danny Ocean, and this is perfect. So now that now that she's initiated contact, if it's unless it's going to be mega obvious, I'd, I'd either text to her or radio her, and just say like, "You're doing great. Remember that your best bet is to challenge him to some kind of a bet. If You're, you can wager him or gamble with him, like that's his I'm gonna, fucking I'm gonna weakness." Throw a, I'm going to throw in a thing that Dingo would know is you probably don't want to text the person uh, about the person they're trying to like swindle on their data pad that <laughs> yeah. they're handing back to the person, right? <laughs> What's that? What's oh, we got a text here. Oh, right, says, right, it says, right. It says uh, you're supposed to fuck me over. Okay. <laughs> like, like, Maybe know. I was me- yeah. no, I was no. probably metagaming. Good, yeah, good, no, good, but, cha- it, it, good it, challenge. Like, Thank you. Yeah. You're 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 slyer than that. All right. Um, but no, it's good. It's good though. I like this. It's good. I, and I like I like that you think you're George Clooney now, which I'm. This is what I was going for this session. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah, Carmen. Um, he kind of looks at it and he he goes, uh, oh, he's like corporal. He's like wow. Um, He's like, I've never really had a, the pleasure of dealing with the, uh, well, I've never had the pleasure or the, or he says displeasure of dealing with a Martian Marine. What brings uh, one of the core to, to Eros? Uh, I'm on uh, vacation, actually. I uh, had some time off and decided to, to spend it here. I myself am uh, pretty big at uh, gambling. I do say it is a little bit of a uh, guilty pleasure of mine, so. You know, just taking some time to spend it here by myself and um, meet hmm. the company of others that are also here. Oh. Can I ask what brings you here? Uh, it's, it's kind of a funny story, actually. Um, I, I entered uh, one of those kind of like, you know, drop your data thing, you know, drop your name into like the local, you know, uh, forum list here a while back, I guess. and. My name got pulled, and I got a hotel stay here, and uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of spending cash for the for the the casino here. I'm actually um, heading over to the, uh, the the tables over there, past the uh, the, the the little bar they have set up. Um, looking at what kind of what's your what's your what's your pleasure? You like cards, uh, pachinko, uh, roulette? What kind of stuff do you enjoy? Uh, uh, I'm uh, actually a fan of pachinko myself. Pachinko. Yeah, and it um, it seems like you are a bit of a a winner. It sounds like from last night. <laughs> All right, I'm that when you call him a winner, I am calling for the uh, that's going to be the seduction test to see if he's actually interested in this coin. Uh, okay. That's actually a very uh, oh, you, I'm sorry, I forgot you have the you have the attractive uh, talent too. Yeah, he's um uh, he's every favorite. But yeah, roll the three six and add your uh, communication, which is a uh, plus one. This is juicy. <laughs> Speaking of juice, uh, Isabel, Carmen got back. You get back a whopping. Uh, you get back a whopping uh, because of someone's generous donation. You get back a whopping um, eight uh, fortune Ooh. back. So you're you're back in the game a little bit here. Feeling a little bit better. Woo-hoo. The juices it's are flowing as we as, as, as we say. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they are. Uh, okay, <laughs> I rolled. But that doesn't the reset the. Turn. No, it does not. The turn still spent. Yeah. That. Yes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, what'd you, you get? Set on a the... plus one. Yeah, plus one. Yeah. Uh, twelve. Twelve. Okay. Uh, you can spend fortune. Uh, to push that to. Uh, I, I don't. Twelve. Dude. He's interested. So he's marginally interested. He's like, oh, okay, this is interesting. Um, he's like, it's like winner last night. Well, um, I think I, I think I, everything I have at this point is just winning. I came in up, but unfortunately, I have to spend the credits they gave me here. But uh, maybe um. 
would you be interested in helping me spend them a little faster? I'd be interested in helping you spend them a little faster, absolutely. God damn, Jacob, your face is killing me. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, this is fun. <laughs> okay. Um, so he kind of, t- he, he goes, okay, well, why don't we head over here? Um, my, my man, Sven, who's like, he points to the concierge. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll be sure to get you in and everything like that too. Um, I do have to say though, um, do you have a what is what is Carmen wearing at this point? Because what I earned, understood earlier was kind of more like kind of workers' clothes. Uh, do you have anything like you're you're wearing specifically for today? Like you want to kind of like tell us about nothing like you want to be overly fancy, but kind of like uh, what would Carmen be wearing for like this kind of a scenario? So for this specific scenario, yeah. Um, I think she has. Uh, I don't want to say like she doesn't have anything too too fancy mm-hmm. um but it's a step up from a couple steps up from business casual oh, okay so she's dressed nice but she's not like interview ball gown. like interview stuff yeah 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 okay. like a step okay. up from that okay. so i want to say like a like kind of like a like a like a but it's a buttonless dress shirt zipper uh type stuff and it's just kind of uh with some you know slacks or something like that sound good yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, he, it, it looks you know it looks good. It's it's uh, they just print clothes here, so it's everything's form fitted basically, um, or it's fitted to your whatever whatever you want to measure as. And he's like, yeah, let's go on in. So he, he takes you up to um, he goes, uh, hey, Sven, and so he's like, oh, he's like, oh, welcome, uh, welcome back, uh, Captain. Uh, are you ready for your next round? And he says, well, I'm actually interested in the next round, but um, I can I'd like to bring my uh, my compatriot here. I've just recently re- met. And he's like, oh, this is oh, fantastic, absolutely. Uh, let me go ahead and I can uh, pull up a temporary cred shipper. I do need to scan uh, her ID before she comes in, though, but we her credits are paid for by your uh, your pool, if, if you want, sir. He's like, oh, absolutely. And he kind of, like, puts up some numbers real quick, and he basically gives you a decent amount to gamble with. It's not, like, it's not, it's, 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 not, it's, 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 it's a fair amount to gamble with. You can, play, you can play a few hands at the high rollers table if you wanted to without, like, without issue. Um... Uh, and he uh, he goes up and but he asked to scan your uh, your credentials there, uh, Carmen. You want to bring your data pad or? Yes. He goes up and he goes, uh, oh, he's like, uh, uh, welcome, Miss Castillo. Uh, yes, you're uh, welcome here. Uh, let's see here, credits transferred to problem. And he's looking. He's like looking. Basically, he's doing like a security check on you. Nothing comes back. Back uh, is what he comes up with. And he goes, oh, well, welcome on in and uh, do enjoy your stay. And he, like he opens, like he pushes the button, the bar kind of opens up, and it lets you through, and everything's very fancy. It's a much cleaner area, we'll say. Um, as you walk in, uh, one of the waitstaff greets greets you and him, and he goes, uh, "So what's your what's your poison?" He, uh, Derek asked, uh, "Is it, or, sorry, Carmen?" I'm a woman of taste, and I love me some tequila. Hmm, tequila, absolutely. Um, oh God, Jacob, where's the bottle? Do you have the bottle? Oh, one second. Jacob has a prop he stole from the show, which is the which is which is Amos's <laughs> bottle of tequila. Acquired. Acquired. What? Acquired. Yes, he actually has Amos's bottle of tequila. Um <laughs> So we it's good kind of props once in a while, guys. Um so yeah, you he brings you on back and he presents you a bottle which will look identical to the bottle that Jacob will have in his hand here momentarily. Um, and uh it's high quality stuff. This is from Earth. Uh this would on Mars go for quite a bit, and here on Eros would go for even more. So, um, and he, he they bring it bring, oh yeah, into the box and everything. Okay. Uh, what's the name of it? What's the name of it? It's like blue something, isn't it? Uh, blue label? No, it could be a mutant. You're, you're muted, buddy. Oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> yeah, it's made with blue agave. Blue agave. Oh. And it's it's and it's called Casa. De Lola. Okay. And I think it's because the director or the props guy, their like dog was named Lola or something. Oh, okay. Or no, someone, there was a person named Lola. Yeah. So Lola's is, a real person. It is, it is, is that the one that gets dropped? It is Casa de Lola. This is a faded tequila that, that Carmen has heard of but has never tasted. Mm-hmm. And they present it up uh, as. Uh, did you want just shots? Is that what you wanted, uh, Isabel? Like shots of it? Let's do it. All right. So, you, so they bring up some shots and he goes, well, um, to our luck. And he, he goes to cheer you. To our luck. Right. Can I um, <laughs> pretend to drink it, but not actually drink it? <clears throat> okay. 
you're going to pretend not to... Uh, okay, so, yes, you can with sleight of hand if you want to. You kind of chuck it back if you want to. Yeah, because uh, I don't know that I want to be, like, inebriated. Well, for... to be fair, your character is pretty tough, and you do have... Um... I think you could drink him onto the table. Yeah. There... I'm just concerned, like, since this is the real deal, high-label stuff, is this going to be affect me more, or is it going to affect uh, me less than the stuff that I'm used to? Fair. Uh, it would probably affect you more, but it is your first drink of the day, so, like, I mean, it's, it is it is a shot, and it is an opportunity And this is for... not his first drink. Uh, yeah, you don't think it's the first drink. Okay, I'm just going to drink it. All right, you drink Never it. Never mind. Okay. Uh, it hits you, but it's not hard. Uh, it's very smooth going down, honestly. Uh, you don't feel drunk yet, but, like, uh, it's one of those ones that kind of creeps on you. But it was actually probably one of the best uh, beverages you've ever had in your life. Uh, it's, it's shocking how, how good it actually is. Um, you know, the, Ur the Earthers do some things okay, and one of them's like tequila. Um, so, he, um, yeah, he goes, uh, okay, well, uh, Pachinko, we have some, there's actually some high-end machines over here uh, that use uh, you know, the classic old stuff they've actually imported from Earth. Uh, they have, I, I've heard they've been restored. Um, and we have some card tables and everything like that too, but uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, hit it off. Um, we're gonna go back to uh, Surgeon. Uh, you get done cleaning up, and you see uh, Carmen go off with with the mark. The security guard, for a moment here, he, he's like, "Fuck this!" and he starts moving off past them. Uh, Dingo, you see them moving off as well. Uh, Surgeon, what do you what do you want to do, Dingo? What do you want to do? You did. You guys both did see Carmen go past the security barrier. Yeah. And then I also want to ask too if Marv and uh, Mel have anything they want to do, or are they having their own private geek text thing or whatever it is? Uh, well, you know, I think uh, since we're kind of off in our own, maybe you know we'll be in like a, a Discord voice channel, you know, and I'll be yeah. uh, regaling uh, Dr. Holson with the story of developing the uh, you know Gen Three uh, engine back, you know, uh, during my time. Uh, on Mars. Uh, mm. I will be but, eating up that story and then telling uh, an old legend of a physics conference on Earth that went to Las Vegas and none of the physicists gambled and Las Vegas were like, we are never having a convention of physicists ever again because we lost money. Uh, and like Mel thinks this is the funniest thing because she also will not gamble because it's a stupid idea. Uh, so she's just there like, aha, uh -huh, this is great. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we're probably just kind of like, you know, uh, swapping stories and shooting the yeah. shit. But yeah. Um, yeah. I, I do think uh, once we know that, um, you know, there yeah. is a uh, uh, once we know where our target is and uh, what's happening inside as we're staying kind of um, appraised of what's happening, um, I might uh, leave the door and uh, make my way in. Uh, yeah. Just to see if I can lay eyes on this security person. I don't need to be near the, uh, you know, high roller okay, section. Cool. I trust that, uh, you know, uh, Carmen and, and Dingo uh, and Srijan are fine. The three of them, they don't need my help. But maybe I can, uh, you know, do something to um, keep the security right, so guy you, otherwise occupied uh, as well. So you move into the vicinity. Uh, and Mel, what about you? Do you have anything you want to... I'm just going to trail behind Mob. I don't okay. know if Mob is trying to be subtle, but I'm just like... Ha, 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 Okay. Right. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, so at that point, I think, um, am I confident at this point that the security guard is not going to be a issue at, anymore? He's going to get, you're pretty sure he's going to get past uh, the concierge that there and uh, be part, because he's part of the, the party. He's part of like, he's probably on the ticket or whatever it is. Uh, he might become an issue then. But you're also, you also have a lot of confidence in your uh, friend Carmen too. So there, uh, you do know that Carmen can, uh, yeah, Carmen can fight. Worst case, yeah, Carmen yeah, yeah. can like. Uh, of all the people you don't want to pick a fight with on the station, Carmen's it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Crap. Uh. I think I, I I reach out to I reach out to Dingo at that point or and say, what do you want me to do? You want me to follow Carmen and kind of add a little. You know, fuel the flame a little, or do you want me to keep distracting this security guard? I mean, this is her job. She's kind of doing her part right now. If she's, if she hits an emergency, she'll text us. I don't, I don't see a direct way to help her right now. Maybe oh, if we thought ahead of time, we could have made you a fake ID to get you clearance, Pessy. Well, uh, 
I mean, you do have the you do have the cred chip for Fred Johnson. You could buy your way into it. Right. That is a possibility, but that is an expensive chip to play. I mean, yeah, I can I can flirt. I have flirt as a talent. <laughs> as as charming as my character is. I have I could yeah, maybe maybe it's worth it just so she's not alone to try and get okay. Regen behind the, okay. the behind the checkpoint somehow. I'll either, either flirt, bribe, or hack, whichever is the least problematic. Okay. Um, um, hacking is by far the most the riskiest one. Uh, yeah. And the uh, I don't think you, yeah you're not much of a hacker, but you could certainly try to well, flirt your yeah. way. Yeah. Dingo has a lot of interpersonal skills here. Apparently, interpersonal I skills. can make a contact out of. Yeah, out of like an NPC, yeah. I can flirt with an NPC mm-hmm. and then make them. Okay. Yeah, like I don't know. Uh, All right, so you come up to Sven. And, I'd and like it, to. Yeah, like housekeeping. Okay. We're gonna need. Right. To... So you go up to you go up to Sven with uh, Scrooge, yeah. and uh, as you guys do, uh, you guys saw the security guard go in. Uh, what's gonna happen to you on that? You're not sure yet, but you're trying to get your way in here at least legitimately. Uh, the concierge, uh, as you approach, goes, uh, "Welcome. Uh, what can I help you, gentlemen, with?" I'm just here to enjoy the night with my compatriot oh, well, here. There's, there's plenty of tables out there. Uh, we have tables inside, uh, but there is a, a minimum buy-in along with a... Uh, we have to do a quick credit check along with an ID scan. I, uh, you'll find none of that is going to be an issue for us. And I turn to <laughs> Dingo. I'll 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 flirt with the concierge and say I'd like to show my my friend a good night and I'd like to buy him into the room and, and I don't think yeah yeah I'd like I'd like to get him in please. Right. I think Sridran might have found his sucker. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was at the party the whole time. All right, so um, you bring up the credit chip that, that that Fred gave you and it like buys through and the, the money goes through and the guy's like, oh wow it's quite. Uh, quite the sum, sir. Uh, and so I'm, I'm bringing in. Am I bringing in both of you or just one of you? No, just my friend here. Okay. Well, I don't want yeah, to yeah, it's, it's good to have gracious friends. Uh, thank you so much, uh, sir. And uh, he, uh, a surgeon, uh, he, he kind of checks your thing out. And it actually, you, your credentials are fine. He says, ah, I gotta say, uh, so that, that advertising we've been doing on, on uh, at. Uh, Laundress Nova, the capital of Mars, has been paying off. I have to say, the tourist, the tourist uh, promotion we did. Um, oh, absolutely! That's uh, a, whoever did the marketing for that did a fine job. Right. Well, uh, Miss Mr. Uh, Misra, I really hope you enjoy your evening. Uh, if your games are uh, cards, we have some of that. We have uh, roulette tables, and we have some uh, vintage pachinko machines. We would love for you to play. Well, uh, absolutely, please, uh, I can do see, a little walk around and then well, find one. And, and don't don't do, don't walk around thirsty, sir. Please uh, help yourself to one of our complimentary drinks as you walk in. And there's like a wait, oh, wait staff that'll like, little, little, little hook you up or whatever. The concern in his voice. Don't walk around thirsty. Yeah. My goodness. Oh, How dare you, sir? What happens to me? <laughs> yes. um, uh, and so uh, Srijan uh, walks through, yeah. and he, as he walks by, he, like, he looks at Dingo and kind of give him, gives him a, a, like a final wink as he walks by, and. Um, he tries to text him and say, "Let me see if I can, uh, I can really fleece the sucker tonight, or at least sure, get him sure. riled up, um, so that way, you know, he's he's more. I, I, the plan is for me is to like be the antithesis to Carmen, make her look, okay. you know, her company look way better, and you know, you know, leave this place as soon as possible, either through him winning big or losing big." Um, so that that's what Srijan's plan is to like find the table that that uh, Derek's gonna be sitting at with Carmen, and hopefully I feel like I feel like this is something that Carmen and I uh, have worked out in a while. Like that okay. that one punch I'm talking about okay. is where we kind of use our skills to sure. mess with this guy a little bit okay. in one direction okay. or another. All right. So um, Carmen, you're you're out here with Derek, and you guys are pitching machine, and you guys you guys sit down and play a little bit here. It's pretty fun actually. It's kind of it's kind of interesting to see them like a completely purely mechanical machine on Eros versus like these electronic ones that are kind of like very light up and, and everything. It's very vintagey, very um, it's old too. It's probably about like, like two three hundred years old to be honest. This machine that you're playing on Carmen. But he um yeah he's uh, you guys you guys play some games. You win some, you lose some. It's pachinko. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 total, it's very random, but he um uh, he says so um yeah uh, what um so tell me uh tell me about some of your your, your what exactly you do in the Marines. 
Uh, or if you want to get to know him too, you could too. I am uh, a I'm a I'm a fly I'm a, I'm a pilot. Uh, oh wow, he's like me too. I, I've uh, I've piloted in the uh, the UN for the UN a little bit in the Navy for a while, and uh, now I work in the private sector. Okay, yeah, I'm more of a, a freelancer myself. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. How long have you been doing that? Jeez, uh, I've been flying now for about uh, 20, 25 years. Is all. I got. I got to admit, I I, I, mean, I envy you. Uh, you, you Navy types, uh, you get to fly the big fun ships. I just, I just move uh, cargo nowadays. Uh, pretty boring. What amounts to an armored truck, a uh, bus driver. Hmm. So, uh, you know, I imagine with all that experience, you're, you're pretty good at piloting, though. I would imagine you're, you're good at what you do, regardless. You're well, pilot. <laughs> I'm essentially trying to stroke as you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I believe you have the focus touching. Actually, you're, you are touching, you're stroking his ego with the touching skill. Yes. Um, no, he, he literally like, he's like, um, well, you know, I do, I do all right. Uh, I got all my certifications and everything. Uh, but right now it's all here to there, there to here. Sometimes I go elsewhere. Uh, not much else. Um, sorry to say, but, uh, it pays good. It pay, you know, pays good. The benefits are great. Got a little equity in the company now that I've been there for so long. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I would imagine that, you know, the type of ships that, I'm used to flying versus the type of ships that you're used to flying are pretty different. I would be interested in maybe sometime you could uh, teach me how to fly your ship. Okay, kind of All right, that's gonna be um, that's that's gonna be a uh, a sedu- I'm gonna say I'm gonna call it seduction. That that seems that seems seductive. <laughs> Just so you know, John himself is bad at this. Uh, so I have to- a stunt called when a plan comes together okay. which is grant an ally uh bonus stunt points, points equal, equal to the amount spent on the next roll concerning the same okay. goal okay so i want so, her to succeed so i will give her points. so you can what you can do here um is you can make a roll of one of your uh your skills whichever one you think would be appropriate here let's say you did the research you did some research on this guy so you, she's she's exploiting that so let's go ahead and do a research roll real quick for you jesse okay. three three Five, 11, 18. 18, and you got doubles on that? You got? Yeah, I got two things. What was the off-color die? Five. Five, okay. Well, uh, yes, you have three bonus stunt points here to spend, uh, Carmen. So you have additional stuff. If you really want to make this pull this off, you can. Pull, you have a lot to pull out. So make a seduction test. It's going to be communication. Uh, so it's going to be plus one to it, but you'll get a bunch of stunt points to do extra stuff if you succeed. So go for okay. it here. And it's three dice? Yes. Uh, 12 plus 1, 13. 13, okay. Um, what was your lowest number? <laughs> Two. Two. Uh, if you can push that to a four, so spend four fortune, trust me, it's going to be worth it here. Um, okay, we'll do it. All right, so you push up, you push the, 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 the stuff up again, um, and you actually, uh, he's like, oh, uh, well, uh, I have to say, maybe uh, it is my, uh, I will have another battle of luck here. Um, well, honestly, the ship, I, the ship I fly is kind of boring. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm kind of glad to be away from it. Um, but is this all we're going to talk about is what we do in our on time? What about our off time? What, what kind of stuff do you enjoy in the doing when you're not uh, out, uh, you know, uh, moving, moving people in power armor around the solar system? Uh, you're actually looking at it. I'm, I'm a big gambler myself. Oh, oh. Yeah. I I quite enjoy the, the thrill of, you know, putting things on the line, never knowing mm. what I'm going to win, what I, what's what's going to happen next. Mm. And I kind of like the element of, of, of chance, chance encounters even. So his um, game wise, you've actually very much won his favor. He's actually very favorable. He, he seems to trust you and he seems very enthralled by you. And you can clearly tell this. Um, and uh, he's like, well, um, why don't we uh, enjoy a little more time here at the tables and the machines? And uh, if you've got nothing else to do, I'd love to have uh, dinner with you and hear more about these um, your your techniques on uh, flying these ships. Absolutely. Uh, do you think I, I do you think that I could uh, maybe get a little handsy with him and just yeah, you yeah, if you want if you want to, yeah if you want to like start like kind of like uh, put your arm around him or something like that he seems he seems yeah. open to it and he's kind of into it and he he's like okay shit this was like. This vacation is going to be dope. 
Uh, I, I, <laughs> I'm thinking I want to get a get a little get a little handsy with him and maybe do some sleight of hand just to do a quick little pat, pat down, down to see if his okay. data ha- that data like pad it. is like on it. him. Yeah, give me um give me a sleight of hand here if you try not to like be observe or you know observed uh, feeling his uh, possessions up. I'll also describe it. <laughs> Literally his possessions. He, he, he owns the data pad. It's not, he, can, he can feel it. All right. So yeah, give me give me um. Yeah, give me the sleight of hand check, so uh, plus four here. <laughs> 16. 16, okay. Yeah, great roll. Uh, you, you can tell he has a data pad on him. Uh, you can tell he has some, uh, what are like like loose credit chips, or if they're like one-off chips, you can kind of throw into the bin and like they'll, they'll work through the machines and everything if you don't want to like run your data pad. Um, you can tell he is not armed. Uh, one thing you did notice that at the at the gate to the high rollers place, there's no weapons in here. There's no weapons in the casino. Uh, I should have mentioned that by the way. No, there's not. You guys could try to bring weapons in here, but like, um, uh, if you get caught, it'll suck. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, the uh, but yeah, no weapons on him. Uh, he does seem. You do feel his data pad vibrating occasionally, and he seems to be ignoring the notifications on his data pad. Uh, okay. You're guessing he's, he's he's more concerned with you know you at this point. Okay. Right. Um, as you as you as you're kind of doing this, uh, you see this gentleman in like a uh, kind of a casual jacket, a little bit bigger than, than uh, Derek. Come up, and he goes, uh, "Sir," and uh, Derek's kind of like Derek's kind of like ignores him initially, and he goes, "Sir, uh, Captain," and he kind of looks back and he goes, uh, "Oh, geez, um, oh, oh, all right, all right, yeah, yeah, no, I get it." And he's like. Um, the guy kind of goes over, he goes, uh, miss, uh, uh, do you have any, uh, who, he's like, yeah, who is this? And he's like, oh, this is my, uh, my new friend, Carmen, um, but you can call her, uh, Corporal Castillo. He's kind of like, he's kind of like pulling rank on this guy somehow. And the guy's like, uh, uh, yeah, Corporal Castillo, uh, he looks at your tattoo, he's a Martian, huh? Um, so this is, uh, can we, can we talk off the side, please, real quick? And he's like... You can see Derek's like, fuck, come on, man. I'm like, I'm having a good time here. And he's like, but sir, I, I need to step in. This guy's trying to break up the good time. You can tell this is probably um, a security detail. Yeah. Oh, wait, is that the same security guy that yeah. I saw earlier? Yeah, or yeah. You... it's the same guy, yeah. Um, he's not like telling- Did you get tell... to the table yet, Sri John? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been in the area. I've been you're, making- you're, You can see them off, off the side. You have, to kind of, you have to go through and find them. You can see them off to the side. And you can see the security guard confronting both Carmen and uh, Derek. Yeah. Uh, can I use? Can I use my? Uh, 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 what was it? Um, Over here, distraction thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. How do you want to make a distraction this time? <laughs> um. Oh shit! How, what do I want to do? Like spit um, in space? I don't know, man. Like, nah. I don't know what, <laughs> what your deal is here? Um, would I, how about, how about this? Um, shit. Buy this... around for everybody. Oh, man. On well... Fred Johnson's staff. Yeah. <laughs> Drinks on me. I'm going to pretend I'm drunk and I'm just going to straight body this guy. In okay. the sense of like, I stumbled into him okay. and right. like make him Keep... fall over. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll. Um, this is going to be a communication test. So you try to fake it real quick. So give me a communication test real quick as you try to as you try to like fake into as you body into him. Uh, so what would that plus, be? Uh, plus five, bro. You got you got a high roll on this. Hell yeah! Come on. Oof. Uh, that is a. You said plus five. Yeah. Thirteen. Oh, it's a lowest number. Was, that was my total. That's... No, what's your lowest number on, on any of the dice you got? Two. Two. Uh, you need to push that to a four, so spend four fortune, and okay. uh, you can get the check. You will. You will. You will get distraction without hindrance. So yeah, you you bump into him. Yeah, I bump in and kind of like wanting to like trip him up and like I, as I like kind of like fall on him, I'm like, oh, I'm so, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry, man. Oh God. He kind of pushes you off, like like very. Like it's powerful, but he's not like he's not putting his hand on. He's more of using his, his arm to kind of yeah. push you off. Yeah, okay, he's like, Jesus okay, Christ! Man. He's like, he's like fucking. He's like, God damn, this fucking arrows, piece of shit. He's like just pissed off at this place. He's like, this is garbage. He's like, it's all right. He kind of props you up, and he goes, hey. He, he kind of snaps at one of like the wake staff. He goes, hey, we got a problem here. Get this guy the fuck out of here. 
And he's like, uh, hey, hey, you can't, who are you to kick me out, man? Like, I, I, I'm a paying customer. I'm here to have a good time. You, you can't. Wait staff comes over and goes, sir, we, we have, uh, in the high rollers area, we have, uh, you agreed as you signed in to assert, to conduct yourself in a certain manner. This is not it. Oh, no. We're going to have to have you, we're going to have to have you leave and come back when you're silver up. Oh, I'm good. I'm, I'm really good. I'm just, I'll, the gravity here is not what I'm used to. I'm kind of just a little, uh, you know, off kilter a little bit. Yeah. My, my center of gravity is, I'm just trying right. to figure it out. Here goes. Here, here goes. I need you to roll a hearing test. This is going to be, oh. uh, this is going to be perception. Hearing test. I'm going to see if you hear this. Okay. Uh, hold on, baby. Give me something good. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. 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 Uh, that just on the dice is a 14 plus, plus two. uh, 15. 15, all right, yeah. so, uh, okay. Uh, Carmen did not hear this, luckily. Um, you no, hear no, him, so 14 you plus hear, 16. 16. 16, yeah. You hear him say, fucking duster piece of shit. The fuck you call me? And he kind of- That's my kinda, fucking face. You, come here. Talk to me right there. And, and, and the, wait, the wait staff goes, security. And like these like guys come out. Um, they're definitely no, 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 no. I, 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 I ain't taking shit. From no one, I've I've had to deal with this kind of bullshit all my life. I came here on a vacation. I ain't talking. I didn't need to hear this shit. What did you say to me? Say it again. Say that one, one more time. And 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 uh, you can see that uh, uh, Derek's like. Uh, so there's now a scene. Uh, <laughs> there's a scene within the scene. Uh, Carmen, you can see that the, the guys like security detail like starting shit with uh, Sturgeon. And uh, they're kind of like there's some there's some sort of issue. They're calling security over for the casino. Um, uh, Gun, uh, Gunderson, or Gun, Gun Hilder is like kind of looks to you, Carmen. He goes, "Let's get the fuck out of here." I was like, "God damn fucking security!" And like the uh, and the security guy, he's like, he's like, Captain, come on, come on. He, he's like, I, he's "No, like, no, you fucking like, stay right here." You heard him. Wait, was it the security guard that said it, or was it someone else? It, it was his security in detail, yeah, said it, yeah. Yeah, 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 no, you ain't fucking going nowhere. All right, so you kind of step up, and, and like, you, you, these two security guys come out and, like, start holding you back, and the no, other guy starts no, no, walking no. away. Uh, you could try to, do you want to try to intimidate him further, or try to, like, provoke him further? How would you want to do that? He certainly, he, he, he's certainly I, listening to you, but he's, like, trying to keep his eye on, on his, on his like, his guy that he's taking care of here. He's trying um, to do his job. What is the equivalent of a duster to him it's derogatory as fuck dude no 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 i get that i get dusters oh, oh, for, yeah for he earthers, wants to insult him back. Oh, earthers, uh, the derogatory term for earthers is called thwats yeah like they're short yeah you can, I'm, I'm gonna look at him like <laughs> you uh two two can play that game you swat squat he's like fucking shit he's like yeah that's all he's like yeah big big impressive thing uh, but i want i want you to make a um i guess this would be like um, yeah, communications. Use etiquette communications to see if you can get under his skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, come on, baby. Ooh, uh, that is an eight on the die, and I think my etiquette is a seven. So yeah, 15. fifteen. Okay. Uh, you say something like, uh, like, because you know, like the Earthers were like they they were like like colonial, like kind of colonized Mars, and Mars was under colonial rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you say something like, you know, like I don't know, colonize this dick or something. <laughs> and like, and like, he's like, and he, makes a, he makes a lewd gesture to him, and he, he roll his like willpower. Oh yeah, he comes back and like he go, he goes, all right. He's like, yeah, yeah, fucking whatever. And he like he goes and like, starts like pushing you towards the exit, and the security guards, hey hey hey, and, like all the security guards are pulling you back to the exit. I'm just, I'm just walking, walking back like, well, like you, you see this shit? And, you see this and guy? He, and he comes out with you. And he's like walking out, and like there's a big scene in the casino. People are looking. Uh, the the casino security are more interested, like trying to keep. They're trying to stay between the two of you as you guys walk out. But the guy's like, you know, fucking, let's do this shit. Like, let's fucking, I'm gonna knock your fucking teeth out. Um, oh, let's go, let's go. Let's see how, uh, yeah, he's like, you're lucky. You're lucky we're here on Eros. So you're not gonna hit that ground that hard. Like, <laughs> shit like that. Rocking not doing nothing with it, son. I'm gonna right. deck you so hard you're gonna fly right. back to Earth. Hey, John. Yes, sir. Are they both outside of the security checkpoint now? Yeah, they're in your area, yeah. Okay, so I, I'll flirt, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna communicate with some hotel staff and say, to incite, like, th that security guard is hassling my personnel, I don't want, I don't want either one of them to have access back inside the security checkpoint. 
Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, you want to say, hey, that's my, that's my guy. Like, I don't want him going back in. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Am I frozen? So you, no, you're good. You're good. So he, he, comes, he comes back and uh, you go up to him and you tell him that and they kind of like go, oh, geez, yeah, some people can't hold their, they're not used to like like the the pure, like the real alcohol. They're used to the synthetic shit. And he's like, yeah, I get it. He's like, we get this once in a while. It happens. Don't worry. Don't worry, sir. We'll make sure your, your buddy's taken care of. And they kind of keep you apart until they get you outdoors and then they kind of let you do what the fuck you want. Uh, <laughs> right. So, and and my my intention was to um, uh, blame the the security detailed okay. man as well and color him as like, well, he's like, I want yeah, I don't want they, him to be allowed they're, past they're, the they're, checkpoint. They're mutually okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Give me a. Um, you you seem he won't be allowed back in at least initially until the stuff gets smoothed over. So he's not going to be allowed in for a while. Yeah. Like a few hours at least. Okay, great. That's so all I wanted. That, yeah. That so Srijan's not allowed back. Yeah, they're no, both Sreen not. Was, okay, great. But he did not forfeit his money, so you guys, you guys still have a little bit of money here. All right. So, uh, Marvin, uh, Mel, anything you guys see this scene unfold? Uh, what do you guys want? To, anything you guys want to do, or just kind of like watch the fireworks? My intention uh, earlier coming in was just kind of to have a slightly better angle on what's happening, but not necessarily participate okay. as this is happening, <laughs> you know, and we're still, I'm sure, talking shop about, uh, you know, spacecraft and engines and, you know, uh, whatever the hell the space equivalent of, you know, thermodynamics is and whatnot is, you know, we're, we're talking about all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's still um, thermodynamics in space. That is <laughs> okay, great, great. I don't know, like, if they, they if, like, the lack of, like, anything. I, and anyway, I'm okay. not a scientist. We're not going to get into right. what I don't it's know cool. because the list so is seeing, very long. Yeah, uh, yeah. Seeing seeing the scene unfold, I might like message uh, Carmen and and like just be like i'm providing a decoy excuse if you want an excuse to be like we should scram like maybe it's a time good time to leave like i'm just going to provide like a buzz on a handheld okay. where she can really obviously be like oh you know we might need to wrap this up do you want to go somewhere more quiet sort of thing like i'm just going to provide the out if she wants it all right perfect um <laughs> my question to you real quick kp is do you yes. want to fight this guy or not or do you just want to run <laughs> um, so, so I'm really curious about that because that's, that, that's a bit angry. Um, to him, he's seen and heard all sorts of bullshit sure, in his sure. life. Um, he's not a young buck who who lets emotions get to him that easily. Um, I do want to see if I can intimidate him to step down because Srijan, like I said, he's he's all quite right. a, he's, he's a big man. Yeah. Like he's You're, quite like. This is a big guy too. He wants to be a little intimidating. This guy's muscle mass is a little denser than yours. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, roll a. Um, this would be a uh, intimidation check. This is actually strength based. Like if you try to like size oh, him up, no. he's past communication at this point. Uh, it's about it's about forced now. Uh, make a strength check. Uh, one sec. Oh yeah. Strength. Yeah, you have plus one. Uh, this is not going to go well. No. Not at all. Uh, that is a that is a fourteen. All right. Yeah, he slugs you. And uh, <laughs> you you take a whopping uh, seven points of fortune damage. Or sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, six points of fortune damage. There's one less. Um, now, I want to say, this game is a mechanic called roll over, where yeah. you can just, like, collapse in combat instead of, like, having to have it continue. Mm. It, he's just gonna, the type is going to beat you when you're down. He's just going to knock you out and be like, fucking done. Yeah, yeah. Um... Or is your pride gonna get it get ahead of you here? Oh man, that's a good question. Like he was not job to actually be decked. Um I think, I think what I'm do instead is I'm just going to uh, appeal to the masses. I'm going to appeal to the, the other security guards and okay. the other like they like, they come in and they break it up and they he knocks you down, they come and break it up and uh he's like, Yeah, fucking not worth my time and he kinda he kinda just <laughs> softens off, goes back to tries to go back to the casino. Uh, they're kind of talking to him a little bit, but he's definitely well behind where Carmen and Derek are. Um, ooh, if he's you, going, you, back you put, you put to a lot them? of distance though between the two of them for sure. Like he, yeah. so Derek. Uh, if he's going back to them, I look at I look at Dingo and I'm I'm like, I, or like kind of subtly to like, what do I do? Should I still like distract him essentially? Um, um that. Uh, right, I'm, gonna come, I'm gonna come back to um, it. I'm gonna come back to it. I'm gonna go to Carmen here because I'm really I want to know what's gonna happen with Carmen because I love it. Carmen, 
Yes. Um, you and uh, Captain Gunhilder, uh, he starts kind of taking you through uh, the high roller areas. You guys get a few more drinks, whatever. You guys get some drinks. Uh, he's kind of interested in where you want this to go. Um, he seems very flirty. Uh, mm -hmm. He seems like he's, having, he's feeling pretty high. Um, and you can tell that he has a, uh, you know, he, he's been, the way he's been talking, he has a night, he has a room in this casino that's actually pretty high, high end room. Um, what do you want to do? Um, so do I know that all of this is happening? Like I can see. You, you heard here. the commotion and saw it like firsthand and just like Derek didn't want to be a part of it. He seems like he's kind of like, he wants a little alone time. Like he wants to like have his own time as it would be on his own terms versus having like a babysitter. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, he kind of like, uh, yeah, he kind of saunters. He's, he's kind of trying to get away from that and trying to like, oh Jesus, you know, kind of, he's embarrassed a little bit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. exhausted. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see, get him alone to see maybe like he wants to take it upstairs. Um, yeah, he, he's, you kind of talked to him a little bit and he's, uh, you're at the bar hanging out with him and he goes, um, well, yeah, um, sure. I got a, uh, we got a room out here on the, on the floor, not too far out. Uh, pretty nice. Actually, like I said, it's a nice, uh, where are you, are you, he's like, um, are you staying on, I, I take you're staying on the Eros too, uh, but I can, I can tell you the room where I'm staying is a lot better than any place else on the station. Uh, oh, I'm, I, I am staying here on the Eros, but, um, you know, I... I'd really like to see you. Yeah, let's go take a let's take a look. Let's get an idea of what's uh, what's going on in there. And we'll, we'll see what he goes. He goes uh, and he, he goes to the bartender. And he goes uh, hey, on my tab. Uh, bring a. I want that that full bottle of the Lola. Let's do some more of that. He like, gets like a whole bottle served up of the Lola with a pair of glasses and starts carrying that back to the room. Uh, yeah, going back into his his space. Yeah. Um, here's my question to you uh, for Carmen. Uh, once you, he kind of goes up, he's, he's with the room. He's having a few little drinks here and there. Uh, he's had a few drinks. He's, he's not drunk, but he's like, you can tell he's having a, he's feeling pretty good about himself here. Uh, mm -hmm. his, he's definitely has a positive attitude about this, this day. Um, and, uh, he opens up the door with his, with his data pad or kind of flashes the biometric scan him and let him in. It's a nice room. It's, it's got like its own shower, even, um, it's got his own kind of setup, kind of like a quasi kitchenette almost set up. It's a pretty nice little suite. Uh, there's looks like there's two bedrooms in there too, so it's, it's set up and he's got plenty of space. You can see he's packed kind of light. He has like a single suitcase there with some stuff in it. Um, and it, it's not like a he hasn't been in the room long enough to make a mess kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you see that he's uh, he kind of comes on. He's all welcome on in. And there's like a table and chairs and everything. It's actually very spacious. It's honestly bigger than like it's probably the size of like the home you grew up in on Mars. <laughs> like this room, okay. it's it's pretty damn big. And you said there's two bedrooms in this one yeah. room? Yeah. It looks like there's more of like a master bedroom and then there's kind of like another room that has like, those, you're guessing it's got a pair of twins or something like that or kind of like like bunks and stuff, yeah. Okay. Is there anybody else? Can I tell based on like, is there any other luggage? You only see the one, you only see the one luggage piece. Uh, you do so see I can't like, tell if anybody else is staying Yeah, you do see some like, some uh, leftover like wrappers and like some like leftover like food items he had. Like there's, it's not like rotting food, but it's just like, you know, he, he's eating in here. He had a, you know, he woke up in here and hung out. It's been, okay. the room's been used. It's not fresh. Okay. Um, can I somehow let uh, Marv and Dr. Mel know that I'm in the room? Absolutely. Not a problem. Like I've, I've made it to there? Yeah, absolutely. That's totally easy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you get, you get uh, Marv and you let everybody know that, hey, you're, you're in his room. Not okay. a problem. After um, just the, the ordeal that we've gone through in order to create separation for them, mm -hmm. I think uh, Marv has just kind of been thinking, even while, you know, him and Dr. Uh, Holson have been talking, uh, and he's just going to send a message back uh, that basically says, um, do we still think we have a second day of this we can do? Or do we need to strike now? I mean, Carmen's there. Carmen's in the room, so we need to. Or I don't know. We don't know where she is, but Carmen's doing the her room's job. Easy to, the room's easy she, to tell. She said to, she's in the room. Yeah, right? she, it's easy to be over where the room is. There's a number and everything. It, it, that, that's taken care of. Um, yeah, but yeah, sure, Carmen. But he start, he just starts, in terms of like getting I, I, to, and this is an. Uh, 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 we're doing uh, good above above board. I'll say. I'm just thinking like. 
uh, while he's actively distracted is maybe the best time to strike above board. Uh, but then, you know, in character, I think I think what yeah, what uh, Marv is thinking is um, while the security guy is out mm. is maybe like the the time to strike and we're not going to get a second opportunity. Right. Well, we know he keeps his data pad with him now. Mm-hmm. Like that was one of the things we needed to find out. And he keeps his data pad with him. So when he leaves the room tomorrow, he might have it with him. He might right. not leave it there. So, so can I, breaking can I, into the room doesn't the, do anything for us. Let me, let me get the car in the uh, what, what's, what's going on? Yep. I'm wondering, can I, uh, you know, say I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick and freshen up or something? Sure. Yeah, you go in the... Um, it, and take this opportunity to communicate with my team to see if we want to alter our plans. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to throw in something here. You took some clandestine photos of the room real quick, so you guys have a layout of what the room looks like now. And you can see that it does have two bedrooms that would isolate. Um, and uh, while you're while you're doing that, Carmen, you can see he's gotten like the, the the tequila out. He's getting the drinks out. He's kind of like trying to straighten up the room a little bit, make it look a little more presentable. You're guessing like while you're in the bathroom, uh, he doesn't want to seem like a total slob here. Um, but he's definitely like um, you know he you can tell his intention is that he's planning on retiring with you to the bedroom, um, which would certainly uh, uh, isolate the room the areas of the rooms. This might be a moment so, for you to strike, is what I'm trying to say. Is here. Okay. Leave the door so unlocked. there's a living area and two bedroom areas? Yeah, and then like a bathroom, and there's like a kitchen in the living area type thing. It's a suite, okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was under the impression we needed the doctor to implant the data, and I want to make sure that I want to make sure that uh, that Jesse gets some gameplay here. Oh, sure, but sure. like, like, is it like, I mean, it's, since she's there, is it possible? That, well, can, Marv can, has can the, we... the, the shard, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So well, if Mav and I can get there. You're not trying to drop the data here. You're trying to get his data pad to get access right. to where you want to bring the data. That's right. So, All right. Um, do I have the equipment that I need to clone it? Yeah, you got it. Yeah, like D- Dingo right. brought up a whole security kit. It's like, it's 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 gray market at best. Um, okay. You know, and uh, sure. yeah, cloning a, cloning a data pad. I off, have on site I have jury much. jury rig, which is yes. a stunt with with found or improvised equipment. Um, so if it's gray, so that's great. You're good. I can even do more. With Absolutely. It. <laughs> now the question is, how are you going to get into the room? Uh, you guys know where the room is, and as you guys see, his security detail has eventually like is like trying to talk his way back into the casino. Okay. This well, great. If we want to try and do this now, let's do this now. Which means, Shrijen, this is the make or break moment, and you need to fucking fight this guy. Like this is it. <laughs> okay. Do as it. soon as I get that word, okay. Uh, is that security guy still walking away? He's, no, he yeah, he walked away. Uh, they, they kind of broke you up, and he's like trying to talk his way back into the casino, explaining that he's like part of a detail. You can see he's like, "Hey, do you know who the fuck I am?" Type thing to the, the security guard at the casino. They're like, sir, we got you're, you're on a, you're on a six hour ban. You need to calm down. He's like, I'm fucking sober. Like he's like bitching about it and everything. Mm. That's how you make. And your I'm gonna point I'm gonna say this racist piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, if uh, yeah, you can, you see this as a moment to try to like because uh, Dingo and Mel are on good terms at the casino. You guys haven't like you know gotten violent in it. Uh, you guys can walk right in and try to get to the room if you want to. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's fine. Come and okay. is there any way to get the leave the door ajar or not latched or there, there's like a you yeah. guys go to the bedroom and get busy, but how do we get into the living room? Yeah, I'm gonna stay with Shrijen just to just to vaguely support him from a distance. But yeah, I'll get I'll I'll set I'll get Mel in. You know, I'll 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 uh, there. Uh, uh, I want to say uh, this to I, yeah Carmen. Uh, there is a yeah the the, the there's like a like a like a panel next to the door that's like kind of like your ring doorbell type thing, but it does have a do not disturb kind of setting where you can say, you know, don't, it's like putting the, the thing on the outside of the door at the hotel. Um, mm-hmm. That would be an opportunity to try to rig the door so it doesn't lock. Yeah. Okay. Um, if, you, if you're looking for a, mo- a tactical moment to strike, this would be it. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna, I wanna, I would like to do that. Okay. So you, you move over and he kind of he, he kind of says oh good idea he's like I was gonna let you know though my I gotta I'm here with someone it's not like that he's like trying to, like I'm not like that with, I, I have like, <laughs> I have a I have a part of my corporate job that I have a security detail that has to be with me because my clearances and everything he's gonna come knocking I'm sure sooner or later but um, hopefully put he's, a sock on the door <laughs> as I've tried it before it doesn't work uh, this guy he's got he's got protocols. 
Um, real ones. Uh, but yeah, um, he's like, yeah, I'm... it'll be good. Make sure we're uh, that they, you know, you know, I'm here or something like that. So uh, I'm gonna send them. A, I'm gonna send them a message that I'm just taking. A, I'm taking a, a quick nap or something like that before the a big event tonight or something. Just, you know, let's make sure. But um, disappear with the pretty lady. I'm taking a quick nap. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. Mm, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm. Uh, but Carmen, go over the door. You go over the door and you make a slight of hand check to kind of show, make sure the door is rigged and everything. So give me a slight of hand check. It's, this isn't like a, it's not hard to rig a door from not locking. It's pretty easy. But give me a slight of hand check. I think if, you have it, a, if it goes badly, I also bought the doors and. Uh, yeah, the, I saw that. We have one reroll on, on deck. So yes. Give me if it a. It goes badly, there's a reroll. So uh, 3D6. I rolled a, I rolled a 12. 12? Okay. Plus, uh, you get to add four to that too. That was plus four. Okay, do you want to use the reroll? I would recommend using the reroll. Yeah, All right. I would like Give to use the reroll. Give me the reroll real quick. Let's okay. do it. Let's, let's see. Let's make Jesse's, Jesse's money worth it here. <laughs> uh, 18. 18, okay. You go up and you rig it, and he goes, oh. oh. Yeah, he's like, I hate to, yeah, it's all, like I said, the job pays well, but it comes with a babysitter. Um, well, look, uh, you want to, um, how's, uh, he's like, he, he has like, a pair of drinks there. He's kind of bringing it over to you very, uh, very kindly. You know, like he's trying to meet you in the middle of the room type thing. Uh, I was, I was thinking, you know, with, with, you know, how chaotic both of our jobs can be <laughs> and how stressed and tense, I'm sure we, we carry this tension with us. How fun would it be if maybe we just took a shower together? Oh, oh. he was like, "Wow!" Well, <clears throat> I thought that conversation was going somewhere else. Uh, he and he kind of like he kind of goes like like puts the drinks down, like picks up your hands, and he, he notices that you're like your character's visibly like physically strong. Uh, and he's like, um, "I think I could, I think I could, I could fit into these." And he kind of puts his like puts your hands around him and everything, uh, around his waist and everything. Um, he's he's very much, um, we'll say, uh, implementing submissive uh, elements here. He's submissive, or I'm submissive. He is. Oh. Or he's 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 con conveying that whether or not you act on a strip to your character, but he is. Uh, just being, carry him uh, to the bathroom. I mean, you really can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. not saying you can. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you, him full, if you want to go full blown caveman and put him over your shoulder and shit, you're welcome to. But like, oh, 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 oh. Um, yes. Do you, do, you, do you want to pick him up? Yeah, let's pick him okay. up. Let's take him to the bathroom. So as, as you pick him up, he says, "Hold on a minute," and like he picks up both glasses and he carries both glasses that you carry into <laughs> to the bathroom. I'm gonna just say this, I'm ladies. Getting the ick so Everybody bad right thinks now. That guys don't like this shit. Guys like this shit too. This shit, dude. <laughs> Sweep us off our feet, dude. Look, I, 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 I'm, I'm gonna be a real there out there. Like, I'm 5'11, my wife's six foot one. Okay. Oh, hell yeah. Like, like, it's not like, I'm just saying, like, I'm not that she can't pick me up, but like, I'm just saying, like, look, you know, all shapes and sizes, buddy. Um, hell yeah. And so, uh, you know, Martian Marine, that's, that's, that's something. Um, I, I thought you were gonna offer him a massage. I was like, okay, let's fucking do that. That's cool. But, oh, the shower thing's that, I'm up for that too. Um, so yeah, he go, you guys go off and he, um, uh, you guys start kind of stripping down or whatever it is, and uh, we'll let that we'll let that be what, what it wants to be. Um, and uh, he, uh, oh, uh, Mel, you you like you kind of give me a hearing test, Mel, as you listen to the door. <laughs> okay, I also have observation, which is getting to reroll perception checks. Which yeah, you get a reroll re theme. Get in. You get a reroll theme test only. Okay. Yeah, but and you do have a you, hearing test. Yeah, but you do so have you do. Perception? Yeah, so go roll, go roll for this one. Okay, two, three, and four on the drama die, which is That's pretty good. nine Love. plus two is eleven. Eleven. Okay. Uh, what's your lowest number? I can spend fortune. You can. Yeah, uh, I think two. I think you're okay. Uh, if you can push up to a uh, four, so spend four fortune, and yeah. uh, you get the success on this. All right. So you go ahead and you listen the door, and you hear like the the sh you hear like the bathroom door uh, close, and then you hear. Uh, mm -hmm. You hear nothing for a second, and then like, you do you want to try to open the door. Yeah, okay. and I have quick reflexes as well, so I'm going to try and open the door. And if something, if it doesn't seem like it's safe, I'm going to. Okay, you're ready to bolt for the door at any moment. Okay, give me a yeah. stealth check. So this is going to be stealth check. Uh, this will be dexterity. So you have a plus three. You're actually pretty good. You're actually pretty dexterous. All right, um, uh, ten six on the drama die. Look, guys, there's like these cool little icons. My hand, my hand drawn um, icons. Yeah. 
Yes, uh, so that's 10, six on the drama die, plus three is 13. 13, okay. You kind of come in quiet. Uh, Carmen, you guys are, the shower's on, the noise is going, no problem to be stealthy through this. Uh, the water's okay. warming up and everything. Uh, you can see like there's like a pile of clothes. Um, there's like some like, like stuff on, on top of a desk. Uh, you sit through real quick and you find a data pad. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. then I'm trying to, right. I have the equipment from Dingo, right. I'm trying to right. clone it. It's gonna take a few minutes. Um, yeah. Dingo, you, Dingo and Mark, you guys spot his security details to finally talk his way past the casino people, and is like gonna try, looks like he's gonna try to make his way. Uh, Sturgeon, what do you wanna do? Reason, at this point, um, if I'm seeing that the, the, you know, the security guard has yeah. a higher chance of walking through, um, I'm gonna turn to Dingo and I'm like, um, so how confident are you that, uh, Fred or you can get me out of jail if I need to get in, if I get <laughs> That's not an issue. Like, like, all right. That's maybe all an assault charge. Who cares? All right. That's all it's, I need yeah, to hear. The, Dingo, the one thing you know is that, like, the cops on stations like this are on the take. They're easy to break. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, bureaucracy is not real. Don't, yeah. And I would okay. rather, I would rather disappear with the, his data pad. If I'm not done, I'm just okay. making sure everybody knows right. this. If I'm not done cloning the data pad, if someone's up. coming, tell me and I will okay. go with right. his data pad. Right. Yeah. Marv, you got um, anything you're up to? Wh- um, I, I think I have been kind of waiting in the wings for an additional distraction if needed to keep the security right. guy from going up. Uh, it seems <laughs> it seems like uh, if, if Sri John's going to do his thing, I'm going to let him do his thing. Uh, if he gets in, uh, I am uh, going to... Uh, <laughs> well, I, 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 I have something in my back pocket I, if if ooh. we need it. Let's I just got this image of Marv walking up to the security guard and going, "Hey, I heard you guys. I heard I heard what you said about Martians and try to slow him." <laughs> <laughs> oh no 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 no! All right, Sturgeon, what do you want to do? Uh, I walk up. Um, I'm assuming that he's not. He doesn't notice me walking up, or he's uh, not looking. He's he's, he's having a calm. I mean, no, I he actually does notice you. Shit, he actually rolled really high. He he know he kind of looks back. He goes he goes. He's all, you, 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 ready, you ready to start losing some teeth or what? No, nah, no, nah, I just want to say, I think you forgot something. And I want to like, dis- like distract him and then just punch him straight in the mouth. Okay, give me, um, what would that be? I'm, I'm playing more of the, rather than straight, you know, strength roll. Yeah, just like, to start, like a, fake it, hey, like you're throwing. Okay. Now look at give this me, hand. Give me a, a communications test here. This will be a, um, yeah, this will just be a straight communications test. You try to sell a punch. All right. <laughs> um, come on, give me good something good. Ooh, ooh, wait. Uh, that's ooh, eleven oh, plus. Sure. And communication. Five. Uh, You're good. Aha, sixteen. Sixteen, not a problem. Yeah, uh, you kind of do it, and he's like, he goes like, uh, dodges the punch enough, and the security guard, oh, sh- oh, she's gonna do it again. And the guy like goes to like try to like, because he's kind of up, up 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 these stairs. He tries to like push you down the stairs. Um, he's a jerk, and uh, yeah, he he uh, he pushes you down the stairs. He rolled a natural fifteen plus his bonus, um, ah, damn so it. he connects, and you proceed to fall down and tumble down the stairs a little bit here, uh, making quite the scene. Uh, you, you you only take uh, four fortune damage on this. Um, I should mention too, when you take the physical damage, you actually get to negate your uh, it's called your toughness. You get to negate that from the damage, so uh, you negate three of that. Um, as you okay. roll down the stairs. But Double you... checking again. How much is... Oh, so I have a fortune tracker up here. Mm-hmm. And um, so I've lost eight before from the punch. Mm-hmm. And then how much this time again? Uh, it'd be another three, but your toughness will absorb it. So you're you're good. So you're actually you're okay. actually down five toughness or five fortune by definition. But don't worry about it. It's a game, guys. So... Okay. And he like pushes you down. He goes... Like he's trying to get back into the casino um, as, as you roll down. Um, I oh, need, <laughs> I need, uh, well, you distract a little bit, but I need, um, I need Mel to make a stealth ch- test as you try to, like, not get heard in the room. And this is going to be against his hearing. Sorry, what do I add? Dexterity. Uh, it would just be your, uh, your, uh, dexterity. Um, is Carmen, this the security guy trying to come up to the room, or? Yeah, it looks like he's trying to go back to the room. Um, oh, so, maybe... so I've I've been kind of waiting yeah, in the wings. Okay. If he gets past three, John, I've got yeah. something yeah, in, yeah, in my yeah, back he's pocket. Coming, he's coming your way. Yeah, I did. Right. I did not great. I rolled five right. with three on the two, oh. two ones and a three. Oh, that's bad. I have add three. You, yeah, so your fortune. Eight. Your for, You can't spend enough fortune to win that one. Um, we're, we're not going to get there. It's not going to matter because uh, I <laughs> have my uh, hand 
uh, I've been talking to the security guy for the last mm. like two minutes. I've been like, hey, there's a guy. I just saw him a minute ago, uh, and he he stole all of my credit chips. Uh, he, hey, he he took yeah. all of my all 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 of my money. Uh, and as uh, th- this guy is coming back in and pushes uh, Sri John, I'll be like, there he is. That guy is the guy who just all right. picked my pocket. Commun- communication deception. Yeah, that's a deception. Too. That's a lie. <laughs> it sure is. And how? Um, Damn and, right it is. <laughs> okay, so so here's the thing. Uh, here's the thing. Okay, uh, I've rolled uh, sixteen okay, with a stunt point mm-hmm. uh, because I got two sixes. Uh, okay. And, and, a, and a one on the drama die. Okay. And a one on the drama die. Mm-hmm. If I spend fortune to increase my drama die, can I, as part of my stunt here, Mm -hmm. like, be somehow, not not just convincing this, but like to somehow like um, uh, get credit chips to like fall on the ground. Yes, and I will absolutely. If you want, now I will say drama increasing the drama die for with fortune costs double, so it's twelve fortune to do. Oh this. yes, okay. oh yes. All right. I'm I I know, and I'm spending my okay. fortune, but I want to like plant evidence on okay. him as Ooh. part of this that he has in fact robbed me. Okay, so yeah, you go through and you do this whole fucking scene. You guys see Marv get more animated than you've ever seen him be animated before. There's like it's like a cartoon and shit. Like ships are flying and everything. And he's like, oh god, the guy's like, the guy's like, what the fuck? Goddamn fucking Martians! And he's like, <laughs> he like says this shit out loud, like openly is now like blaming uh your people. And yeah, the security guards are like, oh hey, buddy, we've had some problems earlier, and like they're very much now stopping him 100 percent if you spend that much fortune. Okay. Carmen, you're with Derek, as you would be, and whatever's happening is happening. And Derek goes, Hey, did you hear that? As Mel had, like, I don't know, like, the suitcase fell off the table or something. <laughs> Rolled real bad. Yeah, he, he heard it over the shout. Um, uh, I, I would say I don't hear it. Um, that must just have been the, the sound of my heart pumping in the moment <laughs> because I'm so into what we're doing right now. All right, I'm gonna have you roll uh, a seduction test on this one to like maintain okay. his interest because he's actually a little worried. He actually got a little worried there for a second because he is screwing off. Like, yeah. be, uh, this will be literally uh, and figuratively. <laughs> this will be communications. Great. What do I add to this? Uh, plus one. one. Or you could restrain him and bring him in your arms. I forgot you have might. Like, if you want to like bring him in, not like not like bear hug him, but like like really embrace him and prevent him from leaving. Uh, or like him kind of like hit, like bring his attention back like I don't say in a forceful manner but like you're kind of like no we're here now and like all that kind of shit <laughs> like, can I can I just like shove him against the wall but like sure. hot? Hopefully. yeah okay uh, yeah give me a might test okay I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, he's into the he's into the the big Martian marine like he's he's here for he's it he's into being pushed around uh, he is yes this oh yeah this, this, this might and seduction overlap here in an odd strange manner for this encounter. Uh, 15, and that's okay. plus the 5. Okay. Uh, you do that, and he is... We'll, we'll say he's very turned on, and uh, you can tell this by his eyes getting big and wide and the dilation of his pupils. Uh, the whole thing is, like, he's, like... He's speechless, and you can kind of hear his, like... He's not... His breathing is abnormal. Like, if, this was, if he was in a normal space, you'd think he's having a problem, like, something like that. He's into it. Oh, great. Okay. okay. But yeah, he gets distra- you insane. distract him enough. Uh, Mel, Perfect. you hear you hear a slam in the in the bathroom. You hear like bubble, and uh, over the shower going, yeah. Um, all right. I'm just gonna keep trying to go. Right. So you keep on doing the transfer. Okay. Give me a uh, give me a cryptography test here. Uh, roll your dice and add a cryptography Got to it. it. I literally can't roll worse on the cryptography check than I just did for yeah. the stealth check. Oh no. What'd you get on the drama um, die? All right. Uh, four on the drama die, seven plus seven is 14. Okay. Uh, yeah, the transfer is going through. It's a little it's a little on the slow side, but it, it's working. Can I spend fortune to speed it up? 
Uh, if you want to up the drama die, yes, you could. It would. Uh, if you want to speed it up, it would. Uh, you'd have to eat twelve Plus fortune four to increase it by two. No, it, you have to spend you, whatever you increase it to is how much you have to spend. So if you go from a if you go from a one to a six, it's six points. If you go from a four to a six, it's six points. It's always the number you increase ah, to. I see. I see. But all right. The drama die is double to increase. Okay. All right. So, I'll spend all right, twelve. All right. Cool. Twelve. All right. I like. I mean, you guys are giving me all the churn. All right. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to have, actually, um, our other new person, KP, you're going to roll the churn check on this one. So roll 1d6 and tell me exactly what number you get. Okay. Here we go. I uh, got a three. You want high or low? Uh, you want uh, high preferred, but low will still do something. Uh, or no, high, high will still do something, but low, low is bad. And you rolled low. <laughs> um, Marv, as you're there with, with uh, the security detail, he gets in his mic and he goes, he goes, fucking Bravo team, I need you to go and check on the tar check on our guy. Oh no. <laughs> um, uh, is, the is, Dingo, is Dingo close enough to uh, uh, overhear that? Dingo and heard it, yeah. Happened? Dingo certainly heard it. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I'm in the middle of accusing this guy okay. of uh, uh, theft and, you know, have planted the evidence and need to be there to uh, you know, prove that this person is a scumbag and needs okay. to go away for a long Dude, time. It sounds like it sounds like uh, Mel might be might be caught at the room. Uh, there's more security. Yeah, so so now to... now now there's like a team of people on their way there's to the room. A, right? It sounds like a pair of guys. It sounds like a team, like a pair of team. We call them a team, Bravo team. All right. Well, I have been intentionally saving all of my fortune for an inevitable churn, so it's time to try and save my team. Um. All right, I, 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 is there a way to? You can start well, beelining. To, you can start beelining into the room. That that that's where you're gonna have the most impact is at the room. All right. I mean, I'll, I'll 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 text. People. I I'll I'll okay. I'll text Mel that she's been made and she okay. needs to get out a shap. Okay. And um, <laughs> yeah, I'll engage. I. Yeah. I right. You're on the way. You're okay. on the way there. That's all I'm gonna say. All right. Mel, uh, another cryptography test as you as you keep on trying to fiddle with this thing. Let's see if this one will let's see if this one will get the transfer over. Not great. It's uh, thirteen. Thirteen. What was your lowest number? One on the drama one. die. Uh, spend four fortune and you can get the uh, the success. What was your drama yeah. die? It was a one. One. Okay, actually it's gonna be eight points then. But yeah, that'll that'll give you a nice success. Um, the yeah. transfer the transfer completes. The transfer okay. completes over. Um, All right, so I can I leave? <laughs> you can leave anytime you want, but yeah, you can. You're like, oh, okay, so you you, you start. All right, I'm room. gonna get the get the data pad wet, but back where it was, as to okay. make it look like nothing happened, and I'm gonna book it. Okay, so you, you go and start booking it. Um, even in your uh, attempts to, we'll say, distract this man, uh, Carmen, he uh, certainly he goes, help, help. He's like, hey, I'm, I'm sorry, look, I, what the hell is going on out there? He, he's like, kind of like, actively is now trying to leave the shower. Um, I, is he still did he, like, did he hear me? Is that he, why? Well, you, you said you ran out of the room, which I'm, I'm assuming you're just being recklessly closing the door. Oh, I mean, I was trying to leave it all as it looked. And well, it as it looked, but like, you're still moving stuff around. Um, okay. it's, I thought you were doing it kind of in a hurry, but yeah, uh, this is super hurry. It'll be kind of fun. But yeah, he, he thinks he heard something this time, uh, Carmen, like for sure. He's like, I gotta go check this real quick. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, if he... But she's already out, and she's getting out. You think you don't know? Actually, you don't know what's going on with her. So I don't, okay. So I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Time to be a dummy mommy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, you know, do I have like I don't know? Does somebody have like a are one of us wearing a belt or something? I mean, um, <laughs> you're naked now. You're naked. <laughs> yeah. yeah our, like, I, oh, that's I, right, because our clothes aren't okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> but yeah. presumably, you have. Clothes nearby. Yeah, but, there's clothes in the there's clothes in the, in the you, bathroom. There's some some of your clothes. Not all your clothes are in the are in the shower. They'll, they they've been strung as a line. <laughs> Can I just like grab a belt or something and um, just start tying him up, but in okay. like a sexual way? Okay. So you okay? So you kind of uh, throw it around, throw the, the thing around him. To, uh, all right, this is going to be a very difficult seduction test. Uh, okay. Unless you yeah, uh, you throw it around him. You try to seduce him back. You're like, come on, you know, whatever. You know, come on back to the shower, buddy. It's like warm and everything. And he's like, oh, I gotta do some stuff. But give me a seduction test. This is gonna be a very high, this is gonna be opposed to his willpower. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's see what you got. Okay. So you can beat this one. I know what he got. Uh, 11. 
What was your lowest? You need to push by one more number up. Uh, my lowest was two. All right, so let's do it. Gen three fortune. And you, he's like, fuck it. And he like comes back and he's like into all this shit. <laughs> like, yes. um, all right. He got an 11. He, he needed to beat his number. So yeah, he, he comes on back to it. Uh, Mel, you hear like the struggles of, of, of intimacy. Uh, <laughs> at least America. faster. Yeah, at least faster. <laughs> um, Dingo, you come on the hallway and you can see Mel coming out of the room, trying to close the door kind of quietly. Yeah. And I can just like give him the thumbs up and be like, right. we gotta go. Okay. Right. Uh, Dingo, you look back behind you, you can see a pair of men walking two abreast towards you and uh, wearing similar clothes to the other guys, to the security detail. Good job, there you go. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see a need to, to, inter, to intercede, I mean, he, this dude's allowed to. I, I guess. Am I, am I worried that they're going to scrutinize um, Carmen? Uh, they might. It seems like um, you're not sure yet. They they might. It's, Carmen might be an uh, an issue they have. Um, uh, they have no. They have no uh, problem with. Uh, it, it seems like they might. They might scrutinize Carmen a little bit. But like Carmen got through the security check the yeah. first time. And has been consistently with the storyline, so it, it doesn't have any association with you guys either. So they're not a Tyco employee, which helps. Yeah, yeah. I feel like if I interfere with them, it's going to be worse. Yeah. So I'll just. I mean, I feel like it's, the situation is the most innocent have, the way it is. These guys might have questions for you and uh, Doctor Wilson. Well, I'll I'll way. try to. Uh, I'll. Do they see us? I mean, Mel and I are going to leave. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna at least at least get around a corner out of view if possible. Like okay. calmly walking, right, casually, super casually. casually. Yeah, super casual. Yeah, yeah, casual. Super casual. casual. Like casual. Okay, uh, give me. Um, I guess this would be a uh, performance test. Like you try, like actually, I'm gonna make this a willpower test for for Mel. Mel, you're gonna like have to see if you can contain yourself, your nerves here, because uh, I feel like this would be a. Shit. I was like, please let this little ride on Dingo because Mel is like fried. <laughs> okay, so uh, roll willpower uh, for yourself, Dingo. You're you've done this kind of stuff before. This is old hat for you. Uh, go ahead and roll a communications test. Okay, 12. Um, oh. One on the drama die. Ooh. Okay. Actually, can I, now I feel like I have an, can I, can I play into this, sure. John? All right. She's upset and scared. I'm going to play an abusive, an emotionally abusive husband or boyfriend hey. and be like, what, what the fuck is wrong with you? Where'd you go? I told you not to. So she seems Mel, nervous for Jake, a reason. Uh, Mel, Dingo's literally yelling at you. And it's like, it's like the stress. Like he like like you Let's did something. Let's go! Like, Come on! You just did the thing they asked you to do, and you did it well. And now he's yelling at you. Do I see the other two guys coming as well? Like do uh, I know? Yeah, you see them. Yeah, for sure. They're not. They're not being. Okay. They're coming towards you, and uh, yeah. I'd like to think I know that he's doing okay. a bit. All right, you're you're you're. Let's let's see here. I'm gonna have you. Yeah, I'll just you got it. You you figured it out. Yeah, you kind of got into Dingo's <laughs> uh, act here. Yeah. So, get, 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 come on, back, get back to the lobby. You, okay. oh, I'm love, do this too many times. Okay. All right, and the, these guys kind of start walking. They they walk past you. Uh, Dingo, make a performance test. This is be good. This is going to be a um, communications test. So plus three to you. Let's see if you can beat their check here. Plus three. Uh, yeah, ten. Lowest roll is a Ooh. one. Oh, okay. They stop you. you We're saving even, all of that fortune. Yeah, you get you can't you actually you can't fortune your way out of this. They beat your they, they would beat your number right more than six. So all right. the guy these guys right. kinda go, Hey, hey, uh buddy, uh you stay in here? Not no, I'm getting my I'm getting no, no, I'm not staying here. That's a not a lie. <laughs> okay. He's like uh look, uh what uh are you what are you doing? What are you doing in the hotel then? Do you work here? Oh, you're gonna go Karen on him. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they go no, but we're on a security detail uh, for some from some individuals here. We're just, uh, on, on alert of anyone kind of coming into the out of the vicinity. Uh, what kind of business do you have in the hotel today? I don't know you, and you don't work for the hotel. Have a good night. All right. Um, let's see if you can make him feel awkward. Uh, give me give me a test as you try to make them feel awkward. This will be a communication test, sir. Bingo. 
All right. Okay, I do have a question. Is sure. flirt is flirt only a positive thing, or is that a generic term for positive or negative? Uh, like, do can, I have you any? Can, you can change. Uh, you can make their their uh, attitude towards you much better suddenly if you want to. So I'll let you. I'll let you try to do this with uh with it. Yeah. If you want to try to flirt with them a little bit. That'd be funny with the about contacts it. or the. Or the intrigue. Oh, reroll communication. I have. I can reroll yeah. communication. If you want to try, if you want to try to flirt with them, yeah, you can. You should be like. You should be like. Oh, oh no, I don't want to get in your. I don't right, want to get in your way. Give me, a, give me a seduction test. We've never rolled this many seduction tests in this game I've ever played before. <laughs> I've been playing for fucking three years. Okay, so does that count as my first failure, or is that was that my reroll? Uh, no, the reroll has been spent, sir. That was a failure. Okay. Yeah, they. Damn. They go and uh, they check. They go. Um, they kind of go in like, all right, hey, uh, one of them goes, hey, uh, sir, we got, we got a, we got a kind of issue here. Um, now you know that that Mel has the asset that you need. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mel has the asset. I has the copy. Well, I know I have the she's copied data pad. Yeah. yeah, that's the that's the that's the evidence you don't want found. All right. Um, I'm going to. Be one hundred percent the problem, and I'm going to start yelling at Mel, saying, "I told you this is what happens when you wander away. Um, look okay. at the trouble you're getting me. I'm I'm gonna right. pull focus to myself and okay. be the problem." So you you pull focus to yourself, and these two guys like start causing like Mel. These guys seem like really focused on trying to keep Dingo like there. Uh, you mm -hmm. don't really notice. You see that you're kind of like you're you're clearly like you know uh, like. Cardiovascular activities up and all this stuff. I don't know if you're hyperventilating or you're like crying or anything like that. But like, I'm a bat. I'm like I was just about to say Mel is about to cry. <laughs> okay. Regardless of what they, they definitely are paying more attention to him than, than you. Uh, yeah. What do you want to What do you want to do? Uh, you could try to beeline it out of there. You could like play up to this guy's an asshole. And you I was gonna more. say, can I can I like try to ask them to help me? Like you okay. know, is, is, yeah. is there a way I can play you it can up? Ask where them, yeah, like, can them. you please? Like oh, I need to get away. From, I need to get away. From all right, make a, Can you get me away from this guy? I'm going to let you make a deception check, and I'm going to give you an extra plus two on this because uh, you definitely have a circumstantial <clears throat> situation of actually being, <laughs> actually being aggravated. Uh, okay, so, yeah, this will be communication. So an extra plus two, so you have a plus four to this. Uh, okay. as you, or actually, actually, plus six. I'll let you use expression on this. Okay, that's not too bad. Sixteen. Sixteen, okay. They go, three, three on the drum. They right? go, yeah. They go, hey, yeah, get out of here. Hey, buddy, you need to fucking settle down on this shit. Even if... You're, you know, like, and they're like, they're kind of like cornering I'm gonna run off crying. And kind of put, they kind of like push you back a little bit. Mel gets away though. Okay. Blow it out your ass. I'm gonna let them beat the fuck out of me. I'm not gonna fight them, but I'm not they gonna stop. Oh you up, but they kind of restrain you, and uh, eventually, um, uh, Carmen, uh, what do you, uh, what do you want to, how do you want to end this encounter with this guy? You heard everyone kind of got away. Like, uh, you think everyone got away. You don't hear any more noises coming from the other room, but what do you want to do? And you can hear some noise. You hear yelling coming from outside the the, the room, actually. And now um, Derek's like, "What the fuck's going on out there?" Uh, so are we are we like wrapped up in the shower? If you, uh, I, I mean, you're in, in charge, uh, setting the pace. So uh, <laughs> you say you you tell me. <laughs> okay, I mean, and so enough, every like, so Mel is is gone. Like everybody's gone. gone. Yeah, and Derek's like now he's actually actually trying. To, he's like, look, I got. He's like, I gotta take care of this real quick. Who the fuck's out there? He's like, well, it sounds like they're my guys. And he like puts his pants on. He's got his shirt off and everything. He comes out. He comes out of the hallway. He sees Dingo and the two guys, and he goes, "What the fuck is going on out here?" And the two guys are like, "Sir, we we've been we've been counting this man. We think he might be uh, spying on us or trying to like uh, get to you." And he's like, "Jesus Christ! You think everyone's trying to get to me?" He's like, "I can't even fucking have a night to myself here." And like it's weird. The thing about it, you hear him, Carmen. He's becoming very dominant with his employees. Mm -hmm. He's got that weird dynamic going on. Mm -hmm. um, he, need, he he needs his Martian mommy sometimes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, was that, what was that movie? Uh, yeah, he doesn't. Uh, yeah, what was that movie? Mars needs moms. Yeah, remember that movie? Okay, no one. Anyway, it's the kids movie. Sadly, no. Um, so I'm assuming that I'm clothed. That I'm not just standing. You here you can be. You can start putting your clothes on if you want to. Yeah. Okay, I my clothes are on. You come um, the hallway and he's there. He's like, he's like, I'm trying to have a fucking nice night to myself, and you and you animals can't fucking leave. Go, who the fuck is this asshole? He points to, to Dingo. He, he, the, he says, "Who the fuck is this asshole?" Yeah, this is Derek, the guy in charge, the guy you've been you've been trying to tell. 
I don't know this. I don't know this dude. You seem. <laughs> I have no fucking business here, and your employees are are are, are shaking me down when I'm trying to beat my girlfriend. <laughs> oh, no. Jesus. Okay. So he goes. Well, the like uh, like he looks at you and he's like, he's like, fuck it. He's like, yeah. He's like, do me a favor. He looks at the two guys. He's like, do me a favor. Take this trash out. And the point to you, uh, uh, as you as you kind of exit Carmen, he kind of comes over. He kind of comes over. He says, "Look, I'm I'm sorry about this. Uh, how long are you on station for?" Um, you know, um, this is actually my last night here, and um, it seems well, that well, you look. are dealing with a lot right now. <laughs> um, and so this I'm kind of, lot. you know, <laughs> I I had fun. That was good. That was very adequate. Um, <laughs> Oh no! Keep the dom up. Keep it up. Keep that energy. Oh, ride March and mommy energy. I love it. Yeah, this was very adequate. Um, you know, I, I, I think that that was uh good enough. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, you know, go uh, take care of some things, and we'll catch up later. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. And he like he like flashes you over his like contact information. He goes, yeah, yeah. Um, well, hopefully we'll we'll meet again. And he looks to like he looks to Dingo, and he's gonna. Uh, he as the two guys he goes he kind of nudges the two guys. They hold you up, and uh, Dingo he slugs you in the stomach. Great, and I and I, and I, I and I I looked at the security guards and say, yeah, you do a good yeah, you're real interested in his sex life. I bet you I bet you suck dick better than you secure people. <laughs> One of them takes out the Actually, actually pause, pause. I'm okay. sorry. I'm having a lot of fun. I I on a PG moment, I'm sorry if I'm if I'm No, you, uh, you can say that show here. I mean, if, you're, if you want to say it, you want you want to throw it. I mean, one of them probably I mean, would take one of them would actually be like, you know, yeah, not Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, you know, it's yeah, it's, it's a weird but but yeah, you can give them shit. You can you can question their sexuality, their prowess, whatever it is. Call them a limit. Well, just on shit. a on a content warning, yeah, I just yeah, want to so, yeah, make you, everyone you feel safe. You belittle them and they kind of like fuck with you while like in Holson Mel, you hear like Dingo getting beat up on the way. Out. You can hear him getting slugged and him yelling at shit. Um, you but get he's out getting there. paid for. I'm going on. <laughs> and he knows what he signed up for. You didn't, and you got got away scot free. Speaking of scot free, Mark, you see uh, Mel come out. Uh, very uh, clear, clearly, visibly uh, uh, distraught. But um, uh, you guys have the data pad. You guys have the setup. You guys have what you need here. Uh, we're gonna take our second break, second and final break here, and come back to this in about 15 minutes and close out this adventure that we're having a lot of fun of it. Uh, this was getting this was getting uh, well, well out of hand uh, on so <laughs> many fronts, people. I, I really appreciate you guys. <laughs> You guys are doing uh, a lot here. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I hope, I I uh, I know that. I just want to say before we before we go to break, uh, Isabel, you were mentioning that you were kind of like nervous about playing a game and fucking killing it. Yeah, uh, we're. I'm we're doing very... something to it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we're gonna go ahead and uh, be right back in about 15 minutes with a quick break here uh, and close out this adventure. Uh, everybody, there's still time to donate. We're up to 295. Aim for a thousand a day, uh, love, but I'm good with whatever we get. Whatever we get is good to get. Uh, if anyone else wants to contribute to the, the thing, um, Isabel needs fortune. That's what it comes down. But people Mel, redeem, needs, Mel needs fortune. Mel needs fortune. Everyone needs fortune because they splute on the counter. It's a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Shrimp Squatch, thank you. Squatch, thank you so much for everybody for supporting and hanging out in the chat. KP, thank you for hanging out in the chat. I love, I love when my players get to chat with everybody. Uh, but we're going to be back here in about uh, 15 minutes, okay? All right, we'll see you in a few. All right, we'll be back in a bit. All right, we're back for, our, for the finale here. Um, you get the data pad. You get you go through the information here. Uh, Mel and Mar pour over it. None the wiser, Derek. He's little, you know, little little hole in his heart. Uh, where we're a little little uh, carbon shaped hole in his heart. Uh, and um, but he'll get over it, right? But he's in the past. Look at the data pad. You find there's several. Inf there's some information here and some, some coordinates of like different labs and everything, like connections. And uh, Derek wasn't the best at keeping his, his tracks covered up, but um, you uh, you've essentially you know through your contacts uh, in the union here. Uh, you know, uh, oh god, sorry, uh, Srijan, Srijan, and uh, you managed to actually like, get a sh uh, get a ship to use for a little bit of time. You can borrow off Eros for a while. Someone else, one of your buddies is gonna come here and hang out for a little bit. He's like, I take the ship out for a spin, just bring it back in one piece, right? It's not a combat ship, it doesn't have combat capabilities. 
It's a light freighter. Uh, it has like one PDC on it just for rock busting. It doesn't have like a full network. Um, it's not going to survive combat with a Martian frigate or something, but um, it'll, uh, it'll 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 get you from A to B. Um, you got a pilot, uh, and you got Marv and uh, Mel going through this data. Uh, the data pulls up a uh, an interesting uh, place, one a position that's actually not too far off from where you guys are, um, and it is a uh, an uh, an abandoned what but what looks to be like an abandoned asteroid. Um, it looks like they're running like, you're guessing that's where uh, Pope Sanchez might be running their main uh, lab experiments. You can see there's numerous like occurrences of where uh, Gunhilder, Gunhilder like had gone there and talked about going there. Uh, and they were like moving like a large cargo ship into like match, you know, uh, link up with the asteroid and kind of keep, not orbit, but like um, use its dock to like dock with the, with the asteroid to kind of go with it. Um, they're using the, the, and it seems like they're using this like, uh, Large, like this freight ship with the asteroid is kind of like a quasi base. Um, you're, and based on the readings, Marv, you think that the the old asteroid had like an abandoned fusion reactor they could repurpose to use to like for all this stuff. So they don't have to keep on this floating around space. Um, but the ship's running dark, and uh, is what your best guess is. And you have an asteroid name. Uh, I will give you. You guys know that. You guys know the name of the asteroid. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's a, probably helpful. It's a five three two uh, Herculina. And it looks like an old abandoned, like they mined it, and then whoever was mining it left. Um, but it's been it's been abandoned for like sixty years, fifty years, something like that. No one's mining it anymore. But it looks like a uh, Pope seems to have found a use for it. at least park a ship there. Um, you guys are flying. Spent about a week flying off, or about like half a week, three four days getting out there through the belt. Uh, pretty easy to do here, and uh, start on the approach here. Uh, you guys gonna have a lot of time to gather intelligence on this place. Uh, honestly, what it's gonna look like when you get there, you're not sure. But aside from knowing there was a former mining colony, that's pretty much it. Uh, the freighter is pretty big. It's supposed to be docked there, um, but you don't have a name for the freighter or anything like that. Yes, please. Um, would I happen to have any contacts at this mining facility? The mining facility has been abandoned. The mining operation has been abandoned for six years before you were oh, born. Okay. So it's it's like it's in a it's in a there's a lot of bases where they went. Operated, mined it, then just left the stuff and went on the next one. Uh, so this is one of those. But there would be facilities there, like you could have like people live there. Uh, it'd be kind of like if you just bring your fusion reactor, plug and play it, and you could turn the station back on type stuff. Anyone else? Because it's a good question, though. All right. You uh, you guys start making your approach. Um, the sensors. Uh, who wants to run sensors on this? Who wants to be the? Uh, who wants to run sensors for the ship? Uh, that's uh, what's the best check? skill for that? Technology. Yeah, I can do that. Right. That's I, I. In the future, I'm very good at that in a certain uh, uh, mission, so I might as well do it now and practice yeah, the cut, skill. Yeah, cut your teeth on it, right? Okay, right, yeah. so you, you start, um, you head out and you start checking it out, and you give me a technology test here, Marvin. See what you do as you kind of find out about this uh, asteroid. You guys kind of scan it initially. Uh, yeah, that is, uh, 10, 16, uh, total. Good, good. Um, you, you guys pick it up, take an image of this thing, uh, track it. You find the freighter there is, it is there. It's large. It's almost the size. It's, it's pretty good size. It's not bigger than the asteroid, but it's, it's pretty damn, pretty big chunk. And it looks like what they've done is they've actually like parked in the freighter, the freighter and also like umbilical to the other. There's a second docking bay there as well. And you get kind of an idea that they this thing is docked to be there for a long time. They might be using it as like a mobile lab or something, but it, it's there. In addition, you don't see any like security, like external security on, on it. Like there's no like this freighter doesn't have torpedoes, doesn't have it has like a like a, a rock breaker cannon, but it doesn't have like combat capabilities. They would um so you guys aren't looking for like a space firefight if that's what you're worried about. Um, so that's a relief. Um but uh yeah, uh, you guys are on a trajectory there. Uh, and such like that too. I'm trying to think of anything else about it. Um, you do know there, there would probably be other mining operate. The mining operations would have holes in the surface of the asteroid, so it wouldn't just be like you can come into the docks. There might be other ways in, but that involves uh, spacewalking or doing a little like, little spacewalk um, and everything. So, and the, the the ship you're on has vac suits. You guys have whatever weapons you had on, on Heroes. Uh, the ship did not bring any weapons with them. This is just a little small freighter, pretty boring. Got tools, machine shop of sorts, but that's about it. So. And we think this is somewhere we can go to upload the 
the, the shard. Yeah, based on the cargo manifest you kind of got off of Derek, it seems like they've been bringing like materials here to set up a lab. And this would be a, a place where the research is definitely going to either start happening, but it would be a, a privileged location of the network that would have raised up stuff. So if you could plug it into the network, you'd probably be good, either on the ship or inside the station somewhere. So, how do you guys want to approach this? Um, we have a pilot, which is our, our good friend Carmen here. Um, oh, wait. Oh. Oh, you got the space helmet on? Okay. Yeah. Hel helmet's on. <laughs> here we go. Hell yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so, helmets are a great way to make sure your hair doesn't get wet. Um, all right. Sorry. But uh, what do you uh, what do you uh, what do you want to do here as you approach? How do you want to approach it? Like direct line as you just like fly straight at it, try to like land on the surface. Uh, you can talk to the crew about this. Um, uh, could we do like a fly around just to, or have we seen everything that we need to see? Um, you guys can do a fly around. That would give you some more angles on the, on the location. Just to see um, if there's anything else. There, it, yeah. Is there a scan we can do? Yeah, you guys do some more scans. Uh, a little more, take a little more time with it. Uh, you're pushing the limits of your time frame here, though. But okay. you take a look around. The back side of it is blank. There is nothing back there. Uh, you think you could you could land uh, the ships like in the shadow of the freighter? Uh, you're not reading any like um, if if they have the only sensors that are active on the place are actually on the freighter. It looks like the station itself is like dead. Like it's 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 not active. They're not running their antenna on the station or on the asteroid yet. If they're running everything off of the freighter's docked with it. So like that side's like. I mean, if you want to if you want to fly up uh, in the shadow of, of this asteroid, that's actually a pretty good move. Um, well, we're gonna have to go in, so I take that precaution. But we might as well just, you know, fall into whatever trap mm. this is. So let's I, I let's say we just make our approach. Yeah, and, the, and it's a big asteroid. Like when I say it's big, it's like 167 uh, kilometers in diameter. It's pretty good size. It's one of the bigger asteroids mm. in our system, so it's 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 not hard to hide behind it. <laughs> well. Than, you know, I'm I'm no tactical mastermind, but uh, I feel like if we can sneak in and sneak out, that's better than uh, going in uh, and raising suspicions. Uh, yeah, I, I'm I good with agree. being decked one time. I, I ain't looking for another. <laughs> well, I think it's healed up nicely. You know, you got a little bruise in there still, but it's not too bad. Now I'm just gonna say that auto dock bill is gonna go on the tab. I point right. to go. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a we have a donation that did. Where did you get this? Uh, so we got a special item here. Uh, ooh, I'm gonna roll to see who gets to determine the item. Josh, you guys found something special on the freight ship. What is it? Uh, on the say, freight don't ship. Don't say Martian power armor. Well, <laughs> uh, I, sure, sure, of course not. Um, mate, how about it? It's something. Um, let's say, uh, man, what would be so useful here? Uh, I, I think um, it, it is uh, something that we could use to, uh, like, uh, breach the, um, the, side of the uh, ship or station, or? breach the, the station, station uh, and get in. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be yeah, you find like a, you find a bunch of like, um, you find a bunch of mining charges. Actually, there's a whole there's a whole like oh. box of mining charges. Um, you can use them to break through a ship, although that will be. <clears throat> Not not uh, not good for anyone inside the not ship. Quiet. Not quiet. Like an art yeah. welder or something. Uh, but yeah, no, it's actually demolition charges, like rock breaker stuff. This is standard stuff you see at the belters. Um, a few of you know how to handle this. Uh, the mer the I uh, probably. Um, I'd also uh, be a good distraction if we need a distraction. Or worst case scenario, else. just yeah, just throw them out and say, "Hey, rocks blew up. Oh well, that's what happens. They just do that." Uh, but yeah, you guys have some. You guys have some cool stuff like that. Very cool. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, you have, you have a whole set of uh, breaching charges, or not breaching, demo charges. These are not like shape charges. They're meant for like blowing open rocks and rock breaking. All right. Um, give yeah, me um, everything can be a weapon. This is true. And you, you guys do find, I mean, like you guys find stuff on the weapons. Uh, I think I think Dingo has a pistol. And I think, uh, I can't remember who else has guns on here, but you'll have, have your, a pistol. You have a pistol? Okay, a few of you are armed. All right, so at least two of you are armed. Uh, you guys have noticed that um, Carmen seems to have a, a favorite weapon, which seems to be a sledgehammer. Um, Holy crap. <laughs> she likes smashing. Like wow. Yeah, we call it, they call, in the future, they call them Beat Sticks 9000. Uh, <laughs> I do have a stun gun. That's my a, a stun gun answers a lot of questions without permanent damage. I'll say that. Uh, <laughs> but um, 
Okay, so you guys approach the thing. Uh, Carmen, give me a piloting test to roll uh, the 3d6 and add, uh, add your 4 to it as you kind of try to land the ship here. 13. 13? Okay. And by the way, everybody got, has all their fortune back. You guys are back at 100% fortune for the oh, rest. Oh, for, great. Okay. Yeah, as you, it, that's the beauty of this game is as you travel, because of the week-long travel, your fortune comes back. Um, Amazing. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm going to need you to spend three fortune on that, though. I'm sorry. You'll never get full fortune, Isabel. Uh, okay. <laughs> but um, you I've three, just accepted it. Yeah, you just have to yeah, just get the result here. Um, but you do manage to land the ship uh, in the shadow of uh, here. Um, do you want to have it float away from the asteroid, kind of like in a stable, kind of like not orbit, but like a stable kind of position? It's, it's really low gravity. Or mm -hmm. uh, and you got the ship self-correct. Or you can actually have it land on the asteroid. I don't want it to fully land. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, you guys get uh, Dingo. They're talking about doing an EVA action here, uh, moving stuff like that. Uh, this is something that you don't do because of your uh, implants you can't see like yeah you, 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 i am not good in i'm bl i'm totally blind in yeah. space my my sonar shit doesn't work <laughs> yeah, there so work. so i i'm i'm happy to give you moral support from here but i i have full well, there, hmm? uh, yeah let me go ahead and i'm gonna have marv you you're you know like an astrodynamics too both of you i mean there are cargo uh containers on the ship you could just kind of like you know ship dingo over <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, because because I have a gun or something. Yeah, if it's worth it to have me there in person, I'll. You guys can mail me to the to the freighter. You can put me in a box. Well, there, yeah, the idea would be that you kind of land the uh, the cargo container up against the place, let it pressurize. But the beauty of that too is it lets you bring a lot of gear with you. Like you could put a lot of gear in the cargo container. Um, so you can have your yeah, sure. charges, all that stuff. Right, and this will also be a useful seed for an idea that Mel will have in ten years' time to yes, do this true, with, yeah. with other people. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the the, Mel, the Holson the Holson project, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you you guys uh, you rig this thing, but it's a pretty easy job. And there's actually like they're not like full on docking bays, but they're more of like cargo supply bays. Um, this side, some of these mine shafts actually seem like they're still pressurized. Well, that's uh, that's encouraging. That means that we can uh, get in there uh, and and maybe not need vac suits once we uh, get inside the, the the station. Let me ask this question. I who, wouldn't take them off too quick, but who would want to? Is there anyone that wants to externally guide this thing? Either uh, like that is like be on the outside in a vac suit doing the actual EVA action uh, to make mm. sure in case of, make sure everything is like sealed up and everything. Uh, this uh, is this. Considering my background as as originally starting from a. You know, mm -hmm. A dock worker and, and a. Oh, yeah. Would okay. that be helpful in this? Situation? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, so, Sur Surgeon, uh, you go ahead and you set up uh, to be on the thing. You shoot out the cargo container. It docks. It kind of. It, it, you have to kind of correct it a little bit here. Um, uh, we have everyone's. In, I'm assuming everyone's inside the cargo container besides uh, our Martian friend here. Um, you guys pilot it in. It locks up. It seals up. No problem. Um, you guys have kind of a makeshift airlock on the back of it. Uh, it's not great. You're going to lose air as it comes out, but you guys do manage to like link up with this with these mining tunnels. Okay. So here's my question. What's everyone carrying into it? Who wants to carry the demo charges or the, yeah, the mining charges? And do you have any other gear with you? I heard I know that like uh, one of you has a toolkit, some of you have weapons. What would be what would you want to bring in on your little, I don't know, station assault? <laughs> I, I've again. got my. Um, you are. I'm going to be outside in the, in the, in space, observing from an external. No, you can. They, there's a makeshift kind of like really shitty airlock that doesn't really. Yeah. It doesn't, it's not the kind of airlock that cycles. Uh, it, you're going to lose air every time you blow it open, but you're guessing there's enough air in there to blow it open a few, like quite a few times. It also makes it, if you guys do need to leave quickly, you can just open it and everybody's just shot out of the space. Um, uh -huh. So, uh, but yeah, uh, that would be the way to weigh in basically. Okay. For you. Yeah. All right. So, um, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I'm probably going to bring my stun gun in. That stun gun's and, good? Yeah, um, yeah, and if there's enough charges to go around, I'll take one of those. Oh, yeah. If, yeah, you, you yeah. bring in a nice satchel of them. There's a pretty good amount of them. You've worked with these before. You're not great at them. Uh, yeah. Like, you, yeah, you're, you might be a little reckless with them, but you can you know how to set them and everything too readily enough, yeah, easily enough. Um, all right, who else, anyone else have anything else they want to bring this not on their character sheet? 
And sorry if I feel like I'm rushing here, but I'm trying to like, I want to get through this part. This no, I no, I bring bring my gun and my plastic rounds, my bring my double plastic yeah. rounds. Perfect. Yeah. And my so is the shard, right? Uh, I have the shard, and I figure you still have the uh, data pad, and that I way... I have the data pad, yeah. <laughs> there, there, there's the two of us, and I'll say, it's in this pocket on my coat, and that way, if something happens <laughs> to me, you know where it is, and yeah. if something happens to you, we know where right. the data pad is, and we got a little, little uh, you know, backup plan there. I should mm-hmm. mention, the only person in the party, too, that has actual armor is Carmen. Carmen actually has, like, security armor kind of thing. It's, like, extra pads, like, chest pad, uh, knee, like, uh, thigh pads, so... Uh, that's your your heavy, if you will. Um, mm-hmm. so. All right. The mine, op- the, the mine opens up. It's very low gravity. You guys can kind of bounce around here. There is this now. This place is spun up to a degree, but it's not. It was an early. Uh, it was one of Tycho's like demo like things. No pun intended with the charges, but like it was one of their demos. To see, if they can even start just spinning the asteroid long enough to get gravity. It's light. Um, it's honestly not much more than the actual like asteroid's gravity, but it, it is something. Uh, to affect it. So you guys can kind of like bounce. It's kind of like being on the, not even like worse than the moon, like where you kind of bounce on it. It's it's like much lighter than that, but you guys can certainly move around. Uh, there is, a, long story short, there is an orientation. If you drop something, it will fall eventually. <laughs> Mel has taken like all of the heartburn medication okay. that she brought with her. All right. Um, and all of you guys, uh, you might have your helmet with you. You might have it off. A dingo has his off for sure, I guess, because uh, it's very confining. Uh, but yeah, you guys go ahead and start marching on. Who wants to be in the front of the party? Yes, we are doing a dungeon now. Uh, 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 who wants to be in the front of, of this group? We put the armor at the front? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say probably, probably me. Tip of the spear. Armin, you have uh, <laughs> led us here so far. Uh, why don't you, uh, you know, continue to uh, uh, okay. be the leader that you are? Yeah. Tip of the spear, as they say. Um, Carmen, you start you start marching through here. Uh, is there anything you want to do specifically as you kind of move through the tunnels here? Uh, do we have light? Can we see? Yeah, Let's... you guys have like either glow sticks or uh, you can have lights on your um, on your suits. Most suits have lights built into the shoulders, um, headlamp, whatever whatever works for you. Flashlight, you really want. The lights that shine straight onto your face inside yes. the expanse helmets. Yes, they're Got so it. functional. Okay. Yes. Okay. The one, the, and, one unreal, the one really unrealistic thing they did, yeah. I get. And so, remind me, we're specifically trying to go to. So the thought is that the mine. So these mines were the original, like when they first like broke into the asteroid and mined it. But then there's some sort of like station built into it, and you think that the mines, the mines supposedly go into the back of the station where they would actually do the processing of the ore and everything. It's a lot easier okay. to process on the station than it is to like ship it out. Okay. But yeah, you think it might link up to the back of the station somehow or some sort of processing facility in here. Okay. And is this area, is it, are there, is there any kind of a, like camera, any, or is this completely Take, give, me a, give me a scene test, uh, roll uh, or searching your choice. Uh, this will just be perception for you, roll perception. Uh, eight. eight. Actually, you don't see anything, anything like cameras. But based on how like dusty it is in here and everything, and like what these guys are doing, it seems like they're trying to reactivate the station. There probably is nothing in here this far. They're probably more concerned of turning the power on before they start installing cameras. Um, okay. They're they're getting um, and then like Dingo would know this for sure. They're doing security through just being obscure as hell, just being on a nowhere rock. It's like where no one's gonna look. You know, space is a big place. Let's throw our trash there. Uh, it's, yeah, um, I mean, I don't think we're gonna. F- I don't think there's a ton of recon to do. I think we should go to the door and, yeah. and you know. Yeah, yeah the, the sooner we're in and out, the sooner our job is done, and uh, you know we can go get our our payday. All right, I'm throwing uh, um, region in the second place because I feel like you'd be you'd be falling up. Yeah, second. Uh, yeah, I'd be like, what do you want to look for? Anything? Okay. Do you have anything you want to like? You want to do a check or anything for stuff that you're looking for or curious about? Or I, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm an, I'm a words guy, right? I, I'm, I'm <laughs> swayed people. I talk to people. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm upper management. <laughs> Punch people. That's true. But, well, clearly that went that was a so... managerial decision. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I was so I think I'm just gonna like 
um, you know, Carmen's the muscle. Okay. Uh, just uh, you know, support her right. as, as right. I can. Um, yeah. You I think... don't you don't see much then uh, as you as you move through. Uh, it's pretty pretty mundane. Uh, yeah. Anyone else like Dingo, Marv, or uh, Mel? Uh, I'm I'm willing to be in the front um, uh, or, or towards the front. Um, uh, you know, uh, right. I, I think uh, it probably mm-hmm. makes sense to keep the uh, the shard and the uh, you tablet kind of in the middle of the group and yeah, not in you, the way yeah. front or way back. You notice that like these tunnels are. I mean, this place has been stripped. They they went through and they mined the shells place. Uh, you can see where like, the smaller bores go in, but there's this main tunnel that goes through things like. And you can tell there's tra- there was like tracks here. Like they actually had like machines they were moving up and down the tunnels to like bring the ore through and everything so like following those tracks as an engineer you're like that's the way to go they you guys do the same shit on mars like it's not an uncommon yeah. practice um so yeah, yeah. You're, you're you're going the right direction yeah dingo yeah as, as soon as i can get out of my crate i'll i'll take up the rear because i'm okay. armed and i'll um yeah I, I assume we're trying to find you said the power's out i guess we're just trying to find a terminal where we can connect yeah, to the no, network and there's not really any tech power. here there's like some old wires going through where they probably ran power long ago but you're trying to get to the back of this place. But Dingo, go ahead and give me um, yeah, give me a give me a hearing test here as you kind of look around, uh, look around this place and kind of see if you can find anything weird out, out of the position. And what do I add from my hearing? Uh, just hearing plus five. five. Yeah. yeah. So thirteen. Okay. Um, your echo reload, your kind of echo stuff kind of picks. It works really well in these tunnels, and you pick up that there's like. Uh, there's these wires that kind of run through, and you can see that certain ones are branching out others. They get thicker as you're going. You're guessing the thicker ones go towards where their power source would be. So you can guide the crew really easy that way. Okay. Uh, Mel, you got anything you want to do? No, I'm just ready well, to get right. there. I'm like, yeah. <clears throat> you guys eventually come into this very this central location. It kind of reminds you of the shape on Eros of the Casino but it's like all bare rock. And you can see where they were mining stuff and, and everything was broken up. But you can see clearly there's an elevator uh, set up here. There's like a mining elevator um, where you would bring stuff up and down in through the station. You're guessing that's the that's the primary way to get to where the central locations are. And as far as you guys see, there, uh, Dingo, your sensors are, are going here. You're not seeing any like cameras. You're not seeing any trip wires. This is the place is abandoned. It is dusty. Yeah. Um, as you guys take footsteps, you can see like the stuff's moving around um, in the atmosphere of everything. Like the the Coriolis kind of throws it to the one side, but like it's really um, it's boring. So I so it looks like maybe this isn't a place we can upload our we can connect to to Pope's network or well, the, is well, there anything? Sorry, go on. I was like, well, uh, we're here to backdoor into the ship, the the mobile lab. Um, if we connect to the, you know, docking uh, sections on the ship, they know we're there. But if we can sneak in the back door, so to speak, um, they won't realize we're here until we're already gone. Great. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm trying to pick up on what John's putting so, down so here. I don't. I don't think there's any traps. I think we should just yeah. go. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah we should just go. I was trying to get paranoid. Uh, Real quick, yes, can I have my uh, pistol drawn? Sure. At this point, okay. Yeah, not a problem. Um, I think one thing I do want to ask, uh, maybe I can help in this way, is that um, would I have a general understanding? Not not saying about specifically this location, but overall, like a similar type of layout uh, of like, hey, I think generally this is where this I would mean, be. So I, I feel like this is gonna this is gonna make Jesse smile, but all asteroids are unique. <laughs> and but the but the general way that they get mined is not. Yeah, you're right. going the right. Way. Like this is okay. going to go okay. in the center of the station. You Let's know. Go. Yeah. Now it's yeah. getting antsy. Oh god. Um, you come up, you come up to the elevator and the elevator is powered down. Now, hmm. um, I mean, these, you might be able to jerry rig it to power it up. You might be able to like uh, there might be a backup battery. Uh, who wants to take a shot at powering up the uh, elevator? Uh, I'm willing right. to do that. I know a thing or two about uh, you know, what makes power happen. <laughs> uh, apparently, apparently, uh, apparently uh, so does Carmen. Um, all right, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I remember earlier. I'm sorry. That was, I'm sorry. That was powerful. But I really appreciated it. Um, but uh, yeah, you you come up to the, you come up to it and you kind of like poke around it. This thing's been dead for a long time. It's been disconnected. Uh, Marv, give me an engineering test. Yeah, sure thing. We haven't done. We probably engineered one. We haven't asked him to do 
You're just asking to go and steal stuff. Uh, <laughs> hey, I don't, I don't mind uh, uh, just doing doing other tasks. All right, that is uh, eighteen. Very nice, sir. Um, uh, and uh, I, I will note that um, I got double sixes. Oh. Uh, with uh, one of those sixes being Perfect. on my stunt die. And so yeah. uh, what I'd like to use is maybe a uh, jury rig or high-tech hustle or you know, maybe both since I've got enough stunt points. You, you find... You, you find speed this up. Yeah, so you, you find that, like, the you find the backup batteries for the... the emergency batteries for the, the elevator. It'll work so problem. You actually find, like, their stock of any left of extra batteries. So if you need to power up par other parts of the station, you can bring one of these, like, portal... It's like a basically a car battery, you kind of bring it with you and just like put it down, plug it in, power the part, unplug it, pick it up and move it on. So you now have a, a, a power source as well. Yeah, that's going in my gear. Okay. And it, it's, it's heavy. I want to be clear. It's not like, um, this isn't something you just put in your pocket. <laughs> it's not that part of the future. Um, I, 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 I'll find a way to bring okay. it. All right. Wear like a necklace, car battery <laughs> necklace. All right. But yeah, you, the, the elevator activates and you guys get on it, goes up, and it comes, there's several levels. Uh, there's different levels of mining, but one of them is listed as like main station and like barracks and like meth hall. It seems like that's where people would be more than likely. So. Well, I think that's where we should go. Uh, any any uh, objections before I push the button? Go, go, go. No, do it. Let's do it, let's do it. Um, let's click. You, going up it's super loud uh you can hear it creaking tons of this fine dust is all getting into it and everything um you know you get to the top of it uh and uh this is kind of the point where like you're a good point man on this because you can kind of quote, quote unquote hear through walls if you will do you want to like take a shot and like try to like see if you're on the other side of the door 100 percent. this is a, this is a uh, touch test for you touch test all right that's five, five, yeah. five eight nine fourteen the only thing you can really feel for the door is like a, a really light vibration, which you think might be like the freighter hooked up to the to the station. But like, no one's immediately on the other side of this. You don't feel anyone. You don't feel like any like ones walking around. They would probably be wearing mag boots too, so like it would be kind of loud if they are if they are stopping around. But okay. no, no like hums. It sounds pretty quiet on the other side. Then then let's go. Let's open this door. Door opens up. Dust comes off of it. You can see that this opens up into a hallway. Um, you can see that the hallway off the right, like there's like old labels. They're they're pretty dusty. You might have to like brush them off, but you can see there's like several rooms up ahead. There's like a room off the right, two rooms off the left, and the hallway goes for a while. And this is all like not like in the mining shaft. This is like refined actual like station material. You're in the station proper. And you can also hear okay. the and the elevator I should mention acts as an airlock. Now, I'm I'm sorry to be redundant. We are looking for a, a place to remotely access this this lab, right. yeah, okay. like consoles and stuff, consoles, right. computers, right. lab, something like that. Yeah. Um, well, let's just systematically start sweeping rooms for anything that will do what we need. The the closest the, the first up is the closest door is on the right. There's one not too far from the left. There's no lights in here as you kind of move. There's kind of no lights in here uh, right now. Um, you you start advancing. First door comes up. Uh, it's powered down. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to take a shot at this here. Uh, Mark. Yeah, okay. sure. Plug I'll uh, take the battery, plug it in, uh, hit a couple up. buttons. Okay. Um, you, you can also uh, brush the dust off the sign if you want to see what the room is. The rooms are labeled. Oh, yeah, sure. What, yeah. What's, it, what's it called? Uh, it says reactor room. Ooh. So uh, if we want to power the whole station, uh, we could do this. Uh, that seems noisy. It does seem noisy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if they don't have it running, I don't think turning it on is going to help us significantly. Uh, well, uh, g g give me a second here, John, actually, as I think about this, right? As I think about, okay. you know, what I know that uh, a ship connected to a station uh, via, you know, umbilical cord is going to do here. Uh, is there some kind of transfer of data associated with that? They or can. Uh, they, they could, or they could even try... Uh, starting this, like, kind of, like, kickstart, like, you're jump-starting the station with, with the thing, or use the, the fusion reactor on board to power the station. But they're not powering this part of it. And not to mention, the door has been, like, closed for a while. Like, it doesn't look like it's been open recently at all. 
Um, yeah, well, so, if they haven't been through here, there's probably nothing terminal-wise that's going to connect up there, then, right? Well, that's mm -hmm. what I was going to say. Would we know if we find a terminal and we have this groovy ba mobile battery pack, do we think we could turn on just a terminal and Possibly, yeah. get a signal? Possibly, yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> sure. Uh, we, we could check the reactor room and see if there is a terminal in there, but uh, uh, I wouldn't want to turn the reactor on. Uh, not because I'm not interested, but because uh, I don't think that's <laughs> yeah. going to, you know, serve our purposes fingers, today. Like, oh. mm -hmm. I agree. Since we have a portable power source that we can use, it might it's probably better to just power something when we need it instead of turning on the entire like house. we take like 20 seconds and just check all the door labels? Yeah, so the, like the door across the way, near us. the door across the way is labeled like machine shop. Um, and <laughs> once again, it's all, it, but that one's interesting. Um, I'll say, uh, Surgeon, you, you see that like that door though has had activity. Like you can mm -hmm. see where the dust has been disturbed on the ground. People have gone in and out of that room. Can we find a map? Is there a map of this ship somewhere, like a, a directory? A directory. You, this would be you'd be able to find maybe you, you saw one on the um, on the elevator, a map of the station that was built into it, not a map of the ship. The ship's like just been added on recently. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you see that there's like up ahead is like kind of like a quote unquote like um, operations room? There's like a barracks, a mess hall, um, and then the docks are way up ahead at the very end of the station. I mean, comms will probably be on the bridge or something, right? Or right. If, you want, if, you want, uh, well, if you want to get on the ship, yeah. Okay. But the the operations room uh, might have uh, some kind of uh, you know uh, console that we could connect to. I think we can check these rooms, uh, but uh, just a quick you know thirty second peek around the room, and then probably there's not gonna if there isn't something we can use. Uh, um, you know, we so open it. doors until right. we find a terminal. <laughs> yeah. The future, I'm not throwing out the ones that got used the most, considering yeah. that that. I'm gonna, well, this one seems to be the one that everybody's going through, or most folks are going through. We can check that one first, then. Right. I don't mind. Right. So you open up the machine shop first, Marv. Open it up. Uh, the room isn't as dusty. It looks like they've actually started cleaning the room. And mm. what you see is not a machine shop to you. It seems like uh, there's, like, almost storage, but, like, it's this, what's being, like, there's a few things in here that look pretty fresh. Like, like, like the tarps aren't dirty. Like they've just been moved here or crates that have been moved here that aren't dirty. Sure. So this looks like storage, but, uh, you know, I'm looking, is there uh, something that is going to be connected to the ship's network here? Um, if the answer is no, I'm going to keep moving. You don't see any consoles built in, but uh, Mel, give me a quick, uh, I'll say Mel, you know this actually. You can tell that some of the labels on the crates like indicate that there's like tech gear inside, like computers and like analysis gear and like basically technology stuff to research with in here, but it looks like it's all packed up and crated up. It's not yeah, connected. Yeah, it's not connected to anything. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Someone got Guys, this is just tech gear. Let's keep going. All right. Yeah, okay. The fusion we'll, reactor we'll... room, you open up, it has not been touched. Uh, and you look at the core, the core is actually, there's no fusion core in it. <laughs> like, it's like been stripped out. Um, you're, but it looks like if you got a new core, you could start the station back up type thing. Sure. Well, uh, maybe another time. Uh, the next time we there, visit. Uh, there are consoles in there, I will say, but they look ancient. Like, they look like they're not, they're definitely not connected to that ship's network. <laughs> sure. Okay. All right. Yeah, well. Let's go. Right. Yeah. We'll keep moving then. Keep on moving. Um, as you guys kind of come up, you find um, there's like this kind of command. Uh, you kind of see that there's more, been more traffic through here. Uh, places are slowly being cleaned up. You can see like where they've been moving gear through on pallet jacks, kind of thing, mag jacks, um, and everything. You come up and see like uh, there's like an operations room. It's labeled like you know mining operations. None of this stuff's been relabeled. It all has the old label on it. Uh, what do you guys want to like? Um, that room looks like it's seen a lot more activity though. Okay. We should poke our heads in, right? Just to yeah. see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll give them in. All right, and there's actually a, there's, there's two rooms across from it. You open up operations. Uh, who's opening the door? Uh, well, probably. Is it powered on, or do I need to, the this battery to power it on? This door actually is powered, and you can see oh. they have they have like a looks like there's actually a battery like like outside. A, a cable's coming from this going down towards the docks. It looks like they're actually trying to do something in this room right now. Carmen, would you mind yeah. going in first? <laughs> I would like to go first. Right. Carmen, uh, the door uh, clicks open and breaches open. Inside the room, you can see that there's like, uh, you can see where they've, they've been stripping the room out of like old gear, like old panels and like old tech and everything. But there's actually been some new tech installed. 
Um, some of it looks operational. You can see it's being powered off of this power source they have in there. Um, but a lot of it's like not active. It's not really doing anything. It's just kind of sitting there like like blinking, going clicking, doing- uh, Does any of it serve our purposes? It might, if you want to open it up and try it out. Yeah. May as well take a look. <laughs> okay. Can I can I ask what what does the terminal that we're looking for is it just like a thing on the wall? Is it? It could be. It could be anything. That's kind so of so we problem. don't really know what it. Yeah. Who's gonna, what who's form gonna, it takes? We just you, need a some kind of computer that's connected to the network. Okay. Pretty much. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um. All right. So, yeah, Carmen, you go. Uh, who wants to take a look at the terminal? Actually. Me. Uh, all right. Give me a technology test as you kind of take a look at it. Is there Who's a way technology? I can assist? We'll, we'll, we'll check out. We'll see how Holton does the first, the first go. <laughs> okay. Uh, 12 plus whatever I add. Intelligence. What do I add for technology? Oh, um, 17. Oh, and I got two fives and a oh, two. Oh, great. So you pull the console and you look at it, and this thing has just been installed, and it hasn't even been activated yet. They haven't even, like, connected it to the network yet. But this is the kind of console that would be a main, like, stay thing in the future. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's like, but it's not connected yet. They're still the setting up. Yeah, they're still setting up the gear here and everything. Um, Does it look like there's enough around that I could connect it? You want to take a shot at it? Okay, I'll let you take a shot at it as you try to hack the system here. Um, give me a cryptography test. Can I test. support her? Uh, you, guys, I, you guys might want to keep a lookout. That might be a okay. good a good thing. So you guys kind of hang up by the door and kind of watch down the hallway. Uh, give me a cryptography test here, uh, Jesse. Okay, uh, 20. 20, okay. You start pulling it up and you start going through and like pulling up like the base levels here and start trying to check their stuff here. It looks like it connects to the ship, but it's not, it's not, hasn't been granted like the admin privileges it needs to be a, like a direct backbone yet. Um, okay. But based on what you're seeing though, it looks like they've activated further into the, like closer to the docks. They're kind of slowly building their way out from the docks and reactivating okay. the station uh, piece by piece. So you go up a little ways, you might get it. But you do get a readout that they have, um, they've reactivated like one of the barracks. And it seems like there's uh, people probably closer to the, like actually staying on the station now, slowly rebuilding it. Okay, so I relay to everybody, like the closer we get to the dock, the more people there are, but the more likely there are to be computers connected to the ship. Sure. How, what, what's our uh, time frame on uh, needing um, to have this, done because if it's not too urgent is there a way to use the shard to affect this terminal and then even just continue and that way uh you know worst case scenario oh, even if we get caught the network. when yeah. they connect it this will still uh you know the changes so will replicate it's a, anyways. it's a largely blank terminal it's just kind of barely connected to the network and barely been turned on so it doesn't like it has no like scientific like it's not part of the main network yet the sure. problem is they they would probably wonder why still this has the plan to their secret project on it. Um, sure. Okay. But yeah, it's it, the shard doesn't the shard needs like a little more access than this, or little, something more readily integrated. Um, sure. Dingo, you start getting noticed that like you can start feeling that people are active beyond this uh, towards what they've notified you as like the mess hall barracks area. Yeah, it's yeah. This sucks. We 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 clearly have to keep going, and we're going to start risking running into people. Um, but that's what we have to do. I mean, can I? Blah, 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 blah. So, there's there's so there. Go ahead. Yeah, you mm -hmm. uh, you and you only pick up a total of uh. You're kind of feeling out. It's not a lot of people. It's like maybe two or three in a very large area. You might be able to duck them, or you might be able to like, you know, uh, hit them over the head with something or you know, stun gun. And what we send the people with the guns to that end of sure. the corridor quietly as close to the where the people would be as possible okay. while we right. try and get into rooms closer right. to that. Okay, sure. Uh, <laughs> let me go get stealth check from uh, Marv, Dingo, and... I mean, you guys should agree if you like that plan. Yeah, I'm like just suggesting yes. it. And <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with that. I'll I'll pass the shard along to you so you have it. Uh, okay. and I'm going to keep will... going in. No, but you can stay with, with me and help me work stuff. You oh, need to open sure. doors for right. me with the battle. Oh, so sure, sure, sure. Dingo and Carmen going up front. Okay, uh, what did you guys get for stealth checks? Add your dexterity. Did I, did you, 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 you said I go to? You can go to, yeah, you got stun gun, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I got stun gun. All right, give me a dexterity check. <laughs> 16. 16 is good, all right. 14. 14, what did you get, KP? Oh, hold up, I'm still trying to, I, I changed the setting on this thing again. <laughs> okay. All right. I think you got two. You guys are successful. That Which is you, that is a nine plus yeah, stealth. Eight, most of you guys got yeah plus dexterity. You're good though. Um, okay. so you guys kind of get to the door here, and Dingo, you're listening to the door. And you can hear like people kind of moving around in there. 
Um, they're kind of talking a little bit here and there, but like it sounds kind of off to the left. Like there, are, and it sounds like a big room, like it's a big wide room, and then across the way would go to the docks. Uh, yeah, can I? Um, and this door right, is powered. This, this door is powered. I wonder if I, uh, this, this, I wonder if I could, if I could hack this place, if I could divert these people oh, yeah. somewhere. Yeah, yeah, like, like, there is. Send, can I send? So the, 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 Speak the, away with the charges and blow, make an explosion somewhere else well, away from these rooms. The station, the station, as the station has to has like safety measures. Um, there's actually like at each door the safety measure. You think you might be able to trigger like an alert in a room, like trigger a fire alarm in a bedroom or something? Exactly. Like I don't have to pretend to be anybody. I don't have to yeah. lie. Just have to, I just have to make a computer say there's a problem on a different end of the ship. Follow it, man. Computers are Let's great do. The, the, most beautiful, the most beautiful thing I ever learned about computers when I originally did computer science was this. You can lie to them mm -hmm. and they'll believe you. <laughs> then let's... That's why let's, AI is I so scary. No. I want, the computer to, I want the computer to say there's like a decompression or a fire okay. in a different room. Okay. Yeah. All right. So give me a... This will be a security test for you. So plus four on this. I might have a reroll. We have one reroll. Yes, if someone keeps on buying us rerolls because they're generous. Well, no, but like my, I think my burglary expertise. Oh yeah, your burglary. Yeah, me... I forgot. You had, I forgot your, your burglary. I forgot your, your burgle. Burglar. Burglar. Um, so what? What am I adding? Uh, plus four, sir. Uh, so that's a twelve. Should I reroll? I yeah, do the reroll here. Yeah, get the burglary chest. Yeah, and you might get another reroll. You might even... Pro That's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. Um, Sixteen. Oh, very good. All right. So you go through and you kind of you met this is an old security system. You cut your teeth on crap like this when you were a kid. You go and mess with it, and all of a sudden, like one of the bedrooms starts kind of alerting that like there's like a decompression, and mm -hmm. uh, you hear the two guys like kind of what the fuck and like they're shit, and you hear them like running towards the docks, like you can you and all of you guys can hear them like marching hard, like they're chugging their asses off. Away from us? Yeah, away from you. Yeah, the docks are on the other side from the mines. Yeah. yeah. Great. Wait. Let's let's be quickly. Let's be quick, guys. I don't know how you, long it's gonna last. You open up the room. Snap, snap. You open up the room, uh, Dingo, and it looks like a, a mess hall. Like this is where people would like eat. You can see there's barracks off to the left and right. The docks are straight ahead with like a big old like you know port and everything. There's like gear strewn about. They're getting ready to do something here. Um, can I lock the door that goes to the docks? Uh, I'll let you. I'll let you try that here in a moment. I'll let you try to override okay. it for a bit. Um, but you guys can see there's like there's like terminal set up, like little like like for lack of a better term, like like temporary laptop type situations here where people have kind of mm -hmm. computer setups like to try to like, reprogram and coordinate this effort to put the station back online. Mm -hmm. What do you guys want to do? Dingo goes to the door to try to keep the door locked. Not a problem. Uh, we'll have uh, Dingo make a security test as you try to like break the door basically, or not break it, but make sure it doesn't uh, open easily again. Wow. Yeah, if one of the if one of the temporary laptop type things looks yeah. like it's like awake and active and someone was doing something, I'll go to that one. Okay. What'd you get, and see and and bring Mob and be like, Yeah, um, I'm coming. I'm helping. You get, <laughs> Eighteen, baby. Oh, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you go ahead and you check the you check it all and like you get the door kind of rig rigged so like it won't open on the initial. Like, they'll have to do an override to take them time. Uh, Mel, you go over and you go from the laptops. It's like it's all locked up. It's like it's kind of it's locked up. But give me a cryptography test. See if you can get through the the code here. Uh, Marv, uh, Ooh, Surgeon, and good. Carmen. What do you guys do? Not a problem. You actually crack this one Four open. On the drama die. This looks like a, a place where you can start uploading the uh, the shard. Uh, the shard is mm -hmm. a lot of data. It's going to take a while to upload, and you're also not supposed to leave okay. it behind because it's you know incriminating. Right. Uh, but uh, Marv, what do you want to do? Well, uh, if if Mel's got us in, I'll produce the shard and okay. we'll, we'll uploading. plug that thing in. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's going to take a little while. Uh, let's go to uh, Surgeon and Carmen. The two of us will just sit there and watch the status bar move. Like. <laughs> so you keep on typing to make them think you're, you're doing work when you're just waiting <laughs> for it to compile. Um, <laughs> That's right. My code's compiling. Uh, what, are the, what, are the two, what are our two favorite Martians over here want to do? Is there any other uh, kind of like entrance that we should be yeah. privy to? Uh, there's like the barrack entrances off to the sides. One of them has actually like like closed up because it's saying decompression notice on the on the door and everything, which is you know is fake. Um, but the weird thing is like you see this piece of de this device in the room that's like fairly large. Uh, it's probably like the size. It's like the size of like those cargo containers you guys saw in the earlier room, but it's it's out of the cargo container. Some weird looking like shaped thing. You're not really. Honestly, you've never seen anything like it in your work. 
of neither of you. It's like weird. Hmm. It's got tubes um, running out of it. Like, um, it doesn't look very refined. Hmm. And it's like a piece of technology. Yeah, yeah. It's and it's human, but it's not alien. I'll be very clear. It's it's human made, but got it's like it. piped and like almost has like a Geiger F biomechanical look to it. But it's like clearly um, like human made. It's like metal and you know refined and everything like that too. Definitely looks very clean. Okay. And it's large, like like large. There's a kind of a cylinder on the front of it. What is it hooked up to? Um, you go up to it and you look at it. And um, it doesn't need to be hooked up to anything. It seems like they have it here just to kind of store. Okay, uh, so it's it's not like it's active not humming or, or anything on... like that. Active, yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, Surgeon, uh, give me a uh, either of you can give me like a science test of some sort, and I'll give you science information about it. Your choice of science, or you can just do intelligence if you guys want to. <clears throat> I mean, let me see what my base roll is first. If it's even worth it. I think you have. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, this would just be straight intelligence for you, KP, and then uh, Isabel. This would be straight science for you as well. So just in- intelligence. Twelve for me. All right. Yeah, K- yeah I mean, you can have... I use a, a? Can I use a fortune die? Yeah. Uh, you, fortune what was your lowest number? Lowest is a one. That would put you by plus five to a, a seventeen. All right. I'll just, if uh, that will not succeed. This is very okay. advanced tech. What'd you get? Um, uh, what 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 Carmen get? So yeah. I got thirteen. Okay, what was your lowest number? One. Uh, that would be a 18, actually, which will barely succeed. Uh, so yeah, you blow a bunch of fortune on this, uh, and you look at it. Uh, you remember the, the two scientists talking about like cryogenics and shit? You think this is a cryopod. This um, is where they would freeze. This is like a prototype Mormon freezer. I don't know what else to call it. It's Mormon freezer. <laughs> like, that's what it does. Like, like that's what they're proposing. Also freezes rats. And you, well, I mean, this would be overkill for a rat, <laughs> but it's like person size. It's like built to like someone could get into it, and you can see that it has. Okay, so we have somewhere to stash, stash the body when these guys come back. <laughs> Potentially, yeah, but yeah, you can see that this large thing. But yeah, this is the tech. This is their prototype. You're guessing, uh, Carmen. So this was their big trick. So this is what we're sabotaging, yeah. I was gonna this say, is... can we break it while we're here? Oh yeah, if um, that's part of the. Can I sledgehammer it? <laughs> maybe would, less, maybe more subtly than that. Wait, yeah. wait, wait, hold up, man. Hold up now. I, I'm not actually. <laughs> we see him pull out a sledgehammer. It's like, ah. Whoa. Now hold up. I'm not against the you know advancement of human knowledge and science. I just don't want them to get the contract because this isn't quite far enough along yet. Uh... I mean, you think that perhaps is this like some sort of top secret method that they're doing, or is this common knowledge that they have here? Well, you know, it, it, anything top secret is really just a new uh, use of something that already is common knowledge. So nobody has done it before, actually frozen right. a person and then I, I'm just saying, well, since we're already here and we got two eggheads here, maybe one of y'all could go and uh, get a little extra information from off of this thing on how it works, and I don't know. Perhaps change some parameters. Go up, do your hacky hacky thing, and make. You want us so- to make it better no. so it does work? No, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, like maybe, like make give them a, make it a little delayed, make it so that they don't, you know, the next time they demonstrate it to the Mormons, they won't do so good, you know. I'm so- gonna go into the source code and yeah. delete a comma. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's um, all it needs. No, uh, actually, that was the, the code you were, Marv, you're privy to this. The code you were uploading actually would mess with the mixtures of it, so it wouldn't oh. work. Yeah. Never mind. Then in that we case, are we're done. It. Yeah, you're Never mind. You, you're oh, so we are hacking, doing that. You guys are hacking the firmware of it, so it, it, it ah. mismixes. Yeah, that was the premise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Right. But yeah, Never mind. We're already doing it. But I mean, if you want Carmen to take a sledgehammer to it, let me know. Uh, that's a, that, that, could be a, <laughs> that could be a solution. I'm ready. Yes. I'm ready. Yeah, um, you just say the word. All right, so you guys kind of like, you, you, the code takes a little while. You, um, Dingo, you start hearing them come back. Um, it sounds like they're clearing the alert. You can see the door to like the, the, the supposed pressure decompression was like going on. And you can, you, know, you, you pick up on your implants, you can hear guys on the other side bitching about fucking old piece of shit station. Like they're like bitching. How much more time do we need? <laughs> Uh, yeah, can we tell from the status bar that we're watching? It's, it's going closely? pretty fast. You need about another like 30 seconds there, Mel. 
All right, we're real close, Dingo. So Great. Let's. I mean, if that's not long, I'll, can I can I set off another alarm like in the same room or like one room away from us, or can I relock the door? Like, have they attempted to lock get through the doors yet? Yeah, they're trying to override the lock. You can you can hear them like messing with it, like trying to override the emergency lock. Um, you have it like kind of like you're holding your finger on the button kind of thing to keep them. Can like, I depressurize that room? <gasps> Uh, okay. I literally got it. <laughs> you would be if you were beginning to depressurize. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's very in character. Good role play. Jesus. Okay. Um, you I mean, I'm just, yeah, just no, trying I like to get it. the I job done. Like, okay. yeah. Give me a security test. You try to break through their security system. This is going to be a hard test here, Dingo. This is a hard one here. I'm liking this. All right. There. Great. Well, I roll a, uh, a 9 9 11. Um, plus, plus four. my, what, plus four? four? Um, uh, 15. 15, okay, what was your lowest number? Uh, lowest number is three. Three, okay. You actually, you pull up an alert in their room, and they, they, you hear them kind of freaking out a little bit. Oh, shit, fuck, okay. All right, this thing's falsy as fuck. Go fix that one, I'll get this one. And one of the guys keeps on messing with the door trying to open it, and he's like, God, piece of shit. And, like, the door starts to like, open a little bit, guys, but it's, like, not quite opening all the way. Everyone stay out of the view, the the rate of view. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to be a bad role player. Can I, I, is there another stage I can do? Can I try again? Can I hack again? Um, or is that? So you can hear the guy like touching the door and messing with it. Uh, surgeon. Uh, we have stun guns. If we were going to decompress them, we could just. Okay. So the other guy has. The other guy has gone has gone yeah, away. You can, hear the other guy, you can actually see the other guy like you can hear him like messing with like the manual override. It's like a mechanical thing. He's fucking and he's like having to mess with it. It's a it's a all fish right opening. all right. I'm gonna say uh, uh, Sri John, come yeah. here and grab this man right now, and then I'm going to open the door and try to pull him in and close the door again. Okay. You pull you pull him in and close the door. Uh, Sri John, get over here. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, Scorpion. Uh, and uh, uh, do, do not let him scream. Okay, Sergeant, you, you go up and uh, do you want to like? How do you want to handle him? Do you want to stun gun him? Do you want to? Oh yeah. Okay, give me a, oh, yeah. Give me an attack roll with the stun gun. So this is going to be a. Uh, I'll give you a bonus because you're surprising him to say the least. Uh, this is going to be an extra. This will be a plus four total to hit him. Give me the stun gun check. So this is. Still have a reroll. Um, so I tap. So I'm gonna. Three d six add four to it, and you're good to go. Oh, that is going to be. What was so bad? You, wait, how many? Three, three D six. Yeah, right, you said, and you, and you had four to it. Yeah, that is exactly that is a twelve. Well, okay, you you pull uh, a good. Uh, you're good. You 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 do surprise him and you, and you hit him with a stun gun, and he goes, oh, I'll roll damage for it. Okay, actually, shit. Okay, he goes, ah, ah, and he like keels over un, unconscious. Um, I'm guessing Carmen pulls him into the room with you guys or something. Um, but you guys pull him into the room, and he's like, oh, unconscious. He's like, he's like jittering and shit. Um, yeah. Is this how, how's the da- how's the data? How's the shard? It's going. Yeah. Did Almost that take? There. That was like fifteen seconds. Like. Yeah. All right, and the other guy is still in the other room. Yeah, and you hear, lock the door again. And, and you, yeah, the door recompresses, and the guy goes, he goes. You hear him go, uh, Wally. Where the fuck you go, Wally? Jesus. Oh God damn it. I'm he's gonna. Like, de- he's like, um, not coming so, to the door yet. He's like looking for his buddy Wally and shit. So the upload, I'm sorry, the upload is finished? Or not? Yeah, Almost not done. quite. So close. Right. Like, like, honestly, everybody who's not trying to get this guy should be at the other door ready to go. Yeah. yeah. We're just, I'm just like, you know, you're standing there at the computer like... <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this, this, this unconscious man is already a witness now, so I'm sorry, we're, we have, we're taking him with us and we're going to space him. Holy... Whoa, 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 you told us there ain't going to be no death over here. What else are we gonna do? Okay, fine. I don't know. Mel is the worst kind of hypocrite. Like, as soon as like her, she's in danger, like, just where's the sledgehammer? Like, we gotta go. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> um, I mean, the guy didn't see no faces. I mean, there, there's hundreds of folks, thousands of folks out out on this station, and then millions okay. everywhere. We're gonna be gone. He's unconscious. We can stuff him they in some kind of closet or something. They won't know what we did because the way the shard works, right? It's, you know. Right, as long as you they, pull it'll the shard. Be, It's okay. basically undetectable once it's in. Somebody commit a different crime in this room right now. <laughs> steal something. Smash the pod. Smash the pod. Yes, steal something and make it obvious so that's why, because they now know people were here. So make a different All crime. All right, she. I, I will walk over to the cryopod uh-huh. uh, and it, 
look at Carmen and do the Vanna White. <laughs> All right. Get the right. And I aggressively just, just start smashing. The, the glass just shatters immediately on right. the front of it. Uh, and that's enough time. We're done now. And you, you guys feel the shatter and everything. Uh, this guy's unconscious on the ground. Are you guys going to leave him there? I yeah, was gonna he's fine. He like can a, live. Like, like a closet or something. <laughs> fine. Like a storage um, unit. There, I mean, there's like crates in here you can stuff him in, but he's like, I mean, Surgeon, you don't get hit by a stun gun. Like, it, it this lapses in the memory. Yeah. Like, it's, uh, it's, a, little, it's a little, he might he might not be believed or something like that, or someone's stun gun you know, I'm, 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 Maybe like, I might like, just like uh, say, sorry, bud, and then just punch him to knock him out. He knocked out. You stunned him. He he went out like oh, he went okay. out, like a light the first go. He, oh, okay, he okay. went out the first. He was he, was, he like went under. Yeah, he if he saw you it was um, for like a third of a second. Yeah, so he wouldn't see. He wouldn't know. He wouldn't know anything. So yeah, I'm I don't I don't want to kill him. I mean, he, I'm not. He's down, he's down. Like uh, I'm not concerned about him anymore. If we we've we've covered our tracks. If the, if, if the if the upgrade is done, then let's go. Let's right. get out. Yeah, it looks like yeah. it, it gets up, it gets done. Uh, you can hear other people go, "Hey, what the fuck, Wally? What you doing in there?" And like they're trying to reopen the door manually again, which has been locked up. Oh, uh, actually, um, um, can I? Is there a, does Wally have a data pad on him? His yeah, his, Wally had a data pad. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna just take that and whatever group chat he's in. I'm just gonna type in. Need to take a shit. I'll talk to you guys soon. Send it <laughs> off. <laughs> Smell you later, Wally. <laughs> um, yeah, you, 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 yeah, and like, uh, you hear the other guy go, what the fuck? And like, they're, they're kind of weird out. You guys make an exit, uh, you get out scot free, you get the shard and everything like that too, um, and uh, start uh, making your, your beeline kind of a slow roll as you guys get out as you dropped off this stuff here. Um, but uh, yeah, we gotta, I gotta wrap this up because we got time here. Um, in the future, uh, the, the Latter-day Saints find approach Tyco Corporation begrudgingly, not caring for their association with Fred Johnson, asking for them to take up the Nebu project. This will provide thousands upon thousands of jobs for the Belchers, uh, give them a station there, uh, and also provide the OPA the means to spy on the entire solar system because, you know, they have sensors that can, they're supposed to reach, you know, 20 light years. Yeah, it works pretty well inside the system. Um, so they, you know, um, it everything goes well. Dingo gets the promotion. Marv keeps on going on. Uh, I don't have a. I know what happens to Mel, who she ends up going to work for, uh, mm -hmm. which is kind of a fun, kind of a fun twist of fate. And uh, surgeon and uh, I'm, a, Carmen, I'm a retire. You retire? You fuck out on my payday? Okay. Yeah, this was, this was the thing. Like he was at the one like, last oh, job. One last job. <laughs> oh, oh, if I get paid job. well, I didn't. If it was your last job, I should have had you die. Then that'd been awesome. All right. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but um. Yeah, uh, look, uh, we got we went over time, guys, and, and everything, but I want to end it out with that. Uh, the job, the high, the plant being done, very precarious. Uh, I had a lot of fun, everybody. Uh, I want to thank everybody <laughs> for everything and the like, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I, I didn't end it as well as I probably should have, but I feel like... Uh, yeah, I <laughs> thank you to yeah, Danny great. Ocean for getting us through this. It was very yeah. important to have that. Yeah. And when uh, you're short on time, it makes it make it heightens the urgency. It does. So we right. were all like, we were all like, oh, rushing. We, yeah. Yeah. we were cooking. We were cooking. Next room. For, for those that don't know, if you, if you go watch this when when Jesse was on our show in the main story, like, Jesse worked for Pope directly. Yeah. In the future, uh, I start working for Pope. I was actually I actually mm. plotted a plot line if I had more time where you were going to be captured. <laughs> like, like, oh, I'll, I'll be able to. You guys, you guys are build awesome ships. Let's build awesome ships. Yeah, I can't. I, I actually was glad when I did the research. I was thinking about it in the break. If she had have found that he was really fudging things, like mm -hmm. actually, and then I was like, how am I going to reconcile that in 10 years I'm working for this guy? But now so I'm glad it was just that they were over optimistic and yeah. overselling and, and not maybe, that they were actually fudging numbers. And I can see like Mel feeling bad that she like was part of this ploy and like, you know, trying to make it up or whatever it is, deny this guy's dreams. Well, and honestly, if someone comes and says, will you build me a cool ship? And That's she's true. done with the Nauvoo, That's she'll true. be like, and yeah, cool, let's build ships. I got built. Let's do the next one. Yeah, exactly. This, ex this prototype um, exploratory science ship. I'm really impressed with KP calling out Dingo because Dingo's just ready to do the job. I'll kill. I was ready to start killing people, and KP <laughs> said, "You said we weren't gonna." I like that. I Check, like, them. Oh, Check them. Check right. them. Accountability. Oh, fine. We have morals now. Okay. <laughs> I had morals until I was worried. Now, like, no, no. can't afford morals. I want um, to live. Isabel, 
I like I said, as I said earlier, I applaud your performance here. Uh, any uh, thoughts on playing the expanse of the role playing game? Uh, it was a lot of fun. I I really enjoyed it a lot. It's it's surprising how easy it is. More so now, oh, and maybe John. it's because oh. I'm it, John's, of course, excellent uh, game master abilities. But I think also just being already part of the Expanse universe, it's a lot easier to like get into the moment compared to like when I played in the past, it just felt like there was a million different things happening and it was hard to follow, but it was very easy to to just easily fall into character in these ones. Yeah, I the one thing that's nice about the Expanse, because uh, one for one, we're the, the RPG is based on the book continuity, but um, the the one thing that's nice is because we have the show, we can point the things and I like I download a lot of images from the prop auction. Uh, the point too, because visuals are nice occasionally, and so it's it's cool to like be able to have something you can kind of point to here and there and see it actually in action. Um, like it's easy to show like KP. Obviously, you get a lot easier time going into this than like because you're like at sci-fi in space. How hard could it be? Then you watch a show and you're like, oh shit, space is hard. And yeah. <laughs> it's like precarious as fuck. Um, and you can also see the, the. I think the other thing too is like um, I, now it's hard to convey the cultural differences of like the Earthers, Martian. OPA people, but like the show does such a beautiful job of showing how mm-hmm. it's it's diverse culturally, but also still like yeah. very um, uh, there's like a stringent hierarchy of like the Belchers, Martians, Earthers, and that with a new kind of hierarchy that's exposed that's been emerged. So I think it's one beauty of it. Um, so, but um, and then the veteran here, Josh, I'd love to get some words from you, buddy. You know, uh, y- you apologized a second ago that it was a, a rushed ending, but uh, it's really not that much of an ending because this is a prequel, John, and we know prequel. what happens after this. You've set the stage for the entire Expanse storyline. Well, I, that, a lot of this came out of a conversation with Josh, which I have to give some credit to, which was the conversation was without Fred Johnson having the Naboo and being the head of Tycho Station, the whole fucking Expanse storyline falls apart. And Fred doesn't come off as the kind of guy who would be like, I'm just going to happenstance fall into this. He would have step by step made this happen, right. knowing that rem- he is a player. And so that was kind of my premise is he has, you guys are pieces on the board of the game he is playing. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I think that's a, that's a major, uh, major element of it, too. Um, but look, I want to um, I want to give a moment here uh, for everyone here to say their final piece. Um, I do want to say about the charity once again, guys. Thank you for the donations. Um, we didn't hit our goal of a thousand dollars. That's where I was hoping to get today. But we got four hundred five dollars, which is four hundred five dollars more than we had. Uh, that people are going to get fed with uh, that before. I leave the thing open for a while too. Uh, you can re- uh, if you want to redeem any of the stuff in there. I got some people that I, have to, I owe some uh, <laughs> bundles to and everything, which is great. I can't wait to get those to you guys. Um, but I'm thankful for everyone that donated, uh, and, uh, that it means the world to me, but I like to keep these open for a while too. Some people, you know, just need it's the end of the month too, which I totally get. I've been there many times, uh, the end of many months as it is my birthday. Uh, and, uh, I can actually count them and, uh, the like, and I want to thank, uh, every single one of you for coming here. Josh, you've always been a cheerleader of this show since the beginning. I really deeply appreciate it. Uh, you guys at Demi Plan are amazing and do great work, and you're just a great dude overall. I'll say that. Uh, KP, dude, you are fucking blowing up this year. Like <laughs> your January, February was obscene. Like in terms of like like how much stuff you've been doing, and I I, I really like seeing that. Um, I remember you expressing publicly a while back some worry about some stuff, and it feels like it's like 2024 is coming up, KP. Um, if that's if, that, if that's a fair statement so far, at least I, I don't know what else you got going. On. No. I was, I don't know. I'm, I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just lucky, and also uh, I have just wonderful folks um, doing wonderful things, and I have the huge privilege of being a part of it. That's all it is, and this is one of those things. I've always, uh, I know you and I've been talking a long yeah. time, wanting to do something together. I'm, I'm huge privilege of being able to play with other wonderful people like you guys. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, it, it's, it's just fun. I love storytelling. I love, uh, you know exploring new new things new mm-hmm. characters and you know teach rpg and role playing really it's scratches that itch so um and so this is where i'm gonna say so you making me up my role play storytelling game jesse makes me up my science game every time i run this thing with her because uh, <laughs> i'm terrified of getting shit wrong uh and uh i try to i try to keep it I try it doesn't to keep it. it doesn't happen very often don't be terrified okay 
Okay. Because I, yeah, like, uh, yeah, I, we, you know, and uh, I, I, one thing I did like about uh, the expanse, if you play, if you get the core book, you'll find out all about 532 Herculina, uh, which is a real place. Um, yeah. And uh, it's kind of a prequel to the, I made it a prequel to the Star Adventure in the core book as well. I tied in a lot of loose ends in this one, which I'm very, I like to do a lot. I like to tie all these stories together in some ways. But uh, Jesse, thank you so much for taking your time out of your busy schedule to play. Um, when, thank when you for I having started, me again. Well, when I first approached you, I was like, oh, this person's like super space person. They're amazing. They have this cool like podcast about exoplanets. They do all stuff with exoplanets. They're real scientists. And then you're like, by the way, I am a huge gaming nerd and you have no clue what you're in for. And, <laughs> and then we, uh, your enthusiasm you brought to plane was riveting uh, the first time. We were all like, holy shit, this is dope. And, and uh, you're welcome to come and hang out with us anytime. I every single one of you by all, by all means, but uh, we wanted, I want to thank you so much for taking time out to help us out on this and for your generous donations to, um, to uh, WC. Happy World's. birthday. Well, thank you. Happy thank you. Birthday. I'm getting there. I got a few more days, but uh, I'll, I'll ride, I'll ride that as long as I can actually. Um, <laughs> Isabel, I want to say thank you uh, to you specifically. Uh, uh, the, the, the game was amazing. Maya's dope. If you guys have played the game, please play it. Uh, Dark Maya was the premise. We both, I think you called her Nega Maya. Like, yeah. <laughs> like Mega Duck from like Dark from Dark Mega Duck kind of thing, and we wanted to play kind of a and that was that was definitely uh uh I don't know if it, I don't want to say like like that's like the opposite of Maya, but it felt like you played a, your character was really I really admired your character here. You you let it emerge quite organically, and I was really I have a lot of respect for that. I didn't want her to be exactly the opposite of Maya yeah. because there are elements of Maya that I that I love that I don't think that Carmen would have been as as likable if I didn't include mm -hmm. those, but. Um, I think who Carmen turned out to be is, I mean, amazing. She's a, she's, mm -hmm. she's a go-getter. That's for sure. And I, I'd love to bring her back uh, for one of my main episodes because for another special, those are, a lot, those are a lot of fun to play and bring characters around. Uh, we incorporate stuff in the storyline and everything. And but um, I did. I also want to. I also want to say too, um, the the Expanse community is fucking amazing. Like the fans are dope. Uh, Jacob can attest to this. They're really sweet people. They reach out and. Um, uh, we want to, I, you know, I want to tell the people that are part of the Telltale game that acted in it, that made it, produced it. You guys are part of this community too, helping make this like fandom still happen and keeping it alive. And uh, it's the least I can do to entertain you for an afternoon uh, <laughs> with, with the game. And I want to thank you for, um, you know, not just thinking I'm some, you know, geek fan who's like, hey, I, I heard you like the band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but also like a fellow streamer and gamer and uh, coming out and trying out. Trying an RPG on stream is a whole different thing than playing Dead by, uh, you know, uh, Daylight or yeah, Dead by Daylight. Or <laughs> yeah, it's a whole different, it's a whole different thing to play. So, I I, I respect a lot that you took a shot at this and it trusted me enough with with uh, the first uh, TTRPG stream with you. Thanks so much. Last but not least, uh, Jacob, uh, thank you so much, dude. Uh, we've uh, You've, uh, you're, you're one of the uh, people I've reached out to that is super responsive and we've done some great work. Uh, I'm glad we got to like uh, bring back Dingo, who uh, in our continuity is, uh, please watch our episodes with them because you'll see how Dingo's fate uh, happens. <laughs> and uh, it's a lot of fun to kind of bring them back and uh, try them out in kind of a little more greener pastures, a little, little less intense pastures, I suppose. Oh, you're, you're muted, buddy. Well, it's funny how this is the early this is the earliest point in his life, but this is actually the most practiced I've had him. So it's like the most <laughs> developed I've the I've been able to. It's, I feel like I've played him the best in this yeah, game, no, even though this a, is the it's, earliest it's whole, in his it's life. Whole, yeah. It's a whole Anakin Skywalker thing. I mean, you know, we know he's mm -hmm. become Darth Vader, but we got to build up to that. What was it like before? And you can kind of flesh that out a little bit more. So. Yeah, I just every time I do this with you, John, you put me in like a leadership position, and I hope I'm. Up, I just hope I'm up to the task because I'm flying by the seat of my pants, and it's um, um, it's it's as thrilling as it is terrifying. But yeah, these adventures are are always a lot of fun. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad you guys had fun. I, I really, I really am. That my first goal: raise some money. Second goal: have fun. And yeah. those are not mutually exclusive things. So everybody yeah. out there, hey, watch. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please check out every single one of these people. I'm gonna drop a command in the chat here for you guys all to go ahead and check them out. Uh, check out their links, check out Explore Astro, check out KP's voiceover work. Uh, go follow uh, Isabel here on Twitch. Uh, Josh, he's cool. And, uh, <laughs> but no, honestly, actually, actually, uh, I, I've been really enjoying everyone's work and I try to keep up on what you guys are doing and checking out stuff like that, uh, uh, both in terms of like just being a fan of it, but also like being envious of the cool stuff you guys get to do, which is awesome. 
Um, and then last but not least, uh, there's where you can donate to our charity. That'll be open for a while. Um, please check out my show. If you want to check out back episodes, we have it on podcasts, we have merch, we have all that kind of stuff. Uh, but if you got money today and you're looking to put a hole in your pocket, World Central Kitchen's who I want you guys to, to give it to today. Uh, but please check us out and everything uh, and the like. I think that's it. I feel like I, I've said too many words. I used all my words up. <laughs> uh, I'm, running, I'm running low. I, like you guys have fortune, but I have words. Happy birthday, John. Oh, thanks, dude. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Thank birthday. you so much, everyone. All right. I think uh, that's it. Uh, everybody, you guys have a good night. Enjoy your weekend. 